this other camera. I am in disbelief. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, what's her name? Sue so, Beta. Good evening. Happy Friday night. This is the second live of the day. I think seven and a half hours was the first one. Wow. Good evening. How you doing? Trying to see who's coming in. I don't know if anybody was on that live that I was just on. Oh my God, man. I've never encountered anything like that in my entire life. That was unbelievable. You know, I thought that there was no way for a pro-Israel live to be topped by a pro-Palestinian live in terms of just, just some of the most horrific language and behavior. And I think the last thing that this movement needs is division, obviously. But I mean, there's just certain behavior that I think doesn't matter where your allegiances fall. You have to just, you know... You have to just discuss it and talk about it. And that's what I'm going to do. And if it puts me on the wrong side of some people, so fucking be it. I really don't care. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a Palestinian. I'm an American. So I'm not directly involved in the fight. I don't know anybody who lives in Palestine. I don't know anybody who lives in Israel. Um, I make commentary. I try to be an advocate as for the things that I think are important. But what I just experienced was beyond telling. And listen, you know, as much as I try to tone down the statements made by Zionists about Palestinians, what I just saw and heard, I just, I'm in disbelief. I literally am in disbelief. I've never heard people talk like this before. And unfortunately, you know, listen, I, I think if people make claims about how people think and behave, I, I used to think they were whole, totally unfounded. But unfortunately tonight, I may have found some evidence to the contrary. So I'm going to go through it. I'm going to talk about what went on, what happened, who said what. Uh, Dapper, if you're here, yeah, I think Dapper is interested in this. And again, Dapper, I will let you know that I try to be consistent as a human being. I am for kindness. I'm for respect. I'm for decency. I'm for love. I'm for peace. And what I just encountered, and I think Dapper was able to see it too, just, it really shocked me. And I think it's, so Dapper says, you've said worse, laugh my ass off. I don't think that's true, Dapper. Uh, I think you know that's not true. Plus, you've been in my lives long enough to know that I give people a chance to come up and share their views. I, I never, ever, ever treat people the way PG was being treated. I've, I've been called horrific things by PG. And you know, I understand everybody takes their sides and says certain things, but nothing like what she was being treated in that live. And I, listen, I don't, I disagree with everything PG has said in terms of the beliefs he has, and even the things that she said about me. But I'm not that, that I'm not taking that personally. That's just what people say. But I don't like to see somebody. Even listen, PG may have. I don't know what happened before I got there. In fairness, somebody said that she she doxed people or something like that. But. Yeah, I mean, I know you probably, well, listen, you may not like me, the person, Dapper. I don't dislike you, the person, at all. I'm, I'm sure if I met you, we'd probably get along great. You know, we just happen to see this issue from different vantage points. That's okay, though, you know, and I respect your point of view. I just disagree. I don't hate anybody. But what was exhibited there was hateful. There's no doubt about it. And if I see somebody from the pro-Israeli from the pro uh, Israeli side acting in a hateful way, I call it out, as I think it should be. And I think a lot of the behavior, unfortunately, by the state and by the military tends to fall in that category. So that's why I call it out. It just seems very uh, mean-spirited and very cruel. Others categorize it differently. That's fair. But what I just saw in that pro-Palestinian live absolutely shocked me. Absolutely shocked me. I just, I'm still reverb. I cannot believe the way, I mean, it's not even, listen, they, they, were, uh, they were beyond overly harsh on me, which I can't even understand because if they know anything about me, um, you know, I, I'm probably one of the few people in the Western world who is as, as 
vociferous in advocating for the Palestinian cause than, than most Americans, if anybody else. And I'm not Palestinian, so they have no right to look at me any differently than any other person. They, they can be as angry as they want and do whatever the hell they want. I, I respect that. But the way that they chose to, to conduct themselves in that live, I believe, makes Palestinians look horrible. And that saddens me. Because I don't think most Palestinians that I've met are horrible people. They seem very kind. And the things that I've heard about Islam and the tenets that people say they practice and espouse seem very kind. And what I heard, and listen, people say things when they're angry, and that's fair. I get it. People get their emotions up. But this went beyond that. This was well beyond that. This is the kind of language you would hear from Schmittler towards Jewish people. And if you're not somebody that would condemn that, then you're not my kind of person. And if you see it happening on a Palestinian side and you don't condemn that, you're not my kind of person. I think you have to be ethically consistent. And listen, I'm, I'm far from perfect. I've fucked up a lot. And I've said some things that are, you know, ir, ir, I guess indefensible in my life. I've, I wrote some things on Twitter that I, I, I feel that I can never take back again. And I won't. And that's okay. I have to deal with that. But it's not based from hate. I swear to you on that front, it's not. But what I heard tonight was, and I don't blame somebody for disliking somebody or even hating them, that's fine. But you can't wish openly that you want somebody to be cut up into little pieces and fed to dogs. I think that's just beyond horrific to say something like that to somebody. And to wish an entire group of people to be killed. I think that's also horrible. And so... And listen, I'm not taking it personally. I think that these people are just angry people in general. And that's okay. They can, that, that's how they like to do it. They want to get into an echo chamber and they want to yell and scream and call people the devil and, and, and curse at people and mistreat them. That's their call. They can do whatever the hell they want. But I just find it to be objectionable. And I think the thing I'm saddened by is it makes the Palestinian cause seem bad because they're representative of people. And I've, I've heard people saying this from the pro, pro-Israel side that some of these pro-Palestinian lives are just horrific, that they go in there and they just get mistreated. Now I see what they're talking about. I hadn't seen this before. There are a few people that I've encountered that are so high on their high horse in terms of what they believe. And that, listen, anybody can do whatever the hell they want. But I try to, try to take a little more humble approach. I believe what I believe, but I don't think I'm the, I don't, I, have an, I don't have a monopoly on what's right. I just have a take. But holy shit, these people, man, they're just, they're just mean. Mean as snakes. And I want to say great things about Palestinian people. Most of the Palestinians I met have been amazing. But these people are just downright cruel and mean. And just, I, I came into a live to try to point that out, at least in, in as most gentle way possible, and got absolutely torn to pieces. And was told that I'm a sellout, that I'm a pro Zionist, that I don't really care about the Palestinian cause. I mean, all this other bullshit. I'm like, what? So when I say these people, I'm going to name them specifically. I have their names written down. I went through and did screenshots. I recorded the live. So everything they said to me, I have recorded. Um, I wasn't expecting to need to. I was more expecting to hear PG saying some horrible stuff, which is why I recorded it. But that wasn't the case. If you don't know who PG is, she's, she's, um, she's a very pro-Zionist person. She hosts her own lives. You know, she's a little less uh, loud spoken than some of the other people who are pro-Israeli, but she's very staunch in her beliefs. And again, I respect people's beliefs. She's also, she's been very critical of me. She said some things. She's questioned my integrity. I get it. You know, I don't like that, but, you know, but she never said anything near to the degree to what I heard tonight and which, you know, it just, it just, I was just still shaking my head. Like, I can't believe I just heard what I heard. So anyway. Listen, there's people like Dap Dapper's in the comments right now. I disagree with Dapper. I don't like the fact when Dapper comes on, he tries to assign the things that I say to being anti-Semitic, because it's not. But I know that that's a tried and true way of thinking of this, that anybody who disagrees with Israel or the state of Israel or the, or the Zionist project, that automatically that means somebody hates Jewish people. That's, a lot of people think that way. Rabbi Shmuley, Ben Shapiro, perhaps Dapper. You know? Maybe I would feel that way if I were Jewish and I supported Israel and I was somebody who wanted to protect the Jewish people. Maybe I'd feel that way. I don't know. But I, it's not that I embrace it, but I understand it. And I can respect somebody else's point of view who's different. That's okay. You know, it's okay to have a different point of view. But we don't have to negate each other's humanity. And again, the people that did the things to, in 1948 and in 1967... I was born in 1967. I didn't have anything to do with that. People like PG are probably in their mid-20s. 
And while they support the Israeli government and the aspiration of Jewish people, I'm guessing that individuals aren't, aren't that mean-spirited. I don't believe the average person wants to you know, unalive somebody. They probably don't even know what the army does or what the military does in some cases. So their support is not necessarily for the things that the other side takes so so seriously. And everyone has a right to be angry. I'm, I'm outraged by what Israel does in a lot of cases. In most cases, I, I find the choices that they make to be reprehensible. And I certainly wouldn't want to have family members. If I did, I'd be absolutely off the chain angry. But I still would never advocate for every single person who supports that movement to be unalive. I, I've said over and over again, if somebody can't relinquish their belief in expansion of Zionism, that if there is a state that is recreated, that creates a, a framework where it's not necessarily driven by ethnicity, but it's driven by democracy, that everyone should be allowed to stay and apply for citizenship and work within a democracy. Hopefully it can work out. And, and those people who just happen to have a, dis, a different ideology shouldn't be unalived for God's sakes. And I don't even believe every person who believes in Zionism is hateful. They advocate for a cause that they believe in, but I don't think they want to see everybody killed. But to somehow say that you want to see all of them killed is just insane. Somebody here says, don't have selective outrage. I don't think I'm having selective outrage. I, I'm simply pointing out the fact that what I just experienced was very unsettling. And I just never thought I'd see that. And I, I, I have seen some people who are very outspoken and behave in ways that I don't agree with, but it's their choice to behave however the hell they want and advocate however the hell they want. That's fair. I don't find it particularly pleasant, and I don't think it really furthers the cause, but that's their choice. I have my style, they have theirs, so be it. But there's a level to which if you take something, I believe it makes you look like the hateful person, not the people who you're trying to be critical of. You know, and I think if you wish a whole group of other people to be wholesale unalived, cut up and fed to dogs, that's just a whole new level of hate that I just can't get my head around. And so therefore, listen, to be consistent, to be consistent, we have to be fair and we have to apply the same standards to both sides. Now, I think what Zionists have done since, since before 1948 and after 1948 are horrible. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention the very people who are on here. I'm going to call them out. And I'm going to tell them like I, like I feel it. And they can if they don't like me or they hate me or they want to think I'm a turncoat, they can go fuck themselves, quite frankly. I'm not looking to sow division. But the things that were said to me and about me tonight on this live were outrageous. And people obviously don't know me. In fact, anybody here who happens to agree with what was said there, if you do, I invite you to go back and look at all the recordings I've ever recorded. I've recorded probably four or 500 hours of lives. You won't find one single moment when I've been even the littlest bit sympathetic towards Zionism, towards people who espouse it, the behavior of the IDF, any of the efforts along the different time frames, ever. But this, is, this needs to be called out equally so. Zionists do some shitty things. The people who are behaving in this live were doing bad things. Bad things are bad things. And somebody said very precious, and I think it was Zabida, if that's her name, she said that the words themselves are not harming people, but the actions of the IDF are in real life. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And words are words, and ideally, you know, the words don't actually unalive people. But there's, there, in my opinion, there's a limit that, that you can go to, but if you go past it, you're no better than the enemy. And I don't think that's representative of the Palestinian I, I thought, thought process. And people who practice Islam, is, I'm, I'm not Islamic, I'm not Christian, I'm nothing. But my understanding is, from what people have tried to teach me about it, is that it's based on kindness and acceptance of others and love and peace and everything like that. And granted, what the Zionists have done again to Palestinians is horrible. And I pointed out constantly. But somehow, some way for the host of that live to tell me that I'm some you know, piece of shit, F this, F that, is just outrageous. And I wasn't even given a chance to finish my sentence. I wasn't defending this particular person named PG, her views or anything she has to stand for. And I wasn't there for the beginning of the conversation when people that I've heard since then that she was, quote, doxing people, uh, revealing people's names and phone numbers or whatever, whatever that means. And if she did that, that's to be, you know, that's reprehensible. But I still would never say to anybody that you deserve to be cut up into pieces and fed to dogs. I think that's over the top. 
If you think that's if you think that is ir, ir, irresponsible of me, I'm not defending PG. For plug in any other human being's name in that context who believes in Zionism, who comes up on a very hostile panel and tries to be involved, which I do all the time, by the way. For those of you who don't know, I was on a, a couple different panels today, and I get mistreated horribly by the people from from the Zionist side, which I don't like. They never give me a chance to talk about the information. And what I noticed tonight on this particular panel was worse than the worst time that I've ever been treated. And I've been treated pretty badly. And I wasn't defending PG's beliefs, PG's ideology, PG's, PG's background, or any of those things. Because I disagree with her on almost every single level, as far as I can tell, every level. And she said bad things about me, which I don't appreciate. She's doubted my sincerity. She's called me someone who's doing this for money. She thinks I'm a, a complete liar, is in her words, that I'm just spreading lies. I don't like that. I don't like being called a liar by somebody who I disagree with. I've never once called her that, although people in the live were calling her that tonight, that she spreads lies. But again, everybody can comport themselves how they choose on these lives. It's obviously, you know, if, if so-and-so wants to run their live a certain way and line people up and bash them, uh, good on you. Do your thing. I don't like being on those lives. I don't like to see people doing those things on lives. I think it's counterproductive. But if other people feel that their anger and their need to be self-righteous and, and shift all of their anger onto somebody, that's, that's certainly their right to do it. TikTok allows it. Uh, but it, but what was being said was more than just anger. I think it was hateful. It was unnecessary. It was divisive. And all I tried to come up to do was to say, hey, you know, this person, you may disagree with them. You may hate what their, their ideology stands for, but they're still a person. And that person wasn't alive when most of the harm that's been done to Palestinians occurred. She's not even anywhere near the country. She's not directly done anything. You know, and I, I support the Palestinian cause. I've never gone into a cafe in Tel Aviv and done something. I don't support that. Okay, I support the Palestinian cause. I did not go into Gaza, outside of Gaza, and harm civilians that day or whatever else was alleged or done. I didn't do any of that. I wouldn't want somebody to conflate me and to accuse me and mistreat me in that regard. I didn't do any of that shit. I'm just an observer who's read about this. Now, here's the other kicker. Yes, I'm an American. Who the hell am I to tell her? I'm not telling her people what to do, okay? But it does irk me to see people who are, are claiming they're the better people, who claim that they're you know a step above those who they look at and say these people are horrible, and then they turn around and behave worse than they are. Does that really represent the cause well? I don't know. I don't think so. But it's okay. It's okay for me to see it my way. And I talk on my lives about the way I feel. And I've been advocating for this cause longer than most people on that, that, that live have been alive. They don't know that. They don't know anything about my background. They made a lot of assumptions. This person, Zubeda, who a lot of people... And I'll tell you what happened with Zubeda, which was very unfortunate. Okay? If you don't know my format of my lives, I try to run them with somewhat of order. And very rarely have they reached the point where they've gotten unorderly. They almost never do because everyone seems to be pretty, you know, pretty respectful of the process. Well, there was a live going back, I think, about two weeks ago or whatever it was. And someone named Zubeda and Shaq and some others were on there. And it just got out of control. And I couldn't get a word in edgewise. There was like five people going back and forth. It just wouldn't stop. And so I think well, I cleared a few guests off that I thought were the ones doing that just to clear some space. Then I can let people back up after it calms down. That's what I chose to do. It wasn't because I was trying to stop anybody from talking. I could give a shit. I let everybody make their, make their statements on my lives because I think that's the right thing to do. And then we come up with better speech. That's my style. So just like I don't tell them how to run their lives, hopefully they can let me run mine. Some people have been mad at me for platforming people who are Zionists. I got accused that day of doing that. But that's not the case. I believe that if you let somebody say enough dumb shit that they kind of put themselves into a corner and you can linguistically uh, overcome the, the less uh, persuasive arguments that they're making. And then you can kind of point them out for making silly arguments. That's just my style. Okay? But I will defend anybody. Palestinian, Israeli, doesn't matter if they're being horribly and hatefully treated. Because we got to be better than that. I think you know, I'm better than that, I hope. I don't hate anybody. And I hate seeing other people being treated hatefully. Myself, others, it doesn't matter. It's just applying the same standard. Because in the end of the day, if there's ever going to be peace, you can hate somebody all you want. But ultimately, there's going to have to be a way to strike peace. 
And if you talk past people, you talk hatefully towards them, you wish them to be dead, you want to cut them up and feed them to dogs. How, is there, how are you ever going to have peace with somebody you're talking to that way? It's not possible. And you may say there's no way to get through to that person anyway, so why not just let it all out? Okay, I can understand that point of view. But I can guarantee you one thing. There will never be a chance for peace if that's the approach with any two groups of people. Forget about who the, who the parties are or what they believe. In my view, that's just my view. I'm sharing my take. I'm not telling other people what they should or shouldn't do. Do what you want. But that, that, those moments on that live, I thought was absolutely horrendous. And I think, it's, I think the people who behave that way should be called out for the behavior. Absolutely. Because, listen, bad behavior is bad behavior is bad behavior, right? doesn't matter who does it. And I'm not going to come up here and let somebody try to berate me for their, you know, I got to say something. And I don't say this to me. me. So people have told me, I talked about what happened on the live. So I cleared people off. And supposedly, and listen, there's a person named Zobita who's an amazingly capable speaker. She's very persuasive. She's very knowledgeable. She's very passionate and a very strong person. And so I believe she sort of looks at herself as sort of like the, one of the authorities or even the authority on this subject. I, I don't know if she's Palestinian. I assume she has some family members or maybe she is. I don't know. I don't know much about her. But she took such offense, according to what people were telling me, that she was one of the people that got dropped during that incident, that she was definitely angry. She thought I was just dropping her. She took it, I guess, personally. Nothing was intended. I did write to her and let her know, uh, you know that, hey, I was just trying to clear a problem out. I didn't mean anything. I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. But when things get crazy disorderly on any live, it's like Jerry Springer. You know, you're like trying to hear other people. You can't hear shit, so it's no good for anybody. And so I don't know what the host is supposed to do. I said, hey, can people please be quiet? Hey, can people please be quiet? I said it like six times. Nobody listened. I cleared some people off. I don't, th I don't think that's unreasonable. But it blew up into something. And then, of course, you know, people... I went into another live and people said something and then a bunch of people started jumping on me like, hey, you're a piece of shit motherfucker or something like that. I'm like, where's this coming from? Did, did this person, Zubita, stir up that much hate against me? I'm a very staunch pro-Palestinian advocate, have been for 34 years, probably before most of these people were born. And yet they're shitting down my throat like I'm some sort of turncoat. Even tonight, same thing. I just found it, I find it outrageous. Go back and look at all of my videos. I've been making videos since the 9th of October about this. I just happened to come onto TikTok at that time. I'm just a guy who happened to learn about this in 1989. I'm not some, I'm not some super knowledgeable scholar, but I am somebody who has talked about it a lot. I've studied it a ton. I think I know a good bit about it. I don't know everything. But I really find it very, very peculiar that people are so self-righteous and so high and mighty that they immediately make, make assumptions and dismiss everybody in their path because they're not them. Get over yourself. Who in the F are you to have the monopoly on how people can advocate for this cause? I'm not telling you what the hell to do. I'm not all outraged at you for speaking over my live, which I thought was kind of rude. But anyway, and listen, some people think that they're the shit and that their stuff doesn't stink, right? I try to be a little more humble than that. I try to tell people things like, hey, I have my point of view, but I respect other people's points of view. I don't have the, the cornerstone on truth. What I say may not even be right, and I'm willing to learn more from others and hopefully form a better you know, form of knowledge. But I got to tell you, tonight, I was very, very, very disappointed and very shocked by the way people behaved. I don't know these people very well, so I don't have anything to compare their behavior to. I've only encountered Zabita or Zabita once before. And I'm not trying to talk down to everybody. I'm, and listen, everybody has a bad night or whatever, but I, I didn't get the sense that this was a bad night. This felt like standard practice. And PG may have said some things earlier. I'm not sure what she said. But the bottom line, I'm not bringing anybody up, just so you know. You might as well not even try. I'm not bringing anybody up. I'm sharing my views on this. If you don't agree with me, don't agree. If you want to put me in my place, go make videos about me or talk about me on your lives and give me a hard time or whatever. But I need to speak to whomever did this because I am not, the, stop trying to come up. I'm not bringing you up, Zabad. I'm not bringing you up. You know, I, th I think you're somebody who just doesn't get it. You just don't get it. You know, you're a very strong-minded person. I respect your advocacy. I respect your passion. I respect the fact that you're smart and you're very well-spoken and all those things. And I don't respect the things that were going on tonight in that live. And that's my right to say so. And again, you can hate me for this, but I'm just, I'm just being honest with my audience because I've been, I've been incredibly consistent for month after month after month after month. You can go check my library of videos. I've posted them since December the 19th. 
with hundreds and hundreds of hours of lives that I've been very consistent on. And yes, I've brought people up who are pro-Zionist because under my, my way of thinking, it's a good thing to let people speak their mind and be respectful to them, even if you completely disagree with them because again, they talk themselves into a corner and then it's clear for the audience like, hey, this is a really lousy argument. But I've never once said the kind of things that were said tonight. I was absolutely shocked what I heard tonight. There's a somebody, I'll just say the name of the person who said the most stuff. The person is by the name of Liberty Mine. I don't know this person at all. I don't know what they've been through. I don't know if their family's experienced. So, but I, all I can say is absent that knowledge, what this person was saying just absolutely shocked me. I never thought I would hear a pro-Palestinian person speak like that. My understanding is, is that most Palestinians live well beside others. And it's the people who have imposed upon them the land dispossession and the hateful behavior that has caused them so much outrage and harm. And therefore, they have every right to push back against it from the standpoint of, you know, either political force or even, even physical force if necessary. And I support that. But how can you say that kind of stuff to people? And how can you really feel that in your heart? Do you really want to see people chopped up and fed to dogs? Do you really feel that way? I mean, I don't know what got, gets into people that feel that. That's something I've never thought of. And that's just, that's a terribly hateful thing to say. And if you're going to get up on a live and somebody has the courage to come up on your panel to try to navigate that as one person in a sea of, you know, that, I give that person credit. I've had people up in my live today. We had somebody, on a younger guy, who didn't know a whole lot and people were patient with him and tried to share things with him that might give him a place of being able to understand more from the point of view and maybe bring him to a point where he has some awareness to be push away from the indoctrination. That's my style. Not to crap all over somebody and tell, and there was somebody that came on the panel that said some pretty negative shit to this young kid. And I said, hey, you know, take that shit elsewhere. I'm not going to name the person. You know who you are. That's my style. If you think that style is inappropriate, you run your lives the way you want. But I'll tell you what, I'm an ally of yours. And I think you're an ally of mine for the same cause. And you can hate my guts for doing this right now if you want to. And you can dismiss me and call me names and make your lives and tell me I'm a piece of shit or whatever. I don't think that about you. I can delineate the difference between you, the person, and the things that happened tonight that I find so objectionable. And I'm happy to work with anybody. Anybody who wants to help the Palestinian cause, I am 100% with, even if we don't necessarily become friends. But what I saw tonight was just way over the top, and I just can't believe that, that somebody could said, say stuff like that. I just, I can't get my head around that. I've never heard that before. And I just can't believe, I just can't believe that somebody from the Palestinian side who I thought were kind and considerate and calm and you know just decent human beings can behave. I've never heard that before. So it just really surprised me. Every Palestinian I've ever run into on TikTok, at protests I've gone to in real life, Nobody's ever talked like that before. It's just shocking to me. So if, if other people, listen, this is the other thing about TikTok that's so wonderful. There's so many people to choose from and everybody's got a style and a preference. Um, the style that I try to espouse is one of being decent and fair and objective. And I, listen, I'm just an American trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And the things that I've discovered over the years are make me very angry at what the Israelis do. I can't stand the Zionist movement. I think it's disgusting. It's despicable. It's selfish. It's self-centered. It has its aims towards more and more and more for Israel and less and less for everybody else. And who cares? They don't even care who dies along the way. That's the impression that I get. But I would never advocate for somebody to be cut up into pieces as much as I dislike what they do and hate the fact that the situation is what it is. And there's just no seemingly no end in sight. And the, the barbarity continues. I'm sickened by it too. I'm absolutely disgusted by what's happened so far and what seems to be what the Israelis will keep doing. I'm disgusted by it. And they are causing real harm. I've talked about anti-Semitism and I'm against that. But I also think that when somebody's walking down the street to go to the store to get a pizza and they feel uncomfortable in Toronto, well, what about the little kids whose body parts are being blown apart at the, at the end of a building or a bomb? How do you think those families feel? So in that regard, I agree 100%. You can't Words or feelings are nowhere comparable to physical harm. I agree with you 100%. And as yet, I still wouldn't say those things. And I would, I would hope that others have it in their heart not to say those things. I think it's hateful. So if, if, if Zobeda is having a live, if that's something that you all would prefer to go to, I think somebody in the comments is saying she's having a live, go, go watch Zobeda. Maybe she has a different view on this than I do, and that's fine. I have no hate 
in my heart for anybody, including those who tonight who did this stuff. But if I'm going to be fair and look at the rotten behavior of Zionists who have horribly mistreated people like me and others who have gone in their lives, and then I see Palestinian people who are pro-Palestine horribly mistreating somebody else using hateful language, you got to be, I, I think you have to be consistent. That's my view. I don't take sides to the extent that one side can get away with being absolute monsters just because they disagree with the other. Right? That's how I feel. I'm just really surprised. Now, that doesn't mean because I'm critical of what happened tonight. I'm not even criticizing the people themselves. I'm criticizing the behavior of the people. I try to make that differentiation when it comes to people who are Jewish and people who are Zionist and the people in the military and government who are doing these things. It's not all the same. Some people don't even know these things are going on in some cases. They believe that their government tells them, which is, hey, these are just people that are being held as human shields, or they, they're just unfortunately you know, collateral damage. You hear that a lot, right? Uh, most people aren't horrible at their core. Some are. But I do know this. If, if, if I'm someone that wants to be taken seriously and try to advocate for a group, if I'm constantly talking hatefully about wanting to kill them and chop them up into pieces, why should anybody take me serious? I think that's disgusting. So anyway, and then to be accused of somebody who's spent thousands of hours making videos and doing lives over the whole term I've been doing this, and even on Twitter for years before this, and even in my whole life, I, before we had the internet, I was just talking to other human beings. I would go out and just talk to people. And I've had people who are older, who are staunch Israeli Zionists, and they would tell me things like, Israel's a miracle. I'm like, what do you mean? It's a nightmare for the people on the other side of this. How many people in America in 1990 were advocating in public, talking to other people about the fact that Zionism is a curse and that Palestinians are being horribly mistreated? How many people do you know that were doing that? And this is not to pat myself on the back, but I am no enemy of Palestine. And the way that I was talked to tonight was as if I was some kind of turncoat. And yeah, that frustrated me. I don't like, you know, for someone to accuse me of that is absolutely fucking absurd. And that really bothered me, you know? So I'm pointing it out and sharing my thoughts about that because I think it was wrong with what was said. And again, if you're somebody who supports Zabeda and you want to support the way she does things, God bless. Go do it. And I'm not supporting Israel. The person who was on the live tonight, her name is PG. And like I said, I try to be kind to people. And she was being shit on so horrifically. And she, people were telling they wanted to kill her. And just think, what does that make you look like when you act that hatefully towards somebody else? They could be the wrongest person in the world, done the horrible things, but you, if you say that, it makes you look just as bad, in my opinion. And that just really bothered me. It struck a nerve. It struck a really uncomfortable nerve. And I'm just talking about it. That's all. Yeah, exactly. When, you be, when someone behaves that way on the pro-Palestinian side, in my opinion... It makes the pro-Palestinian argument, it diminishes it. It makes people look bad. Somebody says that PG is a good, kind woman. You know, I, I, well, man, maybe she was acting disrespectfully on the live before I got there. And if she was, that sucks. And somebody says she's a good, kind woman. I have no doubt that she has kindness in her. She can be kind like all of us can. I think that the things that she's supporting are not kind. But I don't, I don't wish to kill her. I would never say that to somebody else. I don't want to kill anybody. Now, if somebody was directly harming my family, if PG was literally carrying out the things that were harming my family, yeah, I would, I would try to stop them from doing that. Of course, that's different. But if you're somebody who likes that style of flamboyant, over-the-top, hateful language, yeah, we're going to show those Zios who's boss. Okay, go watch that crap. You know, the, the tack that I take is different. I'm not saying it's better, it's just different. And mine does not involve that. And I find that stuff to be absolute garbage. Because you know why? Because it's like the golden rule. I don't want to be treated that way. And I don't want to see others treated. I'm not going to mistreat people the way that I don't want to be treated. And I'm not going to come up here and be browbeaten by some person who thinks that their way is the highway. And that's it. If you don't believe in me, go to hell. That's a very, very... Uh, you know, politics is about compromise, common sense, and being level-headed. Not about, hey, if you're not 100% on my version of doing it, go to hell, you're, you're a turncoat. You know, 
I probably agree with 99.9% .9 of what somebody like maybe Zabita does. I may not have the same level of passion because I don't directly live the experience of having family members or being from that community. Fair enough. But as far as advocating for what I believe to be a righteous cause, I, I think I'm up there as someone who doesn't have that family relationship. But to be shit on publicly without even being the chance to speak with nobody not knowing anything about me, I think is really, really, really frustrating. So, I, you know, listen, I, it's about shared humanity. You know, I think PG and I probably in a, in a conversation about any other issue in life about, you know, it's just like normal life and exercise or enjoying nature, we'd probably get along fine. She seems like a pleasant, attractive woman. I mean, who knows? But on this particular issue, we, we disagree vehemently. You know, we see it from completely different sides. And that's okay, in my opinion. And I'm not going to hate her for thinking differently from me. I don't have any hate in my heart for anybody. I just hate to see people acting like that to people. That's it. I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I think PG is attractive. I think she's a pretty woman. I'm not saying I'm attracted to her. I think she's, you know, from physical appearance side, you know, God, look at me. I mean, she's got me beat by a mile, right? But I'm just, and listen, I'm trying to be conciliatory and polite to somebody. I think when you're being nice to somebody, you point out the positive attributes and you just be kind. And, uh, you know, that's... I mean, that's, I think that's not a false observation. I don't think she's an ugly person. But the point is, is that I don't hate PG for what she thinks or who she is. I don't like the views she, she embraces as far as Israel and Zionism and what's happening in the occupied territories and especially what's happening right now in Gaza. It's horrible. And there are reasons why she supports it, I assume, that she believes. And if you ever watch my panels, I try to give people the latitude to have their views. I don't think many of the people who have been on who have been on panels that I've been on where they've been rather unpleasant towards me have had a chance to come up on my panels. Most people don't. They, they probably just assume that I'm going to put it right back at them. But you could ask Dapper. Dapper's been on my panels. Um, I've had Mark Dash on my panels. I've had, um, who was that? Mufasa was on today. And, you know, I don't know whether any of the things these people say is true. Sometimes they bring up data. They talked about the IDF today and some information. I got to check it. But why should I automatically uh, disparage somebody or dismiss what they have to say outright? I don't know. Maybe they're saying something that is truthful, in which case, why should I just dismiss it? That doesn't make any sense. But I don't know PG well enough, other than the interactions we've had on here, to you know understand who she is and how she behaves. Although I would just assume that most people, outside of some of these contentious issues, listen, if we didn't talk politics with most people, we'd probably get along a lot better, right? And most times you meet somebody at a party or you go out someplace, you're just talking to somebody. You have no idea what they believe. You're just being pleasant. And then you start to cross some of these lines. You're like, oh, damn, that person thinks this. That's not too cool. Especially in America. I mean, right now we have such a huge left-right divide that it's absolutely crazy. So sometimes people are talking very nicely and then one person finds out that they like Donald Trump and they're like, oh, my God, I can never talk to this person again. What? The, what how crazy is that? So I'm just trying to be human. I don't look at Zionists as subhuman people or, or monsters. I do look at some of the behavior that is meted out by the Israeli military vis-a-vis -vis Palestinians to be absolutely horrific. And I think if most people who are kind-hearted people who do support Israel saw some of this for what it is, if they have any decency within them, they would see it for what it is and be like, damn, that's fucked up. I got to hold out hope for that because that's what's going to change the tide of this. But beating people up, talking down to them, talking past them, and wanting to murder them is not going to be peaceful, ever. That's, I mean, do you think it could be possibly? What if somebody said to you, you're worthless, you're worth nothing, I hate you and I want to chop you up and feed you to dogs. Would you want to have peace with that person? I wouldn't. So that's all I'm trying to say. And everyone's entitled to speak their, their truth and act the way they want. If Zabida wants to go around and have panelists up who say that kind of stuff, you know, good for her. Maybe there's an audience for that. You know, I have my audience, which likes the style that I have. And I appreciate the audience for liking that style. But I can understand how other people enjoy the other approaches. 
But I can tell you this, as a guest, both on the panel that I was on tonight and the panels that I've been on where people have been rather harsh, and that's the nicest way to put it, I don't find that particularly enjoyable. I don't feel respected in any way, shape, or form. And it doesn't make me want to give respect back. You know? So anyway, it doesn't make me a pro-Israeli to recognize the humanity of other human beings. You know, just because others in positions of power have decided to make inhumane decisions towards a group of people doesn't mean that every person in that society or who supports the government and the aspirations of the broader population believes in those acts, per se. I mean, I swear to God, these purity tests that people put on, whether it be for politics or for these particular things, is absolutely absurd. You know, 99.997% loyalty is 100% disloyalty. That's how I felt tonight. That's really how I felt tonight. And most of the people that are saying this have no clue what I even do. So they're making themselves look like absolute jackasses by jumping to conclusions out of their emotions and anger. No, I'm not a Trumper. I'm not, I don't support MAGA. I don't support the Democrat. I don't support anybody. So I'm going to bring up guests in a minute. Hold on a sec. I'll bring up guests in a minute. I just need a little time to get this out of my thought. This is, listen, I very rarely get rattled. People who watch me know all the time I'm pretty level-headed. And I really go out of my way to try to be fair. And it's very rarely that somebody will shit on me to that regard from the Palestinian side. That's what I'm most upset about. I, I expect it from people who are pro-Israel to be, you know, personally attacked and, you know, all the things that happened. I was in li two different lives today and that's all that happened. I, you know, they just couldn't help themselves. And I think the reason for that is if I was allowed up to just talk about the issues, that I'm a fairly effective communicator, I happen to know a good bit, and it's hard for people to create a flow of arguments that I can't then come back with things that make a more persuasive case. And therefore, I think that it is the best thing to do with somebody like that to, to kind of go after their character. That makes sense. But I think that's sort of counterproductive. And if you were on today's live, and you can go back and watch the recording, it'll be posted tonight, the one that, was, that went most of today, you can see very clearly how people who came up who had a different point of view were treated. They were given the time to say what they wanted to. They were given respect. They weren't talked over. They weren't muted incessantly. They certainly weren't ganged up on. I don't allow that to happen. In fact, before I have a guest up who I believe has an alternate point of view, I specifically say both to the guest who's coming, hey, please, no personal attacks, but to the people in the comments as well as those on the panel, no personal disparagements, and let's be polite and let's hear somebody out. Right? My replays are all posted 100% unedited to my Twitter and my, I'm sorry, to my, to my YouTube and my Rumble channels, which if the way you can find them is in my bio where all my videos are, there's a link. If you're, if you're located in the U.S., it's a clickable link. It says Linktree Chip Barnes. And if you're not in the United States, I have written the text that you have to type into your browser. And then once you either click or hit enter, it will take you to a list. A lot of people have these lists. And mine has my Instagram, my YouTube, and my Rumble. Rumble's just another site like YouTube. And then I have uh, some Telegram groups. And again, if you follow what I do and what I say, you'll be very clear where my point of view is. And my loyalties are not mixed just because I try to be decent to people. And then you know, there's some places where I accept donations from people because I do a lot of work for this cause. And, and by the way, the stuff that TikTok gives me, I did, I did a seven and a half hour live today. Guess how much TikTok paid me? $10. Seven and a half hours, 10 bucks. I'm not complaining. I don't do it for the money, but people are claiming I am, and that's absurd. I'd be a fucking moron if I was doing that for money. And that's why I do ask my audience periodically. I got to pay, you know, the rent, the utility bills, car, you know, all that stuff, normal people stuff. I live, I mean, I'm home seven days a week. I don't go out to dinner. I don't go out places. I live a very quiet life. But like everybody else, I have a basic level of expenses, and I just ask for that. And that's it. That's all I give a shit about. I don't want a lot of money. I've, been, I've had a lot of money. I don't care about money. But anyway, so I, I try to be fair. And the fact that people shit down your throat without first finding out what you're about, I think is just really lousy. And if there are people like Zubeda who are maybe more radicalized in their way of doing things, if that's the best word to describe how she approaches this, she has her space to do her things with her, the people who like that style. And I, I wish them well, because I want to see them advocate effectively for the, for the same point of view that I share. But in every movement of people, you're going to have differences of approaches in people, just like we have with the Palestinian Authority and we have what happens in the Gaza Strip. 
big differences, right? Both people care about the same thing, I think. They just have different ideas of how to get there. And I respect that. Somebody says I'm wrong about Zubeda. Hey, I'm happy to be corrected. I'm not a closed door. But I can only go on what I've experienced so far of what's happened with Zubeda. The first time I had to clear some people out of my room and she, she bitched from the mountaintops to a bunch of people to turn, turn people against me. She made a big deal about it because I got contacted like 25 people saying, hey, this person was really upset. That means she made a big deal about it. And I've been kicked out of lives before. I don't go belly aching to the world about it. I might try to get back in. She didn't even give me the benefit of the doubt. She just made assumptions that I was kicking her out because I, I was just being some sort of pro-Israel person, which again is fucking idiotic. But again, these misunderstandings can happen, so be it. And then I was listening to her tonight and she's just absolutely militant in the way she approaches these conversations. And again, that's her right. I got nothing against the lady. She can you know, do whatever the hell she wants. I hope it has a positive impact on the outcome for the benefit of Palestinians, whatever it may mean. But I'm not going to sign up for that bullshit. I'm not going to try to hang out with somebody or spend time around people who mistreat people like that and automatically make assumptions about them and besmirch their character and mischaracterize their points of view. For what? You know? Somebody says she's not 100%. Listen, I, I hope she's a kind, sweet person. Maybe, maybe I'm completely only seeing her in these two moments in a way that she's indicating otherwise. That's possible. But I'm not going to bring anybody up on here to go back and forth. and have, I've done that before. I'm tired of doing that bullshit. I, I give people too much latitude to bash me. I'm just tired of doing that. If people have different ways of doing things or if there's a more appropriate time, I'd rather get with her offline, quite frankly. If she's interested in having a conversation, I can give her my email. We can exchange telegram numbers or whatever. I'll obviously listen. I think I'm a good listener. But at this moment right now, I'm, I'm less than excited about it because I'm disappointed with what I heard. I thought it was really, really uncalled for. Not only how I was treated, but who gives a shit. But I don't believe in, in treating people that way. No matter. And listen, if you're a good person, you believe you're on the right side of something, you don't have to. You just do it by example. You don't have to shit down somebody's throat to prove your point. In my opinion, that's, that's my opinion. So yeah, if I'm confused, but listen, the person on the live who hosted that live, he goes by Ahmad Talese, I think is his name. I don't know. He was the person hosting. And the very moment, I was given no more than two seconds to speak before he was saying, you piece of shit, motherfucker, you Zionist, you blah, blah. And everybody started chiming in piling on. Oh yeah, he's pro-Zionist, man. He's a faker. He's not pro-Pali. He's pro-Zionist. Like, what the, what the fuck? Where the fuck is this coming from? And she didn't say a damn word to clarify. I don't even know how much she knows about me. Maybe she thinks I am. But I'm not. I will guarantee you that. And anybody who's followed me on, this, on these lives or even my videos or anything, even in my personal life, people will tell you that I am staunchly anti-Israel, staunchly anti-Zionist, to the extent that I've alienated so many relationships in my life I could have made a shitload of more money. I have people that I could have been in business with who see it differently. And I've broken those relationships over this issue for decades. That's why it's so angry for me to be called out like that. You know, because it's just not true. Anyway, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to make too broad assumptions either. I'm simply uh, offloading a little bit of what the experience was tonight and the last time, and I'll just leave it at that, okay? I'm not going to make any broader statements about it. Uh, if she has a different demeanor and mannerism and different approach in other circumstances that I just haven't seen, fair enough. And like I said, I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody with whom we might have disagreements or bad moments or whatever. That's just what smart people do. I think they talk and they work it out or they don't and they can agree to disagree. That's fair too. But in the end, I hope we can all, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I'm going to try to keep my eye on the prize of what matters most in terms of what I believe. And that is, I want to see Palestinians have autonomy and dignity and self-determination and freedom from oppression and freedom from mass murder and have some support somewhere in the world that's broader than just, you know, a smattering of half-baked Arab leaders who don't really work for their own country's benefit, but they're co-opted by the West. I want to see a positive outcome. So that's why I take the tack that I take. Because I think that that tact for me is the most, uh, has the most possibilities. Okay? But again, everyone's got their choice and their style. Some people hate people who are Zionists so much 
they're just seething in their eyes. And I'm not speaking for Zubeda. I don't know exactly what's going through her head. But I will tell you this, the person named Liberty Mine, and I don't know the person, they may be an amazing guy, amazing man in all other aspects, but for whatever reason during the live tonight, what was said is all I have to go on. And uh, that was, in my opinion, not okay. And if this person who was saying these things has love in their heart for people, I, I don't think that he exemplified that tonight by what he said. So, you know, we all can be criticized for different things in our lives. That's fair enough. But, you know, one thing I've never done is advocating for the murder and killing of people and for chopping them up and feeding them to dogs. I just think that's so far over the top. And if I was somebody in a live and somebody said that to me, I would just be like, oh my God, what is wrong with these people? And I, again, I think it makes people who, and listen, I would like to see us all have success in our advocacy. And if you're somebody who can sit on a live and allow somebody else to share that and not, not even say anything about it, in fact, just laugh about it and encourage that, uh, I think that makes you as a participant in that forum as culpable or as bad by not speaking out against it. What's wrong with you? It's okay for anybody to be angry and, and super pissed off and absolutely outraged by what another group of people have done. I'm with it. And if that's, if that's what somebody's okay with, if they think that's just A-OK, -okay, no big deal, uh, that's not somebody who I want to hang with. They can, I, I will happily support their ability free speech-wise to do whatever the hell they want. But I think it violates the community guidelines here, for God's sakes. I mean, that's, would you think that's hate speech? You know, if I advocated for that, if I advocated for those things, do you think that I would get reported? Absolutely, I'd get reported for being hateful. I don't know if somebody reported them or not. But it was worthy of being reported, I think. You know, not many, not many times do I think people should report people, but for Christ's sakes, that was some of the worst language I've ever heard. So, no, I'm not bringing up Zabita on my live. It's not happening. You know, she and I can connect off offline. I'm happy to do that. She can. You can either email me. My email is chipbarnesonline at gmail. I have no ill will towards you. I don't dislike you. But I wasn't particularly happy with how things went down tonight and what happened the last time. But it could just be, you know, circumstance. That's fair. But anyway, so, hey, somebody says stop talking about her. Listen, whoever that is, I'm going to talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. So if you want to talk about something else, go somewhere else. Take Take a hike. This is my life. I'm expressing to people what happened in my life tonight, and I think I have every right to do it. Like I said, I'm not trying to disparage her, but I'm going to share my point of view, and if you disagree or you want to go somewhere else and listen to somebody else, go. Okay? Uh, the, the way things went down tonight were not okay in my view, and not a single person on there did anything to stand up for me. Not one person said, hey, that's not okay. This is somebody who's advocating. And my feelings aren't hurt. I was just shocked. I was shocked at how mean-spirited and how horrible people can be who support a cause that I firmly believe in. I was like, what the fuck is this? What in the fuck is this? Somebody says, you're doing the Zios. I'm not trying to cancel her. Are you kidding me? I just said a second ago that I support everyone's right to speak however they want. I would fight to the death for somebody's right to have free speech, anybody. Because I think that if, if one person's speech gets canceled, then we all are potentially canceled. And I don't want to be canceled. So I support anybody who wants to do what they want. But the way those things were said, I, listen, I, I think if you're going to say shit like that, that's that horrific and you're worried about being called out, don't say that. That's Advocating killing people in mass is not okay. I'm not trying to cancel her. She, was, she just wasn't the one who said it. I told you the person that said it, Liberty Mine. I'll say that and listen, if this person wants to come at me or think, I'm not trying to cancel him either. He can say whatever the hell he wants. I just found it shocking. And believe me, if I said some shit like that on a live... I would be called out to the end of days. My name would be plastered across TikTok. It has been for other things that I said on my Twitter that were wrong and that I apologized for for like six weeks straight. And to some people, that's still not enough. I understand. You know, everyone fucks up. I don't know if what the person did tonight was, quote, fucking up or if this is what they believe or if it was just an anger moment. Whatever. I'm not judging them. I'm just saying I was just shocked by it. So I'm not speaking on anybody's behalf, Joe. I'm speaking about my 
feelings and what I responded to tonight. So again, it, I'm not speaking on anybody's behalf. I'm somebody who has advocated for an issue. I'm not Palestinian. I don't know the life path of living in the shoes of a Palestinian person. I've talked to a lot of Palestinian people, both through this app and at different protests and other people throughout my journey in life. But I don't have any family and I don't have anybody from Israel either. So in a way, I'm kind of the most objective type of person. I don't have a direct bloodline to either party. And a lot of people who don't can speak to an issue in a way that's a little different. It's not as impassioned because nobody's hurting, quote, my people, and I'm not involved in any other group that's either doing the hurting or getting hurt back or any of that stuff. I'm an observer and try to share my views. I think a lot of people who watch my style are doing it like my style. And if you don't, that's fair. There's all sorts of other people on TikTok or elsewhere to watch. You can, I'm just one little minnow in a big pond of content. But I was pissed tonight. I'm still pissed. I'm just shaking my head in disbelief that this host, Ahmad Talez, could say the things he said to somebody coming on who's incredibly pro-Palestinian. And yeah, I'm an American. I'm not a Palestinian. So you may say, well, who the hell are you to advocate for our cause? Okay, but if I were in somebody's shoes, I'd want as many advocates as I can get. We don't have to agree on every little detail or every little approach. But for Christ's sakes, don't shit on people who are completely agreeing with your point of view and helping discuss it in public for hundreds of hours a month, in my opinion. And that's why I was just so shocked by it. I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, if you're somebody who thinks differently, uh, I don't practice Christianity, I don't practice Hinduism, I don't practice Judaism, I don't practice Islam, I don't practice any organized religion. And the reason I don't is because of what makes me question a lot of other things. I'm a skeptic. You may think that makes me a lesser human being for not being willing to embrace the faith that you believe in. And maybe I am. But I don't think you have to be a, 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 a person of religion to see right or wrong. And I call out Israel in the most harshest of terms to the point where I get people telling me, hey man, you should dial it back. You're being too harsh. I get criticized for, so, for uh, isolating Israel. And I'm not fair enough about criticizing other bad situations worldwide. I focus on this one because it pisses me off. I learned about it in 1989 and what I learned was like, this is bullshit, man. How, how, did I, how did it come to be that I was told this story that Israel was our friend and it was a safe place for Jewish people and all these horrible people just wanted to kill everybody? And then I come to find out that the people who are supposed to be the victim are the ones brutalizing their neighbor and that the land that they have was taken from them. I didn't know any of that. And that pissed me off. And so it, I've been somebody who's tried to learn as much as I can about it. I don't know everything. And I don't have the lived experience of those who have literally been affected by it directly. Fair enough. Uh, somebody says, I have no clue about the things that PG said. Yeah, it's possible. I said that earlier. I said there may have been things that PG said earlier in the live that I didn't see that might have instigated the responses. That's possible. But I don't care what PG said. As people have said, somebody came onto my live one night. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. And because I've been unable to corroborate some of the most egregious allegations against the H group on 10-7, and I have said very clearly, I can't deny them, but I can't confirm them. And somebody named Menachem Bagel III, who's a staunch Israeli Zionist, said, and I quote, you deserve to be anally raped for not agreeing with, not believing in the, the allegations. And of course, I dropped the guy, but I didn't say a bad word about the guy. I didn't, I didn't get all pissed off and angry and act all hateful and say that, oh, all your people should. No, the guy's a jackass. So I don't know what PG said. But again, I try not to let other people get the better of me who are opposed to me because it just, it just gives them uh, ammunition. And they, they get you. They get under your skin. And they're kind of like, oh, I got that person. They're kind of laughing. And it happened today. I was on some a pro-Israeli live. And they were upset. I, w I wouldn't come up and I finally did and all they did was start attacking me personally so I dropped down. But all they did was talk about me for like 45 minutes. It was comedy. I recorded some of it. I'll probably put it up on, on, my, uh, on my YouTube. So yeah, fair enough. Listen, there's a lot of things that we do that we don't know everything. I, I get it. Maybe, maybe I need to be made aware of that. Maybe somebody can tell me. But I'm just sharing this one little incident because I, I just, it's so 
bothered me. It does, but it still bothers me. And I just, I just don't want to be infighting with people. It's like, what is the point of this? You know, I think any time that we can get more people on the side of advocating for something that we know and believe in our hearts is right, we should, even if we don't agree with everything they say or everything they do, who gives a shit? It's like they're all trying to push the ball in the right direction. I know it's not all about me, Kathy. I know it's not all about me. That's the point. The point is it's about the message. It's not, it's about the message that, that makes my point. If you want more people furthering the message, don't shit down their throat. Exactly. But I have a right like any other human being. I have, I have, believe it or not, I try to be very unemotional, Kathy or Chrissy or whoever said that. But and I normally never get emotional about anything, hardly ever. But this one made me angry. And so I have every right, because I spend hundreds of hours doing this a month, to come up every once in a while and just vent a little bit. And that's what I'm doing, maybe to my detriment. But it's where I am, and that's what I'm doing. And if you don't like it, as they say, as Quinn would say, swipe the fuck on. Because that's what I'm talking about tonight, because this is what's on my mind. And I talk about a lot of other stuff that has nothing to do with me most of the time. So, there you go. So I would, I always like to have guests up. I enjoy conversations. I enjoy panels. But I got to say, tonight was a bad night. Tonight was a bad night. It's not going to, not going to, uh, you know, people are kind of encouraging. I'm not going to give up on talking. It's, this means a lot to me. But it's just, uh, it just was so incredibly negative And so, for me, it was so disappointing to hear people doing the same shit that I so often speak out against, which is just absolutely shitting down the throats of guests. I just completely disagree with that approach. And I think that in general, if you're gonna have a whole group of people up and then have one person come up and just shit on them, what good does that do? Might make you feel better. Oh, I got a Zionist, I'm gonna shit on them for an hour, right? And if that makes you feel good, I feel sorry for you. You know, I just, I think that's so counterproductive. Yeah, I've, whoever just said that about the Twitter stuff, I agree wholeheartedly. What I did on Twitter was wrong. I've, I've, I've owned it. I've, I've fessed up to it. I had seven hours of lives where I let people come up and criticize me, share their views. I've addressed it at length. I've also gone on other people's lives and talked about it. So I've tried to deal with it as directly as I can. I fucked up. I had, out of 25,300 25, tweets, I issued two that were inappropriate that I lament greatly, but I'm not, I can't live in permanent, you know, discussions about my, my fuck ups. You know, it's just every time, every once in a while you screw up and what are you going to do? You have to try to move on in life. You can, if you think somebody's mistakes are, are so grave that you can't continue watching or listening to them, then that means you just move on and listen to other people. That's fine. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, but when it's the first inclination when somebody criticizes you for making a mistake, you want to just kind of get out of dodge, right? You want to just give some space, just not have to face up to it. But I think that's the wrong thing to do. And so that I, I, I tried to meet it head on. Okay. Yeah, and by the way, like, like it says in the Bible, and I'm not Christian, but it says, you know, may, 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 may the person without sin cast the first stone. Like if, if you've never done anything wrong, then judge away. But anyway, yeah, I know people who are Palestinian want to have a dialogue. You know, I'll take a look at who's in the guest queue. I normally do a thing with a lot of guests after talking for a little bit. So I see we have Dapper and Zach and Dionysus and PG and Queen Nez and Cat and B. I don't know who B is. I recognize some of the names. You know, I'm really reticent. The last thing I want to do is to have something blow up into more, you know, just, just tonight was unfortunate. Let's put it that way. Unfortunate. It just really disappointed me, quite frankly. You know, it just it really disappointed me. So I sent a message to somebody who I know well who was up on the panel, who has been on my panel a lot. He's in the live now. I'm not going to mention his name. 
And I just laid it out there. I'm like, hey, man, you know, this, this was wrong. That, that, was un, that was unacceptable in my view. And anybody's, I said, anybody's entitled to do their shit, but if that's the kind of stuff that you like and you're supportive of, just, you know, please stay there. You know, don't come my way. And so, anyway, I, listen, <laughs> I'm not doing this because I want to harm anybody else. I really don't. I mean, I want the movement to be as, as locked tight as it can be to help get the outcomes that are necessary for the people. Because ultimately what matters is none of us. We're sitting here talking on a fucking phone on a Friday night. How about the people that are in tent cities that are living in shitty conditions with no medical care and they're injured or hurt and getting all the... They're, they're the people that matter. This is all stupid stuff. But anyway, m maybe this is a necessary chapter in this just to show some common humanity. I don't know. It just, it, tonight just seemed to bring out the worst of, of, of what we can or are. You know, then we all have good within us and we all have bad and any part of it can come out at any given time. And tonight I just thought was the absolute worst. It really just, uh, I was like, what? Anyway, all right, I'm gonna, listen, I'm going to bring up the person that I messaged. This is somebody who I trust, who I believe has the best interest at heart of the conversation. But I don't see him in the, let me invite him up this way. Hey, brother, how you doing? I'm hanging in, just a little bit flustered out of my norm. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what? I, I didn't catch all of it, but I did catch what, uh, sorry, what was the brother's name who who made the comments? Uh, Mark, the, uh, I can't remember. The, the host name was Ahmad Talez, and the, the yeah. person who made the comments there about the chopping up and the dogs was Liberty.mine. Oh, sorry, Liberty, yeah, yeah. So I, I was actually in the kitchen at the time cutting fruit so and my kettle was boiling so I didn't hear everything but I did see some comments that you were in the uh, comment section trying to come up uh, or you were commenting and to be honest I was also very troubled with the comments of Liberty Mind. Uh, I've been on his lives before you know he, he's, a, he's a perfectly good guy. So, by the way just want to say something to everybody first anybody who's in the comments here saying shit about chip that he's not doing the right job or he's on the wrong side uh i'll tell you to fuck off myself okay chip is a staunch ally he's a brother uh he's with us uh there's very few people who who i know who've put in the hours that he has done okay so anybody who's putting up silly comments this is exactly what the Zionist uh, infiltrators want. They want division. Uh, I highly suggest you delete your comments or you do not make stupid comments like that. Um, we all get, and even say uh, the gentleman, the brother who made the comment, okay, um, it, it was offensive, but I also understood where that came from because this PG, by the way, I've heard her before as well. She's a vile piece of work. She really is. She's a classic Zionist. They have zero compassion for anybody else. They care only about their, their own uh, private cult. They've got no concern for the lives of any anybody else. And he spoke out of um, he spoke out of frustration because they are unaliving innocent unarmed people at a at a prolific rate even when the whole world is against them, even their big ally, the USA, has started to turn the table against them. And despite that, their benefactor, the, the, the one entity that is sending them billions and billions of dollars, is showing their dissatisfaction with their, with their conduct. And they don't care. And so we're up against a very, very uh, wicked uh, adversary and this is an adversary for all of humanity people like Zubeda people like uh, Chip these are rare gems these are people who've given time so I don't want to hear any bullshit from anybody speaking against anyone Chip is you know he's got, he's got a very uh, well, what's the I mean you've got a very unique approach I, I, I really have a lot of love and respect for Chip. He's got a very unique, respectful approach. Some people, even I was frustrated at Chip giving sort of um, airtime to uh, Zionists. But you know what? 
there's a method in the madness because when you give these people airtime you give them rope to hang themselves because these zionists they don't come up and you know show their any humanity they show how wicked they are they show how they have zero concern for anybody else's life they show and demonstrate what we all know that they believe they're some fucking chosen race okay when they're not even a race uh, they they believe the bullshit that they're indoctrinated with okay and they full well know that they are oppressing in the most vile and evil way an indigenous people and they do not care and so as much as i hate hearing their voices what we have to understand is that there are people who are hearing this for the first time the world is bigger than TikTok. There are people coming to these apps, these conversations for the first time. So we may be getting pissed off in hearing these same old Zionist infiltrators, these wicked, vile, evil people coming up, spewing their bile and their hate. But then there is always new people who are shocked and horrified by what they're hearing. And they are now becoming allies of ours. So I am now I'm trying to have that patience. And I, I'm telling you that patience for me is very, very hard because like Chip, I've been on, I mean, I've been on this all my life. I'm, I'm the same age as him. Okay. We've got a, we've got similar backgrounds. I'm ex-military too. And so we both know what these people are like. And we know what war is about. You know, we've been there and these people are, are, they are horrendous people. Chip knows this, you know, I sense the, the genuineness in, in his voice. Uh, uh, and you know, people, I mean, I, I, I wasn't, I, I did have somebody, by the way, regards, whatever was said on TikTok, I've not read it. I'm not aware of it. All it was is I invited somebody to one of your lives, Chip, uh, a couple of months ago. And he goes, no, no, I'm not, I, I wouldn't go to his lives. I said, why? I said, he's a, the, the man's great. And he said, oh, he's a racist. And I thought, oh, stranger, he doesn't come a, a racist wouldn't be advocating for us, uh, for brown skinned Arabs and Muslims and Palestinians. It doesn't stack up. Uh, here's the thing we all are allowed to make mistakes in our lives we all have some sort of I, I'm to, i'll put my hand up i have my prejudices against certain people and i think it's it's a natural human trait we're tribal people we're allowed to by the way mis make mistakes and we're allowed to be politically incorrect and so but the thing what i what i, what I was really taken with you know with what uh, chipper said is uh you know that he he didn't run away he faced it and you know he's dealt with it like a man and he's apologized and he's had those conversations and i would i can only imagine as a result of that he's perhaps seen what he said was wrong i don't know what was said but he's been big enough to be able to not hide not run away and openly discuss it on these lives i think that takes balls that deserves respect i'll have more respect for the person who faces and confronts whatever mistake that he's made, you know, and he's openly admitted it. So I, I think, you know, people should drop it. There's people making comments. Also, the other thing is Zubeda is uh, very passionate. She's very strong. You know, she's incredibly well-versed, well-spoken. And being, uh, an, you know, an Iraqi, she's Iraqi. So, you know, she suffered. Her people, the Iraqi people have suffered tremendously. One and a half million of them you know, massacred on the demands of the Zionists. Okay, so I understand her pain because she sees her pain of her people reflected in what's happening with the Palestinians, where there is wanton destruction of their, of their lives, their culture, their homes, everything. And so what we have to do is stop taking sides because you know what's happening the only people laughing and winning are people like this pg because she's sat there in the sidelines giggling away you know so be in support sorry my my brother I, I i hope you don't mind me speaking but you know i just want people to understand that you are sincere zubeda is is sincere uh, but also chip I, I don't what i wouldn't want you to do is dismiss people because they've said something out of turn because it's not because they're bad people because they're suffering 
extreme frustration. They're losing family members. And I know you know this, you know, I would, by the way, I would never advocate anybody saying anything the way he did. He's wrong and he's, he's admitted it. I was just in the live there, you know, and, and he's, he's accepted that he was wrong. Uh, he shouldn't have said that, but you know, what he, what he also, you know, what people have also said is that what people say and what people do are obviously two different things. And so let's all be one, let's speak with one united voice. You know, if, I, if there's one thing I can do is to bring people together because we are stronger when we're together. We don't need click cliques or clicks or whatever you call them, you know, little groups here and little groups there, because this is their speciality. You know, they balkanize us. They, this is how they destroy and weaken us. And this is the plan. This is what their plan is to to destroy the Middle East and the Muslim nations and, and to weaken them and to have them all fighting against each other and have our allies fighting against each other. We are blessed to have somebody like Chip on board. He's not a Muslim. He's not an Arab. He's not an Asian. He's a white skinned European. He even was, you know, ex US military, you know, and you'd think, why would a man like this? be on our side you know why because he's a friggin human being and he's a bloody good human being and if you just watch down his channel and have a look at all the stuff that he's done all the advocating that he's done he could be doing something more productive for himself earning a living and you know you know building his own retirement fund instead of putting all the thousands of hours that he's put into this so let's not be uh sidelined by the infiltrators like this PG, who genuinely is a vile piece of work. I've heard the bile that comes out of her. She has zero compassion for any human that is not a member of her Zionist cult. You know, uh, thanks, brother. Thanks for letting me speak. You know, I have a lot of tremendous amount of love for you. Uh, I will always back you up as well, but I'll always back anybody who speaks. But we also must be mindful that when our, when our brothers and sisters speak out of line which is not in accordance with islamic principles because what he said was wrong it's not in accordance and i've just spoken on that live as well and i made it very very clear and i'm just going to share the same there's a story uh, i'm just going to share and then i'm going to finish off for you imam ali was the first imam of the muslims he was the successor of the of the prophet and he was his son-in-law and he's mess he was married to the blessed daughter of the of the holy prophet he, there was a battle called the Battle of Badr, where the Muslims were outnumbered. And the enemy had the, the pagans, the pagan Arabs, who were the, the Quraysh tribe, they sent their champion forward. And he was this huge giant of a man who was, a, who was like the greatest warrior in all of Arabia. And Imam Ali was only 27. He's a young warrior, but he's, you know, you wouldn't think he's going to match this giant of a man. And he steps forward as the only one who will do one-to-one -one combat because this is how the battles would would dealt with you would start with one-to-one -one combat and imam ali puts him to the ground he's about to kill him but the enemy soldier he spits in the face of imam ali imam ali puts his sword away and he's saying why aren't you killing me he wants this honorable death he said if i kill you now i kill you out of anger and revenge i don't kill out of anger if i if you hadn't done what you'd done and i'd killed you i would have killed you for the sake of god for the sake of this religion but i'm not going to kill you and i'm not going to give you that honorable death because you don't deserve it you spat in my face and i don't fight out of anger and revenge so what that means is you have to have patience you have to have patience and you have to be considered because this is the way of the muslim and this is the way of the Muslim. This is the warrior code of the Muslim. That you do not take uh, your anger out, um, you know, out, out of turn. You know, and that we do not act in anger. There were so many times when the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, warned the people about your anger, can curb your anger, never act out, because only a fool acts out of anger. However, in the current circumstances, we understand there is tremendous anger, you know, so we have to be very forgiving for those people who speak with anger. Okay, and I'll also implore upon you as well, Chip, that you, 
uh, I know you're a good human being, brother. Uh, be forgiving as well. And we are all one team. We are all one team. And if there's anything I can do to mediate, because one of the, I've got a big plan. I haven't done any of my my own lives yet because I was going to, because my account was fairly new. I was waiting for uh, my following to increase so I can start doing lives. And then the fasting came, the month of fasting came and I thought, I can't be doing all this fasting and doing all these lives as well. Uh, but I will do. And one of the things I want to do is I'm going to feature all the major players and people who've stepped up, the people who've won, people like yourself and Zabeda and all the other big names who, I mean, these are all, by the way, when I say big names, I'm not being uh, sort of, you know, bigging people up. These are ordinary brothers and sisters who've taken it upon themselves to speak up. They've volunteered their time. They've volunteered their resources, you know, uh, and they've, and they've basically done something rather they're not the people who sit in the comments who are fair with the friends who turn at the slightest change in the wind you know these are people who are staying the distance and they've been here six months so i've got my plan is that i'll i'll feature start featuring some lives where i bring to pop prominence people like yourself so we increase the following because if you're not like if you're on this life and you're not following chip you're not following zubeda and all the others follow them get in there follow them because the support is massively needed because the algorithms are suppressing the the followings you know we've got 359 people here there's a billion people on this app there should be thousands watching this live right now not 359 or 400 or whatever the figure was earlier you know there should be thousands and that's our response it's our responsibility to to share these don't rely on other people to do it uh i'm gonna step down or go quiet uh but thank you for everything you do uh chip uh i know you was angry i i to be honest was very upset with hearing that as well because i know this is not our way you know, if, if somebody who is a, a practicing Muslim, then this is not for us. However, what we do, what we don't do is we don't discard those people. We take them under our wing and we correct them and we help those people and we help them understand the errors of their ways. And, and that's my approach to this as well. Thank you very much, my brother. Thanks. Thanks, Shaq. Thanks for coming up and sharing your point of view and for the nice words of encouragement and uh, for your good points. I appreciate that. I'm going to actually just take it down for right now for a second. Uh, okay, so there was two parts of tonight, just to be really clear. I wasn't, I'm not usually angry. I, what I was, I was just shocked more than anything. Um, I was shocked at what somebody was saying, because I'm just not used to hearing that kind of stuff on the pro-Palestinian chatter. Maybe I'm just not aware of it. But it was, that's, that's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. So hopefully that's a one-off thing. But even if it isn't or whatever, I, I never close doors to anyone. So if the time and place is right and there can be a, a conversation, I'm, I'm always open to it. And I will do more listening than talking, which I think is the right way to do it. So uh, there's nobody, including uh, the person who said what they said tonight. I mean, they may just like I have, have had moments. Maybe they had a moment, whatever it may be. It's all good. Um, the part that really got me kind of pissed was whoever that host was. He obviously has, maybe he just doesn't know my background. But, uh, you know, just, and, and this happened, by the way, this happened the same day of what happened with um, when Zabita unfortunately was taken down about two weeks ago when I was, it was like an afternoon, I was walking down the street and uh, some people got on the live and were just absolutely saying some horrible things. Like, what, what, what is this all about? So anyway, I don't know if that same person, but I don't remember who it was. But the point I'm trying to make in general is, you know, this, this whole thing is about, you know, the kind of the golden rule, right? It's like do unto others as you would want have done unto you. I would imagine that most of us, like myself, if you go up on somebody's panel and, you know, this is why I initially took exception. And like I said, anybody has a right to do whatever the hell they want. I'm respectful of that. And that was the first thing I usually try to say. In fact, I was going to say that, but I was cut off before I had a chance to speak. But, uh, you know, just given my background of getting up on people's lives and being absolutely shit on, I go out of my way not to do that because I think it's just the wrong way to do it. And so when I saw somebody not knowing what they might have said before, granted, getting what I believe to be as absolutely shit on, I just tried to come up and make that point. Now, I said, the words I said was, I'm here to defend PG. I should have said it differently. What I should have said was, I'm here to defend someone not getting shit on. 
That's what I should have said, but I didn't have unlimited speech time. She was, it was so funny because I think PG was shocked. I think she thought I was getting up to pile on, which is, which is the funny part of all this. And uh, as soon as she heard me say what I said, I'm sure she was like, whoa, what's he saying? Um, but it's not about the person. It could have been, you know, Donald Duck or Daffy Duck or Minnie Mouse or whatever. It doesn't matter who the person was. My, my take is, and, and um, you know, this is just how I try to roll, is not to shit on people. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And I'm really disappointed in whoever that host was. He seems very mean-spirited. And maybe he's not, but the impression I got from him was he's just downright mean. And uh, I try not to roll with that. I'm, I don't consider mean as a good thing. Uh, but I understand angry, I understand moments. So it may have been what it is. Uh, yeah, I know PG has said some things about me that were unflattering. I've, I've listened to them directly. She said, I'll just share with you some of the things she said. I don't, it wasn't that over the top, but she said that it's clear as water that I, I lie, that I'm spreading lies. She thinks that I'm doing this for money and other people in her group said I was doing it for money. And, um, you know, other insults, no, it's no big deal. It's like, whatever, you just, you know, you take it, you know, it rolls off your, your back like a duck. But it's never fun to be targeted by, you know, we always like to have a nice exchange, right? But I expect it. But it doesn't mean I have to dish it out that way, right? And I, I, and I don't know if, I don't think PG's been on my lives before, maybe she has. But I've had people like, uh, there's someone named Dapper. And by the way, if you don't know, Dapper, Dapper has sent me some messages here and there. I think we're, I friend some people, not because I'm friendly with them, but just because you can track their lives and stuff and you can see what they're doing. People probably do that as well. And there's someone named Dapper who's been on my lives before. He's very pro-Israel. And, you know, the reason why I haven't had Dapper up lately, for those of you who don't know, I've had him up a couple of times. But every time he came up, he would just automatically gravitate to blaming people for being anti-Semitic. He would call me an anti-Semite. And I was like, hey, Dapper, you know, it doesn't always have to come down to that. You can make your point without accusing people of being hateful towards Jewish people. And so I've been reticent to bring him up. But what he said was, and this is, this is the crazy part, uh, right after all this went down and I kind of got off the live, well, he, was, he must have been listening because he sent me a message and I just happened to see it because it said, you know, sometimes it pops up as a banner. And it said, now do you see the shit we've been dealing with? That's what he said to me or something to that effect. And I never want to hear somebody say that. I don't want anybody to have the ammunition to say that. That was why I was most disappointed. You know, like I said, the individuals can do whatever the hell they want. I'm not trying to tell them what to do. I could give a shit what people do. But why give somebody on the other side that kind of uh, ammunition to work with, right? And that's why I do things the way that I do them, because I don't want to give people that. I've probably seen the words rise so-and-so, rise so-and-so, rise so-and-so. The more people say that, the more I ignore it, just so you know, especially when it's in all caps. So please, please don't put stuff in all caps if you don't mind. And when I'm, if and when I'm ready to bring some, some folks up, I'll do that. So I understand totally if people, uh, you know, feel differently. I respect everybody's point of view, even if I don't agree with it. And uh, if anybody, if I, this is the other thing I would hope that people would do. I'm, there's going to be a live from earlier today that I'll upload. But if you go to my YouTube channel right now, if you want to just get off the live and go check it out, uh, there there are lives galore that you can look back through and go watch it any day, anytime. I don't edit any of them ever. It just is what it is. And just go see the things that I say. Don't judge me by what you think. Judge me by what I do. And you'll see that what I do is consistent in all times in terms of giving people a chance to speak, not being mean, asking others not to be mean, and then, of course, just speaking to the issue as I see it. And I've said this before to people who are pro-Palestinian. I've said this to people who are pro-Israeli. If the script were flipped, like literally there was an Arab state that was carved out of historic Palestine, and it was Jewish people who were affected by this, I would be exactly the same criticism, but I would levy it at the Arab government for what they're doing. So it's not about the parties, it's about the actions. And I think that's fair. I'm incredibly saddened, as I was when I first learned about this, that the Palestinian situation has only continued to get worse. It's terribly unfair. In my mind, it's reprehensible and disgusting, especially the fact that the United States, the country that I live in, and the money we pay taxes to, supports this stuff. That, to me, is one of the most disappointing aspects of this, is that here we are, we can't do a damn thing to change it, and we're funding it. And we're watching in horror as this you know, horrific situation plays out, and it only gets worse. And that's what has me, that's what makes me upset about it. And uh, I don't know how else to put it. 
But I do love to have dialogue. I think dialogue is good for any issue. And by the way, I've had plenty of other panels on things that have nothing to do with this issue. For those of you who follow me, I've talked about Ukraine. We've talked about other issues. We've talked about the American political system and all the problems with that at length. So I just enjoy conversation. And I like to hear different people's points of view, especially if they disagree with me. But I just disagree with shitting on people. That's it. That's it. That's all. And just, it was... When I came on and saw the live, just to let you know, the first thing that went through my head is, and I didn't see the previous comments, so fair enough, I didn't have the full context, so maybe it was inappropriate of me to come up and butt in. I can see that argument. But no matter what happened before, whatever was happening at the time I came in, it was what it was, right? So I am not, I'm not somebody who's a proponent of PG or of Dapper or anybody else for that matter, and I'm not platforming people when I let them speak. I'm trying to let the audience understand the mindset and then have fair responses that give people a good juxtaposition of thought. You know, most people don't know this about me, but I went with a friend of mine. I went to what's called the pro-Israel rally. And again, oh my God, are you pro-Israel? No, I went there with a friend of mine who's Jewish and his six kids piled into his minivan and we went off to the protest to, or the gathering to see the nat natural Kai protesters, if you don't know them, they're the more Orthodox Jews that come to places to protest against Israel. And I went to see them and I interviewed Rabbi uh, Yisrael Dovid Weiss, who's the head of that group. And I have it on my phone, I haven't posted it to YouTube, but I will someday. And again, I just try to have a, a, an open view. And that doesn't make me a, a, someone who loves the other side, but I, I just gotta be fair, you know? That's it. So I know you can't make everybody happy, and no matter what we do in life, someone's going to be pissed, right? Um, listen, I, I don't, I don't. Someone keeps telling me what to do. You know, Nadia, I appreciate your point of view. You're welcome to it, but you know, let me get this out of my the best I can. I'll, I won't talk about it after tonight, obviously. But I got to tell you, I don't hate PG. I don't feel any animosity towards PG, towards any of the people that I've had uh, uncomfortable moments with on the other side, because. I don't have hate. I don't. I just don't feel that emotion. And at the same time, I've never had family members unalived by another group of people that would probably create a much different set of uh, feelings. So I totally understand that. And people have lost loved ones on both sides, and I can see why that spurs anger. You know, it's just a bad situation. There needs to be a peaceful resolution. That's the most important thing. And the fact that, I always talk about this, the fact that the Israelis have settled the living you-know-what out of the West Bank makes it impossible for there to be a contiguous territory for a two-state solution. The Israelis have made that, that, that option impossible intentionally. Every country in the world, including the United States, which provides a lot of the money for it, uh, they've still publicly said they're against it. But that has made it impossible. And then a one-state solution can't happen because they want to have an ethno-state that's dominated by a Jewish majority, and you can't, from their point of view, they don't want to incorporate uh, other people into a political system where they may have a plurality or, or a minority control. So it leads to a no-win situation. So the question is, how is this going to change? And how, is, how, can, how can people who care about this issue stop making it worse for Palestinians? Because that's all that's happened, in my view. It's only gotten worse. And when people fight back because it's only gotten worse, they're vilified. Like it's a no-win situation to be in. And so I, I always try to explain when people challenge me, like why, why do people have to be violent? Like they don't have to be violent. Anytime there's a political opportunity, why everybody wants that. But when somebody makes an offer, I talk about this all the time. If somebody were to offer you lunch and they made themselves a nice big sandwich that looked really, really good with you know, all the fixings, and then they, they offer you a plate of food, and instead of giving you the same sandwich that they have for themselves, they offer you a couple pieces of bread with a bunch of cat turds in the middle of it. And then they hand it to you and they say, here, would you like to have some lunch? And you're like, no, I don't want that. Like, what do you mean? Don't you like to eat? Are you not, you don't want to, you don't want to be a considerate? No, I can't say yes to that. And that's every deal that Israel's put forth is a big cat, cat shit sandwich. And then the Palestinians get blamed for not wanting peace. But who in their right mind wants to eat a shit sandwich? So that's the deal with that. So 
that's that's one of the reasons why I got triggered because when when people question my motivation, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And unfortunately, a lot of people do that. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's just what happens. Somebody says that's just not accurate. Solly zero 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 one thousand. Well, you know, the the the, the this is the challenging part of those of us who have sat on the outside looking in for so long. The narratives have driven this conflict, and the Israeli narrative, unfortunately, for those on the Palestinian side of this, has been the dominant narrative for a long time, and has kept people either purposely ignorant or confused or both, I would argue that there are probably many people in Israel that aren't bad people. They've just been seriously misled by their government with narratives that don't accurately describe what's actually happened. And just like in my country, we've had the same thing happen to a lot of our American people. And until you finally break free from it, you're not somebody who sees outside of that. That makes sense. So in some cases, the people that support Zionism just don't have any idea what they're really supporting. They don't get it. But once there are people that once they do, if they have a decent heart and they have a conscience, they can't stick with that program anymore. They're like, wait a second, I had no idea that was going on and I didn't know this involved that and that's not right. And I think most people in general know right from wrong, but it's hard to make that differentiation if you don't see the wrong things that are going on. So I, I try not to vilify somebody who doesn't, who's not aware of what they don't know. And there, for those of you out there in the audience who are listening to this, and you know, some, you've probably given somebody in a hard time for not getting it or whatever, but you also have to think of your own life. Were there times in your own life, myself included, that you just didn't, you weren't aware of something? And then six months later, you were. It wouldn't be fair for somebody to come at you six months ago and say, hey, hey, dumbass, why don't you think what I think? Why don't you get it? You just haven't been exposed yet. That's why I take the tack that I take. There was a young man in the audience today who was somebody who was you know, young and emerging, and he has a lot of beliefs that are contained by the narrative control. But there's only one way to change that, and it's not by calling him a filthy Zionist or telling him his whole family should be whatever. It's to have dialogue and try to chip away at that crazy armor that's been created falsely by on purpose. At least that's how I see it. And we have to get people like that to, to break through the, what I consider programming. Now, people would say that's condescending and rude and inaccurate. Okay, you're entitled to that viewpoint. But that's the observation that I've made. And I've had, some, I've had a lot of time to dig into this, 34 years. Most people are just kind of touching this thing because it came on their radar recently. So we can't expect everybody to kind of know things because they just hasn't been on the radar. But I'll tell you one thing that has changed and it's been a horrific sacrifice to achieve this one change. But the awareness around the conflict is so much bigger than it ever was. And the awareness of what Israel actually does versus what it says it has done, and it still has a lot of people confused where it says human shields and war is messy and all these other excuses, but most people looking in aren't buying that anymore. They're like, no, come on. I mean, the average person when they see the pictures and the video of the children and the women and the buildings and the mosques and all the stuff, all the destruction and chaos, they don't buy the excuse that it's the age group holding people hostage. They just don't, they don't believe it. It's like, it's, it's indefensible behavior. And therefore people who have a lick of common sense are just like, no, I'm not. And then the good news is also is that not only are they questioning this issue, but that same sort of curiosity that has, has been sparked is applying to other issues. And let's face it, the problems in the American government that allow the continuation of American support for Israel's policies is the same exact political problem writ large for economics and oppression and all the things we see with money and power and foreign policy. It's all tied together into the same problem. So people are waking up, thank gosh. But a lot more have to. But that's been the biggest change that I've observed. And if, if, that, if that was part of the thinking behind this, if that was part of the calculus, I think to that in that regard, that was mission accomplished. And I, I'm sorry for every part of the civilian part of this that got harmed. I mean, I think anybody with half a heart cares about both sides of that. But I can't imagine what it's like to live under occupation and blockade and how horrible that must be. And I just can't imagine somebody criticizing me for when I try to do something, anything to break from that. How can you possibly criticize somebody for doing that? 
And if you give somebody a framework in which they can be peaceful, then they will be. And if you make it impossible for them to be peaceful through political means, well, what do you expect? I think it's unreasonable to expect otherwise. But again, having been in a war on the front lines of the first Gulf War, I know how horrible it is. And I know that nobody in their right mind after having seen that or been a part of that wants there to be any conflict because it just, nobody wins. It's horrible. So anyway, um, now for the remainder of tonight's live, it's 10, 18 p.m. my time, I'm probably gonna do another 40 minutes. Um, I kind of just veered off back to the conflict, which is where I like to have the conversations be. What I would be willing to do is if Sabita wants to speak with me or somebody else wants to speak, you can happily DM me. You can contact me at my email address, chipbarnesonline at gmail. If you want to have your own live and invite me on to talk, if that's the form you want to do it in, great. I just, I'm just not up for it tonight to have a conversation in front of this form. That's just not where my mind, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just not there right now. Let me let the, uh, the moment kind of just wash across and maybe a good night's sleep and another half day will uh, clear the palate and be able to get there. Okay. Yeah, somebody says you go to sleep, old man. Not quite, don't have quite two feet in the grave yet, but uh, anybody. Now listen, I know everybody likes uh, sort of, uh, what is it, like uh, controversy or, uh, you know, whatever it's called, you know, gossip or whatever this whole thing. I don't even know what you call this stuff, but that's not why I'm on here. And hopefully that's not why I don't want to make this into a Jerry Springer episode, you know. But it's not about being afraid to talk, to address it because I'd rather be able to address it one on one, not in a public forum. So if, 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 if somebody here who wants to come up and address it here wants to address it, I'm happy to have the conversation. Like, like Shaq said, you know, I'm not closed off to anything and I'm not, I'm not a jerk. Um, and maybe I have my head in the wrong place. If that's the case, I hope somebody will, you know, get me where I need to be. So if you want to send me an email, it's chipbarnesonline at gmail. If you want to contact me here on TikTok, you know, you know how to do that. And if you want to send me a telegram message, you can get me on telegram. It's just uh, my name, t.me forward slash Chip Barnes. So if you want to talk about that stuff, feel free. We can have a conversation. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Happy to mend fences as we need to. Now, if you're somebody who wants to speak to the conflict and you want to talk about anything to do with uh, the current events or your feelings about the situation or you want to weigh in, um, I see that Nader Who is in the audience here, someone who I really have a lot of fondness for. I really like this person, and he's probably been waiting patiently. Let me bring him up, and I'll bring Brenda up, and we'll just see where this takes us. My man, Chip. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, you know, sorry I missed it. I, I don't. I don't listen. I don't. I don't care. Um, whatever it was, you know, I, and I just want everybody to understand because I think, I, I don't I don't know what happened. I don't really, I don't, things happen. I don't want to know what happened. It's okay. I don't well, know. I, I want to bring the audience up to speed because some are in here and have no clue. So let me just share what happened. It's not, not even that big of a deal, by the way. Um, it's, I was on, a, I came into, I was watching, you know, you scroll through lives, you're just kind of listening yeah. in. And there was a live that was most, I think it was pro-Palestinian. It was hosted by somebody who I had not met before. And, you know, I came in after someone who was a pro-Israeli guest said some things which I wasn't aware of. But you know how I like to run. I, mean, I don't know how many of my lives you've watched. You mostly do your own. But my way of doing it is not to beat up on somebody like yeah, too hard. Yeah, I've seen I've, I've been. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. No, so no, they, I was watching basically. Here's how I thought. I was watching a dog get beaten ruthlessly on the side of the road. If I were to stop by the side of the street and saw five kids beating a dog, I would get out of my car and stop it, right? Well, figuratively, that's kind of what I saw. So I kind of came in and was like trying to say something and immediately got kind of beaten down for trying to stop the dog, the dog beat up and was criticized for it in ways that I thought was really inappropriate. Okay. But in addition to that, some things were being said that were beyond over the top. Yeah. That if anybody was on the Zionist side were saying about Palestinians would be in other words, it would be completely objectionable, but for some reason in this particular life, people were deciding to go down that path. And so I yeah. actually recorded, I have the whole thing recorded from start to finish. 
Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know who the person is. I see the name in the in the comments, uh, Zubeda. I, I don't, I don't know this person. I don't know whose life it was. Um, no, it was but... she. She was not. She was not involved in any of the oh, stuff. Okay. She yeah, was a they member. They keep saying the... bring this person up. I don't. I don't. She know was. Who that person she was in the live, and she was in another one of my lives about two weeks ago, where she was unfortunately taken down along with like four or five other panelists when there was like one of these Jerry Springer moments when everybody was talking right, and right. nobody could. So I think that caused a little bit of friction, but and then tonight people misperceived that I was defending somebody with a pro Zionist message oh, when I was just trying to get people off the back of the dog. That was it. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, um, everybody has their style. Everybody has their take. One thing I want to say though, yeah. just generally speaking, uh, for anybody that thinks, you know, that chip is not, uh, on the right side of history, that he has some kind of agenda that, you know, when you spend 34, 35 years, uh, you know, studying an issue. And this is his issue, by the way. This is, you know, he's not a Palestinian. I'm a Palestinian. I have learned, as a Palestinian, I have learned a lot from Chip in the short time that I've been following Chip. Um, you know, we, I mean, this is as much his issue as it is anybody else's because he's an American citizen taxpayer. And his, his, his money is paying for the injustice that's taking place against is taking place right now against uh, 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 Palestinians. And so he definitely is involved and he has a right uh, to speak out about it. And he clearly have never, been, oh, I, I gotta keep my eyes off the, off the comments, my God, my God. Um, uh, yeah, I, I lived in Palestine for many years. So um, for somebody that says I was never there. Um, but you know, there, there, if you, your style, the way I see your style, Chip, and the way you handle your lives and the way you handle your discussions with, uh, um, you know, and you do what I wouldn't do because as a Palestinian, you know, I would get in very heated debates and I do not debate. And so I, I see you as the, as the person that is from the outside looking in. I would rather you have those discussions because you're on the outside, you're not a Palestinian, you're not an Arab, you're not a Muslim, you're not an Arab Christian, uh, you're, not a, you're not Jewish, you're not a Zionist, you're not an Israeli. And so you're from the outside looking in, you are able to speak to everyone and to see things maybe differently than the way I see them. Even me, and I, and I see a lot of things the same way you see them, but I think we need, we need that. And Palestinians especially should never shoot themselves in the foot trying to uh, silence you, uh, trying to tell you, uh, for example, and I don't know if this happens or how often this happens, but tell you that you're, because I've seen it happen to others where they tell them, you know, you're co-opting the Palestinian issue. Um, you know, if that's the, you know, and if that's the case, go ahead, co-opt it because you're doing a great job. I mean, it, what your, what your advocacy is, um, uh, is needed. It's very important. And, um, you know, and I, and I appreciate you. So for, and, 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 you know, most of these people in the comments that are asking, you know, bring this person up, do this, do that. You're looking for drama. I mean, just, we, we all see it. You're looking for drama. You're looking for like what Chip called a Jerry Springer show, you know, let the man vent, let him explain and and we move on from this and however he wants to handle it he handles it and you know and i commend that i commend that um and for whoever i don't know why they keep mentioning this one person but you know god bless this person you know i mean i, I don't know this person but um that's that that's fine he's he offered a discussion offline have a discussion offline and then maybe it'll come online you know for everybody that wants some entertainment well, okay, but you know, that's really all I wanted to say. I just wanted people to realize that we need all the support that we can get. We've been crying out for decades as Palestinians for support from around the world. And here they have it in a man like you, Chip. I mean, you have, you're not somebody that, you know, and God bless everybody who has just discovered this issue uh, since October 7th, but you have, uh, uh, have been, been following this and studying this for th almost 35 years. Um, 
And and the fact that you're not a Palestinian shouldn't matter one bit, doesn't matter one bit. I mean, I want everybody to realize one of the one of the nonprofit organizations that everybody's advocating for is PCRF, right? And who was that founded by? It was founded by S Steve Sosby. Steve Sosby, and you know he's not a Palestinian, and 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 he's an advocate for Palestine. And by the way, we just gave him our first uh, uh, contribution to his new organization, Heal Palestine. Um, so understand that that you know the support needs to come from everywhere, and that's really all I wanted to say. So everybody should just take a step back and appreciate the fact that you have somebody here online that is is speaking common sense. The fact that he speaks to both Zionists, I look, I speak to Zionists once in a while. If I if I could have a discussion with a Zionist that has uh, somewhat of an open mind, I will speak to that person. I will probably not agree with much of what they say, but if they're respectful with me, I can speak to that person. And I have, and I've actually made some some friends who have, have changed their opinions who were Zionists uh, ever since coming up on this app especially. And so, you know, I think if you have somebody that is able to speak without, um, you know, with, able to speak with common sense and with honesty, that's a valuable person and you should let them do what they do best. So thank you, Chip. That's really all I wanted to say. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be looking on, on YouTube for, I didn't know that you put all the lives on. That's a really smart idea. I, I got to go back there and see some of your stuff. There's a lot. There's like, I don't know, I think going back to December 19th of 2023. So how many, that's like what, four months worth or something like that. So there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have to take a look. And before I go, just one more thing. I just wanted to uh, um, say I agree with you. You know, we have all made mistakes. I've made mistakes. Everybody's made mistakes. Um, and, and we're going to continue to make them. And we're going to make them. And if you want to be around to see them and call them out, do it respectfully. respectfully. And, and that's okay. And anyone here, I mean, people just in the comments alone have made mistakes, just in the comments that they have placed here have made mistakes. And, and, and so, <laughs> you know, I mean, you guys are, are uh, anyways, everybody's beautiful, everybody's wonderful, and uh, we hope that um, we can move forward from this anytime. Uh, you need anything, Chip, uh, give me a call. You have my number, and we'll be in touch soon, hopefully. Thanks for coming up. I appreciate the nice words. And thanks Thank for being you. a friend. Thank thanks you. a lot. Bye -bye. Take care. Yeah, um, there are a lot of people putting pressure for me to bring certain people up. And I, I'm not doing this because I don't want to address the issue. I just would prefer this is just my personal choice. They're they're more than welcome to host their own live and talk about it to their audiences or invite people from this audience. All good. It, whatever you want to do to address it on your end, that's fine. What I've asked is that if we're going to address it, I would prefer to do it in an offline fashion. Uh, it's not about defending people's names or whatever. Everybody can speak to whatever they want to say about themselves or whatever, and the audience will decide or whatever they feel about whatever. That's just my preference. And again, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, I'm not afraid. I'm not, in, not intimidated. It's just that's my preference. If you don't want to do that, that's fine too. I, but no matter what happens, just to be clear about this, people in the comments said, you know, this needs to be worked out. I'm not going anywhere in terms of advocating for the cause. Uh, and I doubt anybody else is who cares about this. So regardless of what direction things flow, it, it's irrelevant to the cause because the most important thing is it's not about any one of us. It's about the message to be carried forward, in my opinion. That's the most important thing. Hi, Brenda. How are you doing? Hey, Jeff. Good evening. Um, oh. So I, I didn't catch the live that you're talking about, but I think you know, just, just inferencing on what you're talking about. Um, I think I want to just put this reminder out there to everybody that, you know, nobody that is on this platform or basically any social media platform, um, you know, owes us anything. Um, and I think people, what we come on here to do in our advocacy is like our own. And so like our choices that are how we choose to share things and go about. And I think, I think this is also why I'm very much, um, I gravitate towards your live because it's really interesting that you came on because I saw that you came on again in the moment that I had disconnected from from a, a live in which I, it was very unpleasant for me as well. 
Um, mm. And I, I think I got attacked as well um, on a live about for what I think was, and I think this is where the danger of what is happening now, because, you know, I think it's not, it's not becoming fatigue of us advocating it. I think it's just like, we're getting entrenched and people are getting angry and we're directing our anger, I think in the wrong direction. Um, so what I, what I feel like, what I see my observation of what's happening is that, um, we like you know have everybody saying for you to patch things up like we don't all have to agree on everything right so this what what the i see this all as a spectrum so you know you're on this side of the spectrum you know and you agree with these things and this is how you like to run your life and how you you like to conduct yourself down here and it's like we don't all have to agree so it's not about patching things up because it doesn't have to be something like chip said like he's not going anywhere um, and I feel like for me as well, um, I think we don't all have to agree on how we see things. And, and I think what's happening now, and this is what I also don't like about, I don't like lives in which people are getting roasted and do this and that, because I think it, it's, it's like the concept of like an eye for an eye. So, you know, we dehumanize one side and then the other side also gets dehumanized by the other side for their anger of what's happening. And I think that is, it's by design as well. So again, we need to like look up at the puppet strings and see what is actually, um, what is actually truly happening. And like, it's not about us personally, like there's nothing personally about us. Um, it's just more about, like you said, like the cause and like not going anywhere. And um, yeah, that's all I wanted to, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks for all, and thanks for all your support. You've been a wonderful person to have on these lives. Thank you for that. You know, anybody's entitled to be however anybody wants to be. I've made a very polite request and extended out an opportunity. If anybody wants to take advantage of it, do. If you don't, don't. Um, my preference is to try to resolve things like this offline and not have it be like, like Nader said, be all dramatic and out in the front. Other people may disagree. I can't, I'm just speaking for myself. If you disagree with that decision, God bless you. But I don't like being pressured by other people told you have to do this, you must do that, let me. No, I don't have to do jack shit. Okay, if you're somebody in the comments is, that's making negative comments about me for my choices or whatever, you can unfollow me, you can tell people I'm a horrible human, but whatever, whatever works for you, go do that. But if somebody wants to reach out to me, I've given them multiple ways to do it. I'm happy to engage. I just don't want to do it in public, okay? I've shared my thoughts for the night. Maybe I shared too much, which makes somebody feel like they're not getting a chance to, quote, defend themselves. It's not about that. It's about, uh, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'd love to have people come visit and listen, and hopefully people will go back and look, and you can decide for yourself if what I'm saying is accurate or if you think I'm a... Whatever, a turn code or whatever. It's not, anyway, it is what it is. Let me see if there's some other guests that want to come up and talk about the issues. Now, there is somebody named Dapper in here. I like bringing up voices from people who disagree. And Dapper, I'd love to bring you up, but unfortunately, and I kind of asked you this last time, not to make it get back to disparaging comments. And I don't, I just, I don't know if you can help yourself or not. But, you know, I just, I, for whatever reason, I just think it's part of your, process where you just have to get to that point where you disparage people who disagree with you, which is unfortunate because I want to hear your points, but it is what it is. Uh, let me see who else is here. Amjad is here. Let me let Amjad up. Amjad comes in a lot. Jeff, how are you doing? Hi there. Good. I agree with you totally and not bringing this to public. Uh, I think uh, your message is uh, important for us. We are a people. We want to hear somebody who's, as Mr. Nader said, from outside of Arabia who support us, stand with us. Uh, the most important issue we speak about is the unfair uh, situation in Gaza. It's not about uh, 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 solving a small issue like this. Uh, if uh, people want to hear uh, uh, Zubaydah, she have her own life. She can, they can go there and listen to her. 
and um, uh, who like to listen to Chip, who, who he will come here and listen to him. I think uh, the most important thing that if, uh, as I know that this lady is uh, pro-Palestinian, she speak about what happening in Palestine. You you do the same. So the, I I don't think it's uh, important if there is an issue in opinion. Uh, that's a normal thing. Uh, different in opinions, different in. Uh, that's uh, something normal. So I don't think uh, we need this drama out here. Uh, I think we need to uh, to solve this offline. I think it's better and whatever it is. Uh, I don't know all the issue, but all I know one thing that we need your voice. Your voice is very important for us. Thank you for your stand, and I think um, it's important to keep your voice always on and uh, to have this uh, uh, to have this uh, voice always uh, uh, being listened to because uh, you doing a great you doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And by the way, I just want to wish people like Zubita the best. I hope that she's able to accomplish whatever it is she wants to accomplish here elsewhere on TikTok. She seems to be an amazing advocate for the cause. Just to be clear, you know, I keep getting pressured by everybody to do something someone else's way. You all can do whatever you want in your own spaces, okay? I'm not trying to be a prick, but if I share that I'm going to do something a certain way and I'm willing to engage with somebody, I'm not blocking anybody off. I just don't want to air it out in public. Now, Zubita just made a comment in the comments that was really just, she's a very strong-willed woman. I respect strong women. But if you relentlessly beat on somebody because you want it done your way every single time, it doesn't always elicit the most positive responses. So I unfortunately just block Zubita from my traffic. I don't want to have her relentlessly beating on me, telling me that I'm making all the wrong decisions and I blew it and I've ruined things and all that are bullshit. I don't feel that way. I extended you the opportunity to come talk. If you want to talk, you still can. I, you gave my email address. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to speak with you. I just don't want to have it be this big back and forth on the thing. I'm not going to say anything more about it. Okay, if you're in the comments griping and you think that I fucked up, then go watch her and go watch it. Just, it's okay. But let's all keep advocating for the same thing. That's what matters. Okay? Uh, the reason I talked about this tonight, just to be clear with everybody, is because what was said on that live was horrible. People are asking, like, what's this about? I was on a live and I was listening in and I was trying to mind my own damn business. But there was a very pro-Palestinian panel that was absolutely tearing into somebody and were treating them horribly. And I mean horrifically bad, saying they deserve to die, that all people of their type should be killed, that they should be chopped up and fed to dogs. I mean, this wasn't just a little bit. Of, this was really, really bad stuff. And it just shocked me that I was hearing a pro-Palestinian live with people addressing somebody that way. I just, I was absolutely bewildered. I think, um, I think we, uh, as a human beings, as Muslims, as Arabs, we don't support violence against anyone, killing innocent people or tearing them or cutting them or whatever it is. I think uh, we need to, be civilized to other people so we can get our message in peace out um, uh, we show our anger yes for what happening in palestine and those criminals uh, they do in killing innocent civilians in gaza yes but that's not mean uh, because somebody is bro uh, israel we have to threat and kill and I think that's uh, not the message, the right message we we should give to people. We need to show uh, us uh, more civilized, more uh, more peaceful people uh, uh, to get our message in peace. I think uh, uh, to be violence to others uh, is not it's bringing the wrong message. It will the re the reaction will be from the other side is more rewards and i think uh, that will not bring any support to the 
case of uh, the Palestinian people. It's it, the opposite. It will bring uh, bad uh, uh, bad support, not a good support. Yeah, some people were saying it's unfair for me to speak about anybody else on TikTok without giving them a chance to come up and say something. I've offered a chance to come talk in private, which I think is not unreasonable. And the only reason I brought it up tonight was because of what people were doing and what they were saying. I was just horrified by it. So she may have a perfectly good explanation on her side for how she feels about it. Maybe she was going to come up and say, yeah, you're right. It was my whatever it may have been. Let's just connect personally. That's all. And for all the people in the comments that keep saying that I'm a total idiot, all these just Get off my back. I have to be given the opportunity to do things the way that I think is the right way to do it. I think airing this kind of stuff out publicly like this, if she thinks that I said bad things about her, which I'm not trying to do, um, you know, then she can say what she wants on her lives about me, and that's fine. I'm just going to keep doing the things that I think are the right thing to do for advocating for Palestine while still trying to be respectful towards people and not do the kind of things that I saw in tonight's live. And Listen, the last thing that I want to do is get messages from pro-Zionists saying, see, see how bad these people are that you're fighting for? That's what I got tonight. Can, can, those, aren't, those aren't the kind of messages that I want to get. You know, I think that's, uh, that's concerning stuff. So I thought what I saw tonight was bad. I don't want to get into the details, but I hope I don't see that again. But if that's the tack that others want to take to get their word across, it's their right to do it. I have no problem with it. I just don't want to have anything to do with it. That's my point. So everyone's got a different style. Uh, everybody's got their own personality. Sometimes they don't work out, but I don't, it doesn't change how I feel about the issue. And hopefully, I'm sure for them, it's the same way. That's all. Anyway, uh, no names being mentioned. How about that? Uh, and listen, by the way, some just to let you know some people and listen if you're, if you're running your own live obviously you have a certain level of control right that's that's just the way it is but some people are very strong-willed human beings and they always have to be right and they always have to do it their way and everyone has to follow what they want done or they they just get pissed and some people are more like that than others and i i have a sense that may be at play in this particular situation you know, I, I did what I thought was right to do. And if somebody disagrees, it's okay to disagree. Okay. And if they still want to reach out and talk privately, do so. But don't contact me privately and start railing on me for not doing it your way. God damn it. I mean, come on. Okay. Enough about that. Hey, Chip, can I say something? Yeah, you sure can. Okay, um, first, I'm going to give two messages. The first message is to the Palestinian. I'm not a pro-Palestinian. I'm a Palestinian. And what I want to say to all the people who is in the comment or are listening, uh, uh, you guys need to understand having a voice like Chib is a plus. We've been fought for many, many years with no voice. You guys need to understand. I don't know how old are you. I don't know how long you've been around. I don't know how much you know about this. Uh, to the Palestinian I'm talking about, obviously, because some young, some is old, some is educated, some is uneducated, some, a lot of, a lot of them, they go by emotion and that's the wrong thing. So we need to appreciate Chib that he's actually doing this on his own with no pressure, just because his, he did his own search. He did his own investigation. Nobody told him what to say. Nobody told him how to uh, act. Nobody told him what to say. So he's doing it on his own. The least thing we do, we need people like Chip, that he's, they speak what they feel and how they see. And his voice, I'm telling you, is going far. And um, it's, it's making a difference. You might not see it today. You will see it tomorrow. So that's number one. Now, uh, for Chip, uh, a lot of people you may hear, let me tell you, I've been in a lot of Palestinian, and what you just said is mind-boggling because I never heard them speak in, uh, in this kind of aggressiveness because as Muslim, we do not have in our religion to un unalive anybody or feed them to whatever you know you mentioned. It's not, and this is what gives us the bad name. When one person says something bad, it makes all of us bad. And that's what you guys need to understand. One person says something bad makes everybody bad. But when I say something good, they're only going to say, only this guy said something good. You guys need to learn this game. The, uh, you know, the Israeli people, the Jewish people, however, that's the game they play. They find one thing and they will 
just chew it like a gum. They just keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it. Just like I've been hearing in all over the, 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 the lives now, they're saying, oh, Bani Israel mentioned in the Quran. I mean, they just take one, one phrase and use it everywhere. So all what I'm saying, Chib is a good person. He's a good voice. We don't have to agree with everything he does, but we need to appreciate that he is in our side and he speaks his mind out with no hesitation and he um, uh, uh, bring the facts and the truth to the table and the Zionists they do not like this they don't like people like Chip believe me and they want to find the least thing they can do so they can use it against him through you so let's not give them the knife to do this to Chip and uh, like I said and we should not use a language of this nature we should be smart on how we approach, how we talk. We should not use the violent the way they are because the, they are being exposed as we speak. The whole world see them. So you, uh, uh, they're physically seeing videos. They're physically, you know, I don't know if anybody saw this two, ch uh, two child just got been unalived and they call, uh, they, you know, they carry them with the loader and they bury them with the garbage and the dirt. I don't know, everybody's talking about this. So this is who they are. Don't expect from them to be nice. Don't expect from them to be uh, good people they, because that's who they are. But we have to show who we are now. We shouldn't be talking in this language on this behavior. I've been in Zubaydah's live. Uh, I've been in Chib's live. I've been in a lot of lives, Jewish uh, and, or anti-Israeli uh, versus, uh, you know, uh, something like Chib. And I'm telling you loud and clear, uh, having a voice like Chib, it's very, very important. And we should not be going on him or he's entitled to say what he wants as long we not being disrespectful. Just you can say, I mean, the guy say, I don't mind speaking to uh, Zubayda on privately. I mean, the guy is extending his hand. It doesn't have, he doesn't have to extend his hand the way you guys want. He can extend his hand the way he wants. And he's being very, very, um, listening to him, being very, very, um, what I say, uh, you know, uh, open mind that if, and I agree with him, if we have a dif if we have a differences, I think we should discuss it in private. Now, it should not be in live and we shouldn't be on each other's throat, you know. And I notice also Israeli, by the way, just for the record, I notice a lot of Israeli, they've been saying in lives, how come the Palestinians follow each other? And we do not follow each other. I hear them talking because I go there and I'm not on the screen. I just listen for hours. And this is what they say. We, don't, we need to follow each other. Palestinians always follow each other. And they create, you know, a group or, uh, you know, a militia, whatever you want to call it. So all what I want to just end up this, Chib is a good voice to have on our side. And he's not doing it because of he's a pro-Palestinian. He's doing it because... He is learning the truth and the facts. You guys need to understand. He's an American. He does not. Um, he's not a. He's not a Palestinian. He's a pro-Palestinian because he, what he learned about the conflict for many years and understand the struggle all this years that those people is going through. So having him a good voice, I would really appreciate if everybody um, speak to him in a nice way. And there is listen, brothers my own brother you can have an argument with but i will never disrespect him or dislike him if anything i respect him and i'll talk to him and try to come to a common ground between and it's my own brother so if chip all what i'm saying we should respect him we should actually appreciate what he does and for the i'm not going to say for philistine uh, we should appreciate what he does for the for the case that been happening for 75 years and you don't have that many people doing what Chip does, which I've been listening to him for a long time. I just lately started going in his lives. And uh, we should, uh, you know, uh, Zubaida also, if she has anybody who talk in that kind of violence, she immediately should sh mute them because she does not want to present the second, you know, the flip face. Because that's what people is waiting for. I'm telling you, they're hunting. They're taking clips. They're taking voices, and they're putting. Yeah. Uh, you just, know, just and, my real quick, Mike, to defend Zabita, she was a, she was also a panelist. She was not the host, so uh, she didn't have the ability to mute the person. I don't think. 
Oh, okay. But 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 the, uh, even the person who's running the show, like uh, the host, should learn if he's a pro-Palestinian. They should monitor this. This is important. I'm telling you. I know. I I listen to them. They're willing to take a uh, like a, a live like this, and they actually copy and paste and makes make it look so bad. So imagine if and you just said you got uh, uh, you know emails or from designers saying, oh, you see, you see, and that's what they're looking for. This is what they want to do. This is what they're after. We should not give them the knife to stab us in the back. We have done so good so far. Something, let me tell you, as a, as a Palestinian, for 75 years, we have never gone that far. We have never been that exposed like we are now. And as Palestinian, we should respect this and we should protect this, what we have done so far, and we should stick to it and um, just be, um, what do you call it? uh not violence be respectful and we should go after what we want and i'm telling you from the river to the sea but without unanalyzing any of them they can make them luggage go buy the luggage put them clothes and they can go to europe wherever they came from that's all i'm saying but without unanalyzing without any destroying because that's what they're good for in islam just so you know chip in the quran they're the only creation god said even when they say we are the chosen people, they the only creation God said they will destruct and they love bloodshed. They the only people, just so for the record. And so we shouldn't be talking in them language. We should not be representing them in them case. We should represent us, who we are. And we are, we have a right for our land. We have a right for our people and we will get it sooner or later. We will get it. Um, I promise you. It's it's in the if you believe in, in in Islam, you know we will get our land. So let's just stick together. Let's be together, peaceful, respectful, respect Chib and respect anyone like Chib who voucher for us, who stand by us. And this guy, he's go out of his way, and I see he spend a lot of time, and he post a lot of videos. I I really like Chib the first time, and I'll tell you the truth. I I don't listen that much, but the first time when he put Nicholson video, I tell you that's when I start following Chip. When he exposed him, you know, because he put a video on Nicholson. If you guys know who's Nicholson, is an 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 Joe New York always show, and he the most person who speaks about these things and lies and left and right. So. We need to appreciate people who go out of them way to help us not to oppose against them. We need to be one hand, not, you know, one fist, let's call it this way, and not to be, you know, uh, uh, draft in the way, the way they do, the way they act, the way they say things. Uh, this is my message to all the Palestinian as a Palestinian. And uh, Chib is an excellent guy and he is for the case. And he is with us for and and this is one important thing. This guy is not getting paid. Just so you know, I don't. I mean, I don't think the H group is paying him. Like the other groups, the other groups, they all getting paid. Let me tell you, <laughs> left and right. So for him to do this on his own time, when he has a job, when he has family, and he have things, we need to appreciate those people. We need to actually thank them for doing this. And and that's keep in mind. He is not a Palestinian. You guys need to understand. He's an American. We Palestinian. So when we what we do to ourselves or what, how we present our case, that's on us. But for him, he's like, you know, an A plus plus. Let's put it this way, because he have nothing to do with it. He's a neutral. So for him to do this, you know, he's God bless him. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. God bless him. We that's need nice. to respect this. No problem. I'm being truthful. I'm being very honest. So oh, we need to respect him, respect the things he does uh, for the case, just, uh, for those innocent people being unalive every single day. I have family there. I go with them live. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows. Right now, they are putting some signals to weaken the Internet so they cannot connect. They're learning. They're learning what uh, the people is doing. Because I talk to people from Rafah there live on seeing the tent. Now it's been five days. They've been, he's saying to me only by text, they're saying they're putting a, a wave to weaken the internet. So you can you can't connect. It'll just be circulating like it's gonna connect, but it's not connecting. And they doing everything to to kill that case. So we need to be, you know, uh, 
waking, we need to understand what's happening. And if anybody has an emotion, just keep it to yourself. Do not expose it. You know, nobody needs to know about it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phase that will go away. What we're looking for is to free our people, free our land. This is all our goal. So we have to do it in a smart way, not in a violent way, because the violent, they're going to turn back and say, you guys, the violent, you this, you that. And we don't want to give them that knife. That's all I want to say. Right. And uh, appreciate everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing those nice words. I agree with the, the fact that, you know, it's really important that we don't, you know, infighting doesn't help anything. I actually listened to a very lengthy live. This is interesting. This is almost like therapy, right? Where you have like a group discussion about reflection. And I listened to a very lengthy Israeli live, just, just to listen. And I didn't make a single comment. I just listened. And, and this is a, it was a very similar conversation where people have got to share different ideas and make different comments. And, you know, this happens all the time in group settings because we're all just, you know, we're humans. And this is how we behave for some reason. We get into groups and different shit happens and it's just the nature of the beast. But with the eye on the prize, I have no doubt, based on what I've heard, I've sat, I've been in Zubita's lives before and listened to her or seen her on panels. She's fantastic. I mean, I'm really impressed with her and the way she articulates and how thorough she is. And she's an amazing advocate for the Palestinian cause. Obviously, I have no issues with her, you know. I, I, the only thing I was, and by the way, she was not the person, just, just to be perfectly clear, to defend her. She was not the person that was saying anything like bad in the live. She was just in the live as a panelist. And I think as soon as that stuff sort of cleared the way, she went and read some things which were helpful. So she wasn't anybody doing anything wrong is what I want to try to say. And I think that's probably what she would have mentioned if we got up here. I have no beef with her whatsoever. Um, what I was focused on, just to let you know, if people are coming in and out, there was just some things said there that I was just flabbergasted by. And then I got a message from Dapper, who's in the chat, um, saying like, hey, these are the people that you're defending. What do you think? And I don't believe that, I, that's the first time I've ever heard anything like that before, which is why I was so surprised. That's it. So I only thought I've heard that come out of Zionist lives before. So anyway, uh, let's let the next person come up. I think uh, I think Alla Bakers wanted to come up next, and then someone with the letter B wanted to come up. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Oh. How are you, Chip? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. So... Uh, I I don't want to like uh, spend more time on the what happened, but just something crossed my mind. I'd like to draw the attention uh, of you and your uh, respectful audience that uh, sometimes one of the techniques that they use, they send someone and talk like on behalf of Palestinian, and but but this guy or this person is another Zionist or something like that. It's, it's like remind me with the ISIS. They uh, they claim that they are Muslims and they did what they did and they are far away from Islam. So let let's just uh, keep this notion. And the other thing, uh, if we can discuss other points, Chip. Yeah, of course, anything. So yeah, I I want to talk before October seven. Just a, a quick reminder for the audience because I like uh education um that you do here in this lives there what happened before uh october 7 and since maybe uh a hundred years ago and uh so so many mass acre i don't want to say the word uh, because of TikTok. so so many mass acre happened and one of them documented by the idf soldiers and it's it's a movie like documentary now tantura i think you know chap that one yes so so for people like uh, uh ignorant or would they'd like to know something about the the conflict or what happened just watch for example tantura which is one of hundreds of mass acre that happened for palestinian in the last 75 and 75 years or more and these uh, soldiers uh, idf talking uh, exactly what they did for a small uh, village called Tantur. It's what happened is 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 heartbreaking and it's uh, it's similar to what's happening nowadays in, in Gaza. So that's the first thing. And then let's go just to October 7. 
Uh, October 7, they're saying uh, that the H group unalived, like 1200 or 1100, but this is not a true. Uh, I'm not defending H group, but I'm saying facts now. Because according to Haaretz, and you know that, Chip, what happened, they admit uh, through uh, investigation that there is like over 400 people uh, from the Israeli unalived by the Apache, by Israeli army. And this is like in Haaretz. Haaretz is the one of the top newspaper in Israel. So again, even 1100 is not a true, according to their sources. And the, the main point that I want to talk about uh, is like, I'd like to, to, if you can discuss this chip, why uh, America, USA, spend these billion of dollars to Israel. Now, they're saying that Israel, okay, uh, like monitor the region there and protect uh, uh, U.S. Uh, things in the in the Middle East, but that happened during uh, maybe the nationalism uh, for like Egypt, Syria, back in the days, but not anymore because uh, USA doesn't need that. Like if if I'm talking pure American now, without like any anything about ha what's happening in in Palestine. USA doesn't need Israel because like as American, we have like bases in every single uh, country there. One of the biggest base uh, in the Gulf in Qatar, another one in Saudi Arabia. And there are so many in, in Iraq and here and there. So it, it doesn't make sense that now in the like, for example, in, in, the, in the in the house, there is the bill HR 815 that passed the senator and uh, the house is like about to vote up, uh, for it. Uh, it. It mentioned like, or it has $14.1 billion package to Israel. And again, if you remember, we talked about it, like we, we send these billion of dollars to Israel and they do have like things that we as American, we don't have it. The luxury health insurance they have, it's another level. Uh, the free education and so many like privilege they have. We as American, we don't have it. Yet, we as a taxpayer uh, send the money for them and they have like better uh, life standard, if you wanna say that. So I yeah, I just wanna like, if, if we can discuss these points, especially the, the U.S. spending on Israel and um, yeah, the bills that's uh, in the house. And that's all uh, for tonight. Yep. Thank you so much again, uh, Chip. Sure. Yeah, happy to try to answer that as best I can. So I, this is one of the first videos that I ever made, in fact, of why does the U.S. support Israel? So it's really the two main reasons as I see it. Number one is that Israel really is a strategic bulkhead for the U.S. military. Remember that this region at the time before the U.S. became more self-sufficient with its own energy production, the, all the oil that the U.S. relied upon was mostly coming from the Middle East, a good portion of it with Saudi Arabia and other exporting countries. And the U.S. had, had a necessity to have a direct connection militarily into the region in case it ever had to go and do things militarily to vie for its interest. And Israel, from a physical standpoint, has provided that. Also, uh, as Alla Bakers mentioned, Israel sort of is a, an overly armed cop on the beat in the region that can sort of push itself around when it wants to with the U.S. backing to kind of, quote, keep the nations and the surrounding neighborhood in order. But I think even more importantly, that plays also a significant role and if people will you know, give a lot of criticism for making this uh, as allegation, but many have alleged that there's something more to it than just that. And this is why the amounts of money are sent over for so many decades. You know, it's one thing to have a friendly relationship with another country that will allow you to come to their shores in case things get dicey. But it's another one to give a country three and a half to four billion dollars a year for 70, you know, 55 years or whatever it's been. It's a lot of money. And this most recent increase of 14 and a half billion is just indicative of that. So you have to ask yourself the question, why is it that 
a small sliver of the global population, a very small percentage of the US population, and an even very smaller percentage from that group have such incredible influence over US policy and also have an impact on the overall economic system. Let's face it, there's you'd be hard pressed to deny the reality that a lot of people who happen to hold positions of power and wealth in the United States happen to usually be also pro-Israel. You know, a good example is Robert Kraft, the owner of the New Orleans Patriots. He's one of the largest donors to APAC. And there are many other examples of this. So the question is, does that influence, along with groups like APAC, affect the policy more so than other interests? And remember, Israel is by far the country that gets the most U.S. foreign aid. I mean, it's not even close. So these are fair questions to ask. I would imagine it each play a role. Okay, uh, Chip, if you allow me, just one more thing, and then yeah. I'll leave the, the pub for the rest. So we rely on, like, as American, we need, Israel, like, they're claiming that we need Israel to protect uh, America, like, things in, in the Middle East. But in the Gulf War, when it happened, we did not rely, or America did not rely on Israel to do the, the job, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's another thing, just to is is it's sucking the money of of United States for no benefits. If we are talking like purely American away from Palestinian uh, disaster or what happened to Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, re remember that one of the arguments is too is that people are making this argument now again when it comes to Iran that there's an influence of the Zionist movement and those who support Israel to try to get the United States to do certain things that are in its interest, meaning Israel's interest, but not necessarily in the U.S. public's interest. And so some people argue that what the Iraq war was part of that. Remember, Benjamin Netanyahu went in front of Congress and said, testified, that the, the number one thing that could be done to improve the conditions in the Middle East and stability and peace in the region is to change the you know, the government regime change in Iraq and, of course, also in Iran. And, of course, Netanyahu said he guarantees, this is his language, I guarantee you changing the regime in Iraq will make a huge difference to the safety and security and peace in the region. Well, what did it do? The exact opposite. It opened up ISIS, the complete, you know, all half the country got laid off by the U.S. temporary, you know, leadership. It's become a complete disaster since then. So, again, it benefits Israel because they have weaker neighbors that they want to be able to, you know, keep an influence and control over. And they want the same thing to happen with Iran. They look at Iran as a mortal threat and they want the U.S. to somehow get into a conflict to then take out who they perceive to be a threat to their long term interests. But it doesn't help the United States citizens to go to war with Iran. It certainly doesn't help U.S. soldiers who are going to go there and die. So a lot of people have argued that Israel needs to fight its own battles. Like do not don't drag the United States in to do your bidding, so to speak. If you want to fight a war, go fight a war. You know, but we're not going to pay for it, meaning that Americans shouldn't have to belly up the money and the weapons for it, and right. nor should we have to provide cover if things don't work out. But a lot of people who support Israel or who see it as a democracy disagree, and they think that we should continue supporting it. You know, the Ben Shapiro's of the world, a lot of members of Congress, I mean, most, if not all, tend to support APAC and whatever it stands for. And that's just the political reality in America right now. I disagree with it as a citizen because I think it's dangerous, it's short-sighted, it's expensive, it's unnecessary, and it actually makes the average U.S. citizen less safe than safer. Uh, there's some in the comments that said, Imran, who said, stop lying. And I asked back, lying about what? So, Ron, if you want to come up and talk or if you want to share in the comments what you think is being lied about, I can respond to the specific. It's hard to, it's hard to respond to a general statement like that. Let me give, uh, if you don't mind, Alla Bakers, let me give somebody else a chance to come in. You're welcome to stay up if you like. Uh, I can't see because of the things that are coming up here. I think the next person is, is it five? Is it number five? I can't read the name. Walid, can I speak now? Uh, I think five was next, Walid, but I can bring you in next. Yeah, go ahead. Is it, I can't read the name, sorry. Be far it? Left. Yeah, far left. I can't read yeah, the name. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Chip. How are you? I'm doing okay. That's good. That's good to hear. So... I just wanted to say that uh, I just wanted to make two points here. So point number one, when you saw PG getting attacked, we need to understand that she actually threatened a very good friend of mine. Actually, she threatened to dox her and her children. And she lied and she said she had videos of my friend talking about her children, which is not true. 
We asked her multiple times respectfully to show the videos to prove her claim and she still won't provide them. Now, doxing somebody's children is just something personally that I will never stand for. So to be honest, what was said to her was out of anger and frustration because okay. of the vile things and vile li uh, lies that she does and she says we also need to remember that she said a lot of things about the children in gaza and the innocent lives in gaza that are beyond vile and disturbing sometimes she says things that are out of pocket and when the person matches energy with her she can't take the heat and she just begins to play victim you know uh point number two dapper uh, has said some Islamophobic comments to us and especially always makes the most awful comments about my prophet. He repeatedly says things like he wants to barbecue our children in Gaza. Uh, the people in Gaza uh, will become rubble, totally mocking the atrocities that are being committed against the people in Palestine right now. He's also sexualized a lot of women, including myself and said the most vile things to me and said that he would and said said some disgusting things that he would do to me uh so that dm that you actually got from him is actually him playing victim the reason why people come at these zios is because of the way that the because of the things that they say first they say the most vile things and then they sit there and record us and then they try to play victim and say that we do it first that's that's the funny thing okay that's that's just what I wanted to say. So these Zios, they're actually playing you. They're sitting here in the comments and they're acting like they're on your side. They're not. They're playing you. Look, no, they're laughing I'm, at you. They've been laughing at you in the comments. That's I'm, I'm most certainly theory. not on quote unquote their side. That will never be the case. Because and I, I actually have screen anymore. recordings too. And I actually have a lot of screenshots that I could actually present to you. I don't know if you would let me, you know, do it, but these yeah. are the things that they do. They're disgusting. They love to mock the genocide that's actually going on in Palestine right now. And then the second we match energy with them, they they try to sit there and play victim. Like, for example, yeah, they sit there and they say they're going to barbecue our children. And then once I mention the Holocaust from them, because they like to claim that they're Jew, I like to mention the Holocaust to them and the stuff that they've been through. And then they try to say that I'm anti-Semitic. So sometimes they kind of forget about the things that they went through and yeah. they just love to sit there and mock the things that we're going through right now. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, I can understand any sort of response that would come after hearing those prompts. That's very upsetting. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I came in at some point where I did that. That's a big beast. <laughs> W-A-J-Q. Yeah, you got a big beast there. Good for you. Um, so, yeah, in that regard, I was not aware of any of the things that preceded what I was watching. So I, I maybe I came in in, in a yeah, yeah. Scenario. I just I just wanted to let you know, you know, because you know, doxing somebody's children is just so wrong. Like it's just something you should not do, especially you know, like if you're gonna sit there and threaten somebody with it. She actually yeah. took up her time to to search up her Facebook, right? And she went on her Facebook and she has a picture of her children in her phone. Like, that's wow. so wrong. You should never do that. Especially yeah, yeah. like sitting there and threatening somebody with posting that type of stuff. That's just awful. That's just something you should never do. Yeah, that's way out of bounds. I, 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 yeah. it, I, that's horrible. So I, I'm with you 100% on that. So that's that's why you kind of saw her getting attacked. It wasn't just mm -hmm. we were attacking her for no reason. It's okay. because she was coming at somebody's children. It's so wrong for somebody to do that. Thank you for sharing that with me. That makes a, a much welcome, better context yeah. for me to understand. I, I appreciate that very much. You know. I just wanted to let you know, you know, because I just felt like you were just a little bit confused. I feel like you just came into the live. You, you saw her getting attacked. I just kind of wanted to just let you know about what was happening before that, you know? That's more than reasonable. If you wanted to share any resources with me regarding any of that, um, you, uh, there's a few ways to contact me. My email is chipbarnesonline at gmail. Oh, yeah, that's has, great. Or, right, or, if want, or if it's more video stuff, you can send it to my Telegram because a lot of times when you attach an email, it doesn't quite get across because it's too big a file. So my Telegram is just the letter T is in Tom dot M E forward slash Chip Barnes. OK, um, do you want to see some screenshots of the most genocidal stuff that, you know, that have been said to me in the comments? Because I can I can 
gladly pr uh, pr uh, present them to you right now. Oh no, I can't, I can't show it because you have it turned off. Oh, that's sad. Is this, is this, is this during tonight's live or in other lives? Oh no, this is just stuff that's been going on and on and on and on, you know, throughout the, throughout these past few weeks. So okay. I just wanted to let you know that like all this built up anger that has been going, that's had, that we've been sitting there and doing to these Zios. Yeah. It's it's because of the stuff that they've been doing first. It's not because of the stuff that we've been doing first. It's because of the stuff that they've been doing first, and now they're playing victim. Yeah, we, okay. I understand. I understand. Thanks for sharing that with me. That's very yeah, helpful. I just, I just wanted to let you know. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate you letting me know. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. I'm going to drop now. Thank you. Bye. Okay. I'm going to leave yet. Follow. Yeah, hi, Kat. Hi. Don't leave yet, sweetie. Please. Um, I'm sorry. I'll I'll be real quick. Um, yet a chip. Um, I have been watching all this stuff that's been going on on both sides, and I go into all of their lives as well, trying to understand. I'm a people watcher, so I guess it's a people listener. <laughs> um, and you, uh, Shaq that came in, f fabulous. Um. It's really sad to hear these things because I was like you. Um, my late daddy used to talk about foreign affairs and things like that, about Netanyahu and things. And, you know, as a kid, you don't really pay attention to that stuff. But as I started growing older and really paying attention, I'm like, wow. And then have my own opinions about things just because that's all I have was limited to what we hear, you know, as being here in the States. And when the first October... Was it 7th? I forget what date that is. When that date had happened, I was so angry and so upset. And I had gone into one of the um, pro Israel lives and um, I expressed my, my concern and, and, you know, how I felt. And then um, there was some pro Palestinian on there and they're like, how dare you, you know, started attacking me because I'm indigenous. And I was just like, now, wait a minute here, you know, so anyway, I just left and, and I got bombarded in my DMs and I'm like, wow, but I've made friends with the Palestinians that were bombarding me. And a few months later, you know, I've said, you know, I've been learning and listening myself and I, I am one of those that was on the fence because, you know, I'm trying to listen and learn everything I possibly can from everybody, not just be one sided. And. Okay. From what I've been seeing lately, I don't know if it's something in the air, what the vibe is going on, but I have watched and listened, and it breaks my heart to see the Zionist attack Palestinians. I mean, it has just been awful. It's been so I just, awful. I, I just go in and I just listen, you know, most of the time, and, and because I'm trying to learn to find out what, what's the anger about, what's, what's all this... Uh, generational trauma about because I've lived through that and I still live through it on a daily basis so I have seen this and it's just so disheartening so vile. because that's that, yeah it is and, so and that's why vile. I say it's so wrong not all Jews are like that there's a lot of good Jewish people and what oh. the Zionists are doing is hijacking in the name of Jews exactly. and making it hard for them so historically they're going to be attacked again and we as people in the United States see that and you've seen the crimes that are coming back up again towards Jewish communities and towards, towards the you know Palestinian communities. Exactly. And these are the things people need to understand. People are listening and watching worldwide. You need to be careful what you're saying and what you're doing. Yes, we're all angry. We're hurt. We're, you know, the feelings are there and we don't, you know, we don't want to dismiss that but when you're attacking other people that's not right because i think b was in the same life i was they started attacking me and i was just like wow you guys are very childish and immature the zios like, right? the zios what's that the zios yeah, yeah, that's all they do is just attack, attack, attack. And it's, yeah, I'm going to have to start screen recording every time I go on a Zio panel because it's like, they're the ones that always do these things first. And then when you clap back, they can't take the heat. 
they only yeah. screen record the part that that where you start talking but they don't like to screen record the part where they instigate it you know right this is just and, the and type of stuff that. that they do i have personally seen it and i've been attacked by it too so um and this whole thing about stolen land okay i am definitely for humanity so i know it ticks people off they get so angry with me you know they want me on their side and da 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 well you know what mother earth is for all humanity to take care of all this fighting that's been going on for thousands of years it needs to stop because all it's doing it's destroying earth we have children coming up what's going to be left for them damaged land that they can't live off of indigenous people know we know what that feels like we're stuck on a piece of land we can't do hardly anything with exactly. it's hard to survive on exactly e enough is enough and stop unaliving other people you know all this scripture all these things that you know are written don't get me don't attack me if i you know you know you believe what you want to believe but in the ultimate end allah god Tawa is what I call God, Heavenly Father, Great Spirit, would not condone unaliving for the sake of land and I greed. Mean, I mean, exactly. It, it's just inhumane what's going on. It needs to stop. It, it just does. Because here in the States, we have our own issues with, you know, from my point of view, is the Republicans of the mess that they're causing and they're doing. All these things can be changed if we want to make that change. We just need to vote what's within our heart. And these things with the aid going to Israeli, you know, I personally feel that, yes, we've been doing that because of some agreements that were done years ago, but now we see what they're doing. I'm sure that some people knew about it, but most of us didn't know that. We haven't seen it, and now we do. So now we're going to speak up and we need to make that change. Congress, you know, all, all these politicians that are in there that are for that, you know, we just need to vote them out because they're destroying things here in the States as well, because it affects everywhere. It's a worldwide issue with the Zionists and colonization. We just need to work together that are against it. And Chip, again, I think I've told you once before, I thank you so much for being a YT person. Don't take it offensively, please. For you to stand up and and defend those that are not your of your race, your ethnicity, your, your color, whatever people want to call it. Those of us that are brown, we hardly ever have people like you um supporting us and defending us and listening to us and we need those voices we need that to to band together and make these changes for the better of our future so i'm really upset what they did to you but again it was probably because like b was saying you came in at the very end of it and didn't realize and i have seen them do the do this the zionists do this to the palestinian people exactly. and it just irks me and they because always love just, to mention, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it just shows the, the lies, the hate, the evil. It, and it's just, it's got to stop. It, it's just, it's causing way too much chaos and it's unnecessary for humanity. So anyway, that was just my soapbox. And I just want to let you know, thank you so much. Keep keep doing what you're doing. And I totally agree that you sh if there was an issue with somebody in particular to do it offline, Sure. separately because no one needs to deal with that because that's that's not anybody's business at that point and then you guys decide if you want to discuss it publicly then do it and if not exactly. then people need to get over it yeah the thing is the thing is is that that little uh comment that pg made actually about my friend's children it was yeah. made online and it's it's something huge like if you're threatening somebody to dox their children online i think it's kind of something that needs to be addressed online you know those so are supposed that... to be reported and i was in that live when that happened yeah and and brenda was in that live and just as she stepped down i had gotten in 
and then you know said my piece and then that's when they all started attacking me and calling me a liar blah blah, blah you know the typical stuff and i'm like wow you guys are ridiculous so yeah, they're awful people we, they really we will are. bring that positive vibration up we can do it we just support each other share the love and eventually you know they'll they'll come around to whatever their piece they need to make it is their journey we just need to hang in there but you've got it chip i do appreciate you i commend you for i enjoy your lives because you do it in an orderly fashion and you're fair you're just i appreciate you I, you I really do so thank, thank you, you again and thanks everybody um yeah, means i love you have so a good night everybody thank you thank you so much have a good evening, everybody. Take care. Um, so Walid, I think, was going to go next. Walid, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, Chip. How are you? Good? Good. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? I just have two points, Chip. I've been watching you after the 7th of October. Really respect to why, why you're doing. Not because you're in the pro-Palestinian side, because you're in the, in the fair side, in the right side, you with, with humans. And I really liked that and respected that a lot. But today, I saw you coming defending BJ, inserting your, yourself in a conversation that you have nothing to do about. Someone who is dissing here, and you as a broke Palestinian, you should feel the trauma. This man who was dissing here lost a lot of his family. And this woman, when you talk to her about it, she just laugh about it. She just say, yes, we have the right to do that. Yes, Israel have the right to defend itself. But there is innocent people getting unalive. There is whole families getting annihilated. And this woman just laughing about it. So you, sh you should understand that most of us, when we diss someone of this dynasty, it's coming from, from what we saw all over our life. You might saw that now, but we from the Middle East, we saw that since we was born. All the time we're getting unalive. So when someone is dissing, he's dissing out of trauma, coming from trauma. You know, the second thing is that when Zubaida, Zubaida, I know Zubaida from like eight years, and I saw her, no, it's it's not from now, and I can bring pull up videos from five six years outside the Israeli embassy, and we talk, talking about talking about this case. But today you you've been talking about her in your life. You've been calling her radical, but you wanna but you wanna get to Israel. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. So Zubaida, you've been talking about her like two hours in your life. You just come to Israel to talking about. Um. Uh, Walid, I don't know if you can hear me, but we, the audience can't hear you. The sound got muffled. I don't know if you can reorient your microphone. Is it good now? Can you hear me now? Yes, it's much better. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, and today as well, Zubaida. Zubaida is one of the best advocates for the pro-Palestinian case, to be honest. Yeah, she built in, she put in a lot of work there. She is dedicated to it. And she and she is not seeking anything more than always debating the Zionist. Today you've been talking about her for two hours in your life. People come in mentioning her. But you wanna be, and you called her radical in your life. But you wanna bless it in private. How come you talking about someone publicly, but you wanna bless it in private? How, she wanted to clear her name. She made it clear in the comments. It's a misunderstanding. So why you didn't allow her to finish all, all of this? Because if you really bro, bro, bro Palestinian, you should side with the bro Palestinian. Even if you saw someone getting this, you should go and talk to the bro Palestinian privately. You you shouldn't you shouldn't diss her like that. You shouldn't attack her like well, that. Let me, let me share with you a couple of things. Just if you but want to, to get into the reality, I'll, I'll, to like, BG, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you made your point. I'm going to respond to it. Okay, you're entitled to your point of view, and uh, if you feel that way, I don't take the side of a side. I take the side of what you said at the very beginning. I take the side of what I believe is good. Now, I I may have made a miscalculation by entering a live. I, I, how would I, there was no way for me to have known at the time that something else had been said, which had elicited what was going on. So I didn't know that. If I did, I would have probably handled it differently. So again, unfortunately that happened. The, th the thing that was difficult was I only got in three words. And I was not given any more chance to speak after that. And everyone just went completely crazy. So I'll tell you what I said was I started to come up and I was going to say something like this. Hey, everybody, you know, I don't know what's going on, 
but it seems like I was going to finish that sentence with, you know, the fact that I try not to beat up people. And it seems like, and then people could have told me, no, 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 this was said, but, but I didn't get a chance to say that, which I was trying to say. And then PG started saying something like, oh, Chip, you're here to be, I said, no, no, I'm here to defend you, PG, just to shut her up for a second. Everyone took that is, I'm here to defend a Zionist. And the point I was trying to make to everybody was this, and I wasn't given a chance to speak at all. I was just completely railroaded after that. If they would have listened to me, I would, I would have clarified and said, I disagree with PG on every single thing we've ever talked about. I did not know that she had said horrible things about doxing people's children, had pictures of their children from Facebook. I didn't know any of that stuff. All I did hear was what I heard. And so I went with what I heard. It was not meant from any, any ill will. And I don't believe in just defending one side 100% of the time, no matter what. That's not how my brain is wired. If when somebody, and listen, I'm just going to repeat these words because I want to let the audience decide this. If you heard somebody say this from the pro-Israeli side, and I was a pro-Israeli, which I'm not, if they said, we should cut up all Palestinians into little pieces and feed them to dogs, and every single Palestinian should be killed. The only good Palestinian is a dead Palestinian. Now, if they said those things, if you're an honorable human being, would you sit back and not say anything? Or would you say, hey, that's out of bounds, right? I think if you're a good person, you, would, you could totally disagree with the other side, but it still say that language is just, that's a stretch too far. Now, somebody may choose to respond to anybody that way. That's their choice. They can do whatever the hell they want. I was simply trying to, to come in and say, hey, you know, I didn't know. So I, I, there's other things that preceded that, my bad. And maybe I was wrong for coming up in the first place. I didn't even want to talk about that shit, quite frankly. I want to talk about some other stuff. But it just seemed at that moment, based on when I came in, that someone was being ruthlessly beaten up on, which I don't agree with. And that's just my, the way I like to do things. Anybody can run their life however the hell they want. But, uh, you know, for my two cents, it wasn't meant to try to be against anybody. But it was just taken in that direction. I was not given a chance to speak. And I felt like I was railroaded out of the conversation and then shit on for five minutes. I'm like, holy shit, people. So, again, maybe everybody could have handled it differently, per se. Now, as far as the choice to address it in public or in private, I said from the very beginning, and I don't know if I said the word radical. I, I didn't use the term as far as a noun to describe somebody as a radical. But I don't, if it's in the comments, we can reference it because it'll be recorded. But I don't think that somebody's, quote, unquote, a radical. I, I, I just talk about the fact that whoever was saying about chopping people up is just insane, in my opinion. That's craziness. But I did say later in the conversation tonight that Zubeda didn't say anything like that. And I know she's an effective person because people have told me how good she is. And I've listened to her before, and I think she's great. And I respect her, her, her passion and her advocacy, all the things you said. But it doesn't mean that I have to do anything in every circumstance because it's one side or the other. I disagree with that. But if that's how you feel, I respect your point of view. No, like why, like why you said it now, I hope you allowed Zubaida to enter and you, you, you said to her that he wasn't defending BJ and you were just saying that for her to shut up. That would make a lot of things change it. And, and also Zubaida, Zubaida is not here looking for drama, to be honest. No, I, I didn't see her doing any drama in this app or these days. Yeah. She is just on the case all the time. You know, she, she, she also said to you that she respects you, she have no problem with you. But you let other people come and talk about it. If you really wanted that to be in private, you should like block her name. No one, please talk about her. I will speak to her in private. But you allowed everyone to talk, everyone coming, making your making yourself look good, and making Zubaida in the comments look like she wants drama when she is not. You know, and I, I see that to be honest, a strange thing from from you as a pro Palestinian who is always talking about the case, doing that with another pro Palestinian. I, I, did, I didn't think that's fair at all, to be honest. If you mention someone in your life, you should allow him to come and declare his name. That, that, that's, all, that's all what I think, to be honest. Okay, uh, that's, that's, that, that's fair if that's your point of view. And I think what I did for the audience now, what I said was, I said, I'd rather not do this stuff on a public stage, but I'm happy to have any conversation with anybody and try to clear it up. And then maybe we can come online later. But I said, I'm happy. Here's my email address. Here's my, here's my telegram. And here's my, and you can direct message me. I don't think that's being obstinate, but as far as the thing goes, I, the most, the thing that I talked about were two names, the two, the person who hosted it and the person who said the things that I referred to. Those are the two names that I emphasized. She happened to have been in 
the live at the same time. But I don't think I said anything disparaging about her. She's a very strong-willed, strong person who has her own ideas about how things should be done. And she was very demonstrative and demanding in the chat for the better part of 20 minutes, along with five or six other people who I guess is, are more allied with her, which is fine. They can ask for whatever they want, but I don't have to acquiesce to it as a, as a host. My suggestion was, is that it be done in the manner that I requested. She doesn't have to do anything, but I don't have to do anything either. So that's why I didn't do that. Uh, after about 15 or 20 times of being told that I'm making a big mistake and other criticisms, I finally decided just to clear them out of the comments, which I didn't want to do. But uh, they were being disrespectful, I think, at that point by demanding that their way or the highway get met. And I don't like somebody who takes that tech. And I have noticed a trend because I messaged Zabeda about another time this happened and she didn't reply back to me. She just blew me off. And I sent a very conciliatory message to her. So if that's how she chooses, and the impression that it gave me was, is that she's the one in charge. Everyone else can kind of go to hell. That's her. She can be like anything she wants to be. And I'm, I'm just another guy. I could give a shit. But if that's how she wants to operate, let her do it. But I'm not going to be kowtowed and, and beaten into a corner by somebody who's got a strong, strong willpower because they demand it so. It's, she can do whatever she wants. I'm happy to be friends and, and work stuff out. But I'm also not going to, you know lay down and die over it. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. And if she thinks I'm a bad actor, she can think what she wants. But I have nothing bad to say about her because I think she's a talented, very effective advocate. And she obviously is more involved than I'll ever hope to be. And she has way more passion than I'll probably ever bring to bear because she's a much more spirited person than I am. So anyway, I don't want to go into that anymore. I respect, I respect your point of view. If you disagree, that's fine. The door, the window is still open for her. If she wants to take it, I'm happy to speak with her. I gave her my email address. She can contact me on a, it's Chip Barnes online at Gmail if you want to pass it along if there's any kind of miscommunication. Okay? Anyway, that's what I want to leave that at that. No more talk about that. I think we have a few more guests. Thank you for being here, Waleed. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you for sharing your point of view. It's okay to disagree. I don't agree with everything Waleed said, but I respect his point of view and how he feels about it. Okay. Um, we have someone named Zahira is queen dapper. There's someone named dapper in the request. And I've told dapper this before I mentioned it in the comments. So dapper, I want to let you know, I would love to have somebody with an opposing point of view come up. The only reason I'm very reluctant to do that is because each of the previous times we've done this, I've asked you very nicely not to let it get personal and calling people anti-Semites and you can't help yourself. And you keep doing that. Every time you get into the later part of your argument, you say, and you're an anti-Semite for saying, I'm not anti-Semitic, Dapper. I'm critical of Israeli government and of the Zionist movement vis-a-vis -vis the harm it has spelled out to others over the decades. That's what I'm critical of. Uh, it could be Muslims. It could be Jews. It could be, uh, you know, Ethiopians, for Christ's sakes. I don't care who's doing it. It's what's being done that I criticize. So please don't, if, I'm happy to have you up as long as you don't take it to that same silly conclusion you keep doing. Because I don't make comments about you. I've never once said a disparaging word about you. Okay, we have uh, Queen is coming up. Zara is Queen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All righty. Sound like fun. Hope you're having a good Friday. Cancer to Israel and Zios. I won't say the way you said it. Uh, okay. Evening, Chip. Hey, how are you? Okay, uh, look, first of all, I just want to, because I've done my research, yeah, and please give me time to speak, okay? If you don't like it, let me know, okay? You got a guy called Dapper in there, okay? We know very well he's one of your mods in there, and we've done the research. There is a... Hold on, whoa, 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 slow down. Did you say that Dapper was one of my mods in my live? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, and there's a lot of people. Yes, yes. I've make, done the research. I make, I make, I make, no, I didn't, is that what you said though? You're alleging that someone named Dapper is a mod in my chat? Yeah, I've been I've been watching it for a very long time, and this guy has also admitted in other lives that he's your he's one of your um one of no, your no, mods. No, no, okay. no, 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 no. Let's get one thing straight. I'm not going to entertain any of this silliness. That is a completely absurd. Let me look at him for just let me just check him out for a second because I can look it up and see if he is or not because I can tell if I click on his name. Give me a second. If he is, if he is, I certainly didn't set it up myself. I can tell you that. No, nope. when you come up, I'll even send you a screenshot of this. When you tap on somebody's name, when they're a moderator, it says manage moderator access. When they're not, you have a choice to add moderator. It says add moderator, which I'm not doing. So 
however allegations you're making, it is not true. Please don't continue that line because you have no, nothing to substantiate that allegation. And I just told you it's not true. So respectfully, don't bring that bullshit to my live. That is garbage. Can I? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I watched your life uh, many times. I've even been like uh, I've spoken to you direct before. Um, I, was, I was basically from the beginning, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Okay, I'm pro Palestine to my last days. Okay, yeah. I will I will not tolerate or agree or disagree with Zionists who steal people being unalived every single day. Okay, and you should listen to the people when they speak up and bring up the the issue with Palestine. What I've noticed in every 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 show that you have, okay, I, I ignore the comments in the section there because they're here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can throw flowers, whatever you want there. Keep doing it. Sell your soul. I don't have a problem with that. Sell your soul. Um, one thing that people... Are, are you talking to me when you say sell your soul? Who are you directing those comments to? These people, on the, including Dapper and the, the rest of his uh, followers on the comment section in there, that they are uh, obviously doing this. Yeah, they've even they've even reported me. They've done things. They try to to block me and everything. It doesn't matter. I will not sell my soul. I will not sell my soul and start the issue and make lives and say seventh of October or discuss. There is no issue to discuss. Seventh, it's it's closed. That page is closed. Okay, we know very well. We know where we stand. We stand with humanity. We stand with people who want to support living together in peace okay you can see all these they spread hate they spread hate they call us uh, the t word they call us extremists they call us every single thing these people should not even be allowed time of the day to even debate with them if you stand cheap sorry man if you stand in the side of humanity you have to dis dismiss these people proof proof all they talk is uh, 40 babies and 7th of October, they have nothing. We can see it. The world, whole world is awake. That sister Zubeida, okay, I respect her. I have so much respect. I was in her life. She's really upset. This dapper right there, let him let him uh, uh, mislead people and say that because he sold his soul to, to Satanyahu, okay? I don't have a problem. Let him sell his soul. What I'm saying to you, sister Zubeida is a good advocate for all pro-Palestinians. It's pro-humanity. She is not a racist. She is not uh, the type of um, going there and um, uh, spreading hate. We're talking what is actually happening, and the Zionists are bringing, diverting the attention. Okay, they they make a total different issue. They try to brainwash us. Okay, I stand with humanity. I will not. If you gave me today a million dollars and you said, "Would you like to make lives just to make some money?" Okay, regardless of which side you stand. I will say no thank you i would starve okay and i'll say no thank you i will not sell my soul that's all i have to say to you uh chip please be with the side of humanity okay yeah yeah i I, I, would, I would like to think that i am i appreciate your feedback i want to address a couple things and just to be clear okay um I, unlike you i wouldn't take 10 billion dollars to say anything differently than what i say because obviously i'm not making any money doing this so there's no amount of money that would make me change my thing for anything. Like you said, I'd rather be outside holding a cardboard sign on the street and keep my integrity than take money to fake who I am as a person. That's the first thing. Secondly, the allegation of me having a pro-Israeli as a mod in my lives, uh, I don't know where there's any evidence to support that. Uh, but if, you, if you've watched any of my work for the past you know, three, four, five months, there's no indication that there's anything to do with that. That's absurd. I mean, I just don't even understand where, where that comes from. Um, as far as the relationships of others, I'm I'm for all the other people. What'd you say? What? I saw, your, I saw the Twitter account has been shut down because of comments that you have made in there. So I have yeah, seen that yeah. already. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've addressed that, which was insensitive. Just to let you know, that was insensitive to African Americans, which I addressed it. I owned it. I apologized for it. I spent six and a half hours on lives letting people come up who were angered or upset, share their point of view. I addressed it like a man. I apologized. And I sensed that it will not happen again. And I got to move forward. So if you personally want to use that as reasons to not uh, think that I'm on the right page that you want me on, that you got to do what you got to do. You got to make your decision. I think if you look at the totality of what's going on, you can make your choice. Just watch what I do 
and you can figure that out for yourself. Everyone's got to make those decisions about people. Some people don't forgive. Some people do. Do what you must, okay? Uh, but as far, as far as what I choose to do, I think what I'm hearing you say through the lines is you suggest that people who do not agree with the Palestinian cause, who espouse Zionism or, the, or defend the state of Israel, should not be given a time and place to talk about it. I can understand that argument. And because of how vile and how violent and how horrible this has all been, not only for this conflict, but in the past, um, that they, they shouldn't be given any kind of time and consideration. I can understand that argument. And as a content creator, I have found, just to let you know, if I have strictly people who are pro-Palestinian, which I enjoy, uh, we get about maybe 100 people in. And we don't really have a whole lot of productive conversation. When I bring people in who have different points of view, whichever, depending on, it could be a Ukrainian conversation about Russia, if we have all people that are pro-Russia, it doesn't really make much of an interesting conversation. But if we get some pro-Ukrainians and some pro-Russians, it enlivens the dialogue. Same thing happens with this. I try to be fair, and what I try to do, I think others who came up earlier and spoke to this, uh, they've acknowledged this, what I try to do is allow somebody enough room to speak themselves into a figurative corner. And then what I do is I'll come up and just share what I think are logical replies in a non-emotional manner, and people tend to enjoy that format. There are lives to go to where people either bash people or they don't let anybody else revolt. There's There are plenty of those out there and people can go in and out of them as they see fit. But if you think that in any way my integrity is swayed because of those decisions to make the conversation more lively, I can tell you, you've never been more wrong. I just wanna make that very clear to you. If you watch the way I behave and not what you might think, and all my, all my videos are, all these lives are archived, they're unedited. So you can go back to December the 19th of 2023, since I started doing them regularly until today, Every single one is uploaded. This will be uploaded in about an hour tonight when we finish. And you can check. Go look. If you think I'm telling silly stories or you don't trust me, just go watch what I do. But anybody who has been following me for a while knows what I'm saying is perfectly accurate. So I can't make everybody happy all the time no matter what I do. If I used all pro-Palestinians, people would say the conversations are boring. If I do too many Israelis, people think I'm platforming Zionists. I've been criticized from both sides. So in this job, you have to kind of do you know, what you can. In this forum, you have to do what you can do. In this type of environment, you have to try to figure out ways to keep the conversation lively and interesting for the audience, and then let people decide. I'll get feedback from people if they think it's getting too side, one side or the other, but I try to make it interesting. And I think most people, if I'm not wrong, uh, you know, you're never going to make everybody happy. But I think a lot of people like the format, and so if it's not one that that pleases you, which I can certainly respect, uh, maybe maybe you can shift to one that you find more pleasing. But I hope you'll know that my position is not going to be swayed, although I do listen to what people say, because if they have something that's evidentiary, I think it would be foolhardy of me to ignore it just because it doesn't confirm what I already believe. And that's what I try to do. I, in that light, just to let you know, just let me let you know. Let me let you know one more thing. I just want to be clear. I've made a lot of people angry, very angry on the Israeli side for saying that I cannot confirm the allegations of S assault and mutilation and some of the other more egregious allegations. Uh, and I told them I don't deny it, but I can't confirm it. But if somebody does provide me with evidence that I can see or I come across it, I will tell my audience, hey, I saw this evidence because I think that's what's called being fair. But I can't just dismiss it outright because I don't know. I hope that's not being, un I think that's unfair or fair. Chip, can I please, can I ask you just one, one question? Yeah, go ahead. yeah you can ask me a question. Yeah. You make one day a life, okay, just life, for donating all the donations go to Palestine. Yes or no? What, what donations are you talking about? Donation day. So you are making your, your show and everything that you will earn on your show, you'll donate to Palestine. Well, what I earned, I did it alive for seven and a half hours today, okay? You know how much money came in from TikTok? $10.11. So I'm more than happy to donate whatever comes in on all my shows. The average amount of income per month that comes in is less than $150 for all the, all the work that I do. But I'm happy to donate that because I can't make a living off of that. So whether I donate it or keep it, it won't affect me one way or the other. But I also don't do fundraising efforts, and here's why. People have come on here before and lied saying they're in Gaza and collected money from people only to find out that they weren't in Gaza. So we have somebody in the, in the mix between a couple different lives who then authenticates people. And then if they want to do a GoFundMe or some kind of cash raiser, then we know that they're legitimate and we support their efforts to do so. Because the last thing I want to do is turn anybody away who's in, who's in need of help. But you know, there, there's not much money 
in the in the TikTok live or the video business unless you're doing stupid stuff that makes it to a lot more people because you have to get like millions of views for the new being and my content is controversial because I'm anti-establishment so there's just not much money there so if you guys want to check I have every receipt in my phone I'm happy to turn them over and show people my I, there's nothing to hide so I'm happy to show it to you in fact if you want I'll, I'll take a screenshot right now and you can see it I'll put it on the screen well, let me do that I'll do that real quick Actually, I got to go. I got to switch back to my menu to do that. But if you want, I'm on tomorrow from 12 to 4, and I'll show you what I just said today so you can see that I'm not telling any sort of lies. Yeah. Okay, man. Have a, have a good evening. Okay, take okay. care. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, sort of, the, I guess the sense of that is that somebody wants a litmus test or proof that I'm not like misleading people or something to that effect. And the thing I find interesting is most of the people who are asking these questions don't know much about me. They haven't followed me for long, and they just don't know, and they're making all these allegations or listening to all this clamor. For God's sakes, guys, I don't know what I need to do to prove to people that I'm just somebody who gives a shit. And there are people in the world that do things because it, it motivates them from their sense of right or wrong. I know it sounds crazy. Everyone's out for a buck or has some angle. I don't. I mean, if I was smart, I'd be advocating for Israel. They have a shitload of money and I could make a lot of money doing that. But that's just not what motivates me. I can't believe I have to keep defending myself in that regard. It's really sad. Yes, Federico. Hey, Chip. Hey. I don't think I, I think you should just stop uh, trying to explain yourself to anybody, man. It's your show. It's your life. You say what you want to say. If they want to believe it, good. They don't want to believe it. Uh, in my culture, they sell. They tell you there's four walls around you. Go knock your head on the one you like. And <laughs> sounds uh, fair. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, you've done a lot. Uh, you've been here since the day the whole thing started, spending hours and hours of your time over here uh, trying to educate people. And I don't think, you know, you're playing the uh, devil's advocate. And uh, for a devil advocate, you shift more to the Palestinian side. Uh, and these people that don't want to understand it, it's OK. They don't have to understand it. You know, we don't. If we expect these people to understand, then we expect Zionists to take our side. Like, uh, obviously, and I've noticed that, uh, on a lot of the lives lately, you've been target. You are a target. The Zionists don't like what you're doing. And uh, uh, they're spreading rumors. I've witnessed it in more than one show. When your name is mentioned, they jump. I've, start seen, doing, I've seen that before. I've seen uh, people saying that I'm actually yeah, pulled, so, it's all sort of crazy shit. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think you should explain yourself to anyone. Uh, you do what you do. You're doing a great job. You have... Uh, I've witnessed more than one time you uh, putting a lot of Zayos and pro-Palestinian in their place. You know, even if you're a pro-Palestinian, if you say something that is not correct, it's not just to your cause. You become just like the Zionist. We as pro-Palestinians, we need to make sure that we say the only truth. The only thing that we have to say is the truth. If we're going to follow uh, what the others do, uh, we become like them. That's what makes the Palestinian cause so strong because everything is obvious, everything is clear, right in front of you. And so, just so sad that you have to be on here uh, for the past hour and a half, two hours, trying to explain yourself. And they took so much from your time <laughs> that you could have uh, uh, worked on the Palestinian cause. Sure. Uh, for you to try to explain yourself. For stuff that you shouldn't be even caring about, you know. Very good point. What is it says, Emily? Because it's not the parties on. Everybody knows who's analyzing who. I mean, uh, nobody has the, like a lot of people new to this cause, but as we know, since the nineteen twenties until now. Uh, Palestinians been the victims and now that the, the story is out and we're advocating to people we're bringing people in we should not be talking about that stuff even if I, I may I may say something that offends somebody right now it doesn't mean that I mean it uh, we no, don't, no. we come we come from different cultures sometimes translating uh, a sentence from a language to another um, 
somebody gets offended. Uh, but it doesn't mean that I mean I meant to offend that someone. Yeah, I think it's fair for people to be suspicious. I mean, I don't and actually I don't mind that for people who just don't know and if they're just really curious and if they they're not sure because they may have heard things and they're coming with a sort of a drawn eye. All I ask people to do is, you know, make your judgment based on the content and the behavior, not the rumors. So that's why I invite people to go back to YouTube. And if you're somebody who is curious, that's okay if you are. Go back and check out the lives. I think the consistency and the approach and You'll see if you think it's fair or not. I mean, I, I try to give people a chance to speak their mind because I think it's interesting to hear other people's points of view on any issue. Um, I try to be respectful towards it. It doesn't mean I agree with it. Um, but listen, who knows? In a different time or different date, I might believe what they believe. In a, so who knows? It's, I don't think it's fair to condemn people for what they believe. I think it's fair to point out the inconsistencies in what they're saying and to disagree with them. And, you know, it doesn't always work out that there's a conclusive outcome. The audience gets to decide. It's like a debate kind of thing, but it's all good. Um, okay. Let me, if it's okay with you, Frederick, you can certainly welcome to stay. I'm going to give somebody else a chance to speak. Yeah, Is yeah. that okay for you? Is that okay? Okay. Thank you very much. I'll see if I have a guest here. Now, I want to make this clear. If you're someone who supports something other than what I believe, which is certainly okay, as I just mentioned, please be respectful in the comments towards them as well as the guests. Please be respect respectful to both the host and the other guests. No personal attacks. If you want to advocate for an issue that you believe strongly in, you think I got something wrong with the issues, have at it. Okay. But if, if you start levying personal attacks or go down that silly road, I, I won't be able to keep you and I'd like to be able to keep you up. Okay. We have Muslim Zionist, Lily Eve, Dunkirk, Donka Donk, and Talib. So let's go in that order. I'll bring you up right now. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chips. How are you? I am okay. How about you? Good. You know, I was in and out in your panel and I heard what happened to you. <clears throat> I truly, oh, I'm sorry, this has happened to you. That's okay. I, <clears throat> I just want to let you know, this is the beginning of testing of the Muslim bride brotherhood. That's, you know, if you keep, if you keep, you know, going, 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 you found out more and more about these people, how they are and how much, you know, in the future, they can even say you are a Zionist. You say you was, they, they can, you know, they come out with so many things. If you, you know, if you're not in their, their favorite test, and I'm sorry, this has happened to you. I hope, uh, well, no, there, there, I don't think anything's happened to me, by the way, there was an no, no, I mean, even, even, uh, you know, even, uh, I heard, you know, they call you a name and this and that. I mean, uh, this is what it is, unfortunately. Well, I think that certain people have different ways they like to conduct things, and it's certainly their right to do so. And I, I jumped into an arena in the middle of something of which I was not aware. So in fairness to them, it may have appeared to them that I was coming in to kind of save the day for somebody who they thought was worthy of what, what seemingly was condemnation for some horrible things that they may have said. So in that regard, they're perfectly within their rights to say, hey, who the hell is this guy? What the hell is he doing? That makes sense to me. I think where there was a misunderstanding was I was not standing up for the person's views or who they are. I was standing up for the principle behind somebody not being completely dogged. But it, it may have been perfectly legitimate in hindsight for them to have done so. So in, in a sense, it's my mistake. So it's not about right or wrong, though. It's about trying to be cooperative and work through the differences and get on with the next step, which is what I'm hopeful, hoping to do. That's it. Well, anyway, I'm sorry. This is, uh, it, it, it did bother you today. You have a good night now. No, it's okay. And, and again, in hindsight, and listen, anytime, this is the other good lesson for all of us. And I need to remind myself of this. Whenever we're feeling sort of a stark emotion or response to something and we make assumptions like I did, and then you start talking about it like in public like I did, it generally doesn't work out well. And it almost always leads to a place where if you had waited and calmed down or learned more, it probably would have been a lot better to handle it that way. So tonight, in fairness and in fair criticism, that's kind of what I did. I kind of I kind of ran with it. I was a little bit perturbed. And, and really, I, I have no problem with people, you know, handle, they can run their lives. And I went, what really got me upset was what the host said. The host really kind of pissed me off. And it just, you know, I responded. So if I, if I said things or did things in a way that did not work for others, it's not my intent to harm you or hurt you. It really isn't. I, I'm, uh, sometimes we're a victim of our own emotional weakness. And if that's the case with me tonight, then I have to own that part. But that's okay. Uh, the sun will come up and hopefully at some point there will be freedom and prosperity and you know self-determination for a people that are it's long overdue for and that's all that matters and first we need a ceasefire to start in that direction and then of course aid 
That's what matters. Okay, thanks for saying that, though. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, let me think. We have a uh, poly team is coming up, and I think Dunka Dunk and then Taleb. How you doing, Dunk? Oh, no, yeah, Dunk and Dunk. And is it well, Lily? Were you next, or was it, was it Lily then Dunk and Dunk? Did I get that wrong? Yes, yeah, too. Lily then Dunk and Dunk, then Taleb, then Polly. Yeah, just wanted to say to everyone in here, Chip doesn't ever deserve to be platformed. He's racist, he's fatphobic, he's transphobic, he's homophobic, and he's going to bring me off the panel and run away. Well, it's not about running away, Lily. It, you're, I'm more than happy to have you up here. What, but what I said before I brought guests up, which I hoped it wasn't in a different language than you and I speak, was that we're more than welcome to talk about the issues, but no personal attacks. And what did you do? You started attacking me personally. I mean, come on, you can you can hate somebody if you want to, but let's try to keep that part out of the conversation. Let's focus on issues. If you have an argument you'd like to make about the, the conditions, the things I say about the conflict, the takes that I have, certainly within fair game. But for you to come up and do something like that, it's just, it's just childish. Okay. And the next time I see you on a live, if I do run into you, you have my word as a gentleman that I will not say bad things about you because I just don't think that's part of the conversation. But, you know, you be you and I'll be me. Okay. Dunkin' Dunk. Hey, Chip. Um, hey. So I've been floating around a couple of lives today on various um, viewpoints. And uh, I just kind of really want to figure out what is the most realistic solution of like the current problems. Because after we are obviously asking for a ceasefire, but what comes next in terms of like negotiations, in terms of like in 50 years, what will be the landscape of um, the entire Middle East area? Like how would that... Um, country building work wow that's a pretty broad question well a lot of it depends on what happens next i mean let's just give an example i mean if this particular situation does expand into a broader conflict all, all bets are off right so i don't know what's going to happen i have a hard time like everybody predicting the future but you can look at certain puzzle pieces and kind of figure out what the near term might bring and so let's say for example that there is a ceasefire which I believe there should have been a long time ago, but let's just say it happens in the next uh, two weeks or so, and the Netanyahu government finally succumbs to pressure. Hopefully they will. And hopefully not too many more people will have to suffer at the hands of what I believe is a maniacal right-wing regime. And then there's the slow process of getting people help. Like Quinn the Eskimo said, that when the fighting stops, the real work begins. And that means that it's gonna take you know, a long time to get people help and to slowly get from where they are now to where they're gonna to need to be with reconstruction and whatever's gonna follow from a, from a, hopefully it's not gonna be more oppressive and hopefully there's not gonna be the effort to push people out of Gaza and into other places, whether it's resettlement in other countries or whether it's in the, in the Sinai desert, like the Israelis are trying to do. Uh, so I don't know how that's gonna play out. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of talk from the United States one way, but there's no action behind the scenes. And that's the biggest problem is as soon as the Israelis are held to account as far as money or politics or military, things will change, but not until then. But I think the international condemnation has reached a level that even Israel at some point is going to have to realize that it's just they're absolutely destroying themselves in the process of doing what they're doing. So I, I can't speak to what they're going to do next. Netanyahu is a big self-serving madman, I think, and I don't think he's listening to anybody. And he's just kind of listening to his little echo chamber of Smotrich and Ben Gavir, and they're going to do what they're going to do. That's kind of what it looks like. I think I think I agree that Netanyahu and the current regime in Israel should have a change. Um, I think for negotiations to proceed, uh, Israel, both Israel and Hamas, should have not 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 Hamas, but uh, Gaza should have. Uh, re-election of some kind of next leadership in order to be able to work together. I don't think at this point, neither side is willing to work together in any capacity, right? I think at the current time, I think we have um, the H group uh, relying on global um the global narrative of the Israel Palestine to kind of shield behind their not 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 as in like they're using human shields and like they're trying to justify what they're doing, 
but that they're trying to hide behind global sentiment in order to put pressure onto uh, Israel, which um, is working, which is why we're having all these conversations right now. I don't think that this is a good way of negotiation, negotiating peace. Um, I think at this point, I think I don't know how much because we had it's been what four or five months since the conflict started and uh, the global sentiment is very much against Palestine, very much against Israel, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. It's okay. Yeah, kind of nervous. Um, but um, now take your time. It's all good. Yeah, I'll hop off. I'm 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 okay. I'm good. Thanks for letting me speak. Yeah, thanks for being here. No worries. Come on back if you want to. You know, gather your thoughts and come back. Don't worry about being nervous. It's all good. We all had our first time, and it is what it is. It's no problem at all. Okay, uh, Taleb, and then Pally. Taleb, how are you? Hi, Chip. Hi. I'm so uh, happy to be with you on your live. I have just two words for you. Uh, first thing I appreciate, uh, sorry for my broken English, I'm from friend, France. And okay. uh, I appreciate your live, really. And uh, most of all, appreciate that you uh, don't take a side in this conflict. That's what I appreciate the most. Well, that's and, not, just to be clear, that's not necessarily the truth. I try to be objective in my analysis, but I do come down firmly. Hold on, I do come down firmly on the side of the Palestinian side because I believe that they are the oppressed, marginalized, brutalized people that are occupied and are blockaded and have every right to defend themselves as far as the land they were dispossessed of historically. And that Zionism is not only dangerous to the Palestinian people, but a danger in general based on its expansionist nature and its undue influence internationally. That's how I feel. Yeah, definitely. You you take inside because you you've done your research and you you you're trying to be uh, just only just not uh, not biased. That's what what I am trying to say. Uh, and uh, uh, really, I I cannot thank you. Uh, uh, a lot for what you're doing. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Uh, and, listen, I, I, it's, there are a couple things in the comments. Just want to address this. Um, one is, um, you know, Lily Eve, I, I don't want to say mean things to anybody, but Lily, you're just spreading hatred. You can feel whatever you want to feel, but just go do it somewhere else, okay? I don't like to block people, but just you're just spreading chaos okay so just do it somewhere else good 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 luck to you and then as far as other stuff goes yeah guys i don't have a twitter account okay everybody keeps saying twitter this twitter that i don't have a twitter account so leave that as what it was it's been addressed multiple times it's 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 in the rear view mirror so just you know let it be what it is you know when somebody deals with something head on and they address it for months on end and then everybody keeps bringing it up it's like you know, it's just it's it's in the rear view mirror. Okay, Polly team, how you doing? Hey, it's going. Uh, we've spoke before, and uh, we left off like a conversation. Like, uh, I guess you had to go to uh, to another live and stuff like that. I do want to appreciate you as well for understanding the truth and doing more research. And uh, because last time we left off talking about that, those need to get out of Palestine. And yeah. ask me where do they where they should go, right? And uh, the my answer is like they need to first find out where they from, take their DNA test because this is a huge problem in Israel. Um, for them to take their DNA test and see where they they come from, you know, because those people that just come to corrupt not just Palestine, like you said, is corrupting the world, and uh. I want to know, like, how, where, where do you think they should, like, I want to understand, like, how did you choose the side of Palestine and what made you really 
what search did you find and like how would you can you compare both sides and see which one like made sense for you why did you like uh switch from that to that because like the well, was it was kind of confusing for you to understand that like well in other words i learned like, about this when i was i'm, I'm 56 almost 57 so i learned about this way back in 1989 when i was 21 years old and probably like most people, even on October 7th, I, you know, most people when they're younger or whatever, you're just living your life. You're not paying too much attention to anything in general. And then one of my classmates for our political science final that gave her talk on the first intifada, which happened in 1987. So it just opened my eyes up to things I had no awareness of. And so as I learned more about it, it seemed very unfair and very unjust and very misleading with what I'd been told. I thought that Israel was our, our ally, that it was a safe place for our, our Jewish friends, that there was a bunch of crazy people named called terrorists that are trying to attack and kill them all the time, and that we're helping work with them to help them survive this great nation. That's what I thought. And then everything I learned in this talk was like, what? I learned so much stuff. I didn't know there was a Gaza Strip. I didn't know there was an occupation. I didn't know the 1967 war. I didn't know any of this stuff. Yeah. So, and when I learned all that stuff, it shook me up and I'm like, wait a second, this is completely unfair. This is horrible. It kind of pissed me off. I'm like, so I've always been somebody who's been looking into it closely for a long, long time, just because it kind of piqued my interest. And I've always read a ton of books. I've listened to a ton of lectures with the internet and stuff. It's been an explosion. And the reason I take the side that I do is not that I have anything against Jewish people or even Israelis. I could give a shit about that. It's what the government has done and i say can't what since they're allowing to what's right. what well, they're like start to cut you off it's really like what's this government is really allowing this happen to happen and they blame it on this side like you well, know it, it, it put it this way if unless you understand the backstory to every situation whether it's ukraine russia or israel palestine you have no idea like kind of how things began what was the genesis of the problem and why have people done what they've done so far it's important to understand that and what i came to understand is that there was this massive displacement of people in 1948. You know, I heard it was a, a land without a people for a people without a land, which sounds very romantic, right? Well, a bunch of people just moved in, right? No, that's not what happened. It was a violent settler colonial project that displaced over 700,000 people and about 15,000 people died. It was horrible. And it wasn't unilateral. There were other skirmishes that went on where other people died. I have to acknowledge that. But it was more harmful to one side than the other. Let's be clear. Even if you're pro-Israeli, if you don't acknowledge that, you're not being honest. So because of the Nakba or the catastrophe that accompanied the establishment of the state of Israel, many Arabs who are Muslims got displaced. They got harmed. They still have keys to their original houses. They got kicked out of. So therefore, that was unfair. And then you look at all that's happened since then, especially the 1967 war. To me, that was the big one where Israel took on so much more territory but then doesn't have delineated borders. It claims that it's making settlements, but doesn't give rights to the people that they occupy. That's unfair. And then if you look at all the other things the Israelis do, supposedly for their own security, and yes, they've endured a lot of attacks over the years, and I don't agree with the tactics, but I'm not living in those circumstances, it's not for me to judge. And by the way, when you're an occupied people, according to international law, you have the right to resist that occupation by whatever means available. And if the only means available from their point of view is to do the things they did, well, that's their choice, not mine. I'm not going to condemn their choices. I don't like civilians being harmed, but I'm not in their shoes, so I don't have their lived, lived experience. Now, the most recent attack that took place was not out of the blue. It wasn't done on some whim where somebody just started a war all of a sudden. You know, Israel is constantly unaliving Palestinians on the yeah, regular. I'm Palestinian myself. I'm Palestinian myself, and I was actually there during October 7th. I just came back. The October of 23rd, I was there October 2nd to the 23rd for like a quick getaway vacation. And okay. then when it happened, like, I mean, I was born, I was born here in America, yeah, but like, I was, I lived there too. I've seen stuff, but once, when, when October 7th happened, like, dude, they were fleeing the country. Like, why are you leaving your country? I thought that was their homeland. Like, Hold on, can I want? just, can I just say, is there someone in the comments named Brooklyn Mob Birdie? Okay. Yeah, that's Brooklyn, I, don't know, I don't know where all this stuff's coming from. Give me one second. This is important. Here's here's what Brooklyn Mob Brooklyn just said in the chat. Chip, why so many mad at a your talking shot about Pally and given dapper mod was said? I just address this. I don't have to explain myself, but I will one last time and then I'm going to shut up about this is absurdity. Okay. I have never, ever given any pro-Israeli or Zionist access to any moderator features on my lives. That is an absurd allegation. 
okay? Never going to happen, never has happened, never will happen ever, okay? And I'm not talking any shot about any of that stuff, okay? I'm not. So will you please stop making those allegations? Go back and watch my 300 hours of lives and follow what I've talked about and follow what I've done. And if you still think I'm a turncoat, then never come see me again. But you're going to find out you're being very foolish for making that allegation. I'm quite frankly, like I'm getting very tired of having to answer to it, okay? So take that silliness somewhere else. I don't want to block you. I don't want to mute you, but give it a rest. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I was saying, like I'm Palestinian and... uh I would like tell anybody that's just becoming a pro pally I would like really suggest that they should go to Palestine and go to the West Bank and go to the uh, other side that they tell they took over. It's always going to be called Palestine. I will never call it Israel because the way I pronounce it, I got like a little thing in my throat. I can't pronounce it right. I just call it Israel. Uh, it's it's just like uh, they were just fleeing the country, bro. Like. They, they were leaving and stuff. And those people like in Gaza, the kids, it's they've proven they point that that's their land and they were not going nowhere. Nowhere they will get, they will get on alive in their country. They will get on alive in their land. They will never go nowhere, leave their homes or anywhere. And yeah, uh, that's all I want to say. Like, I appreciate you for understanding the true side of the history and uh, America do got to distract. They, they're distracting us with a few things with the illegal immigrants, with the bridge that just happened, with uh, what else, with deep uh, P. Diddy. They're distracting us with that just to get us distracted off Palestine. Like, yo, America, we're not distracted. Um, we're never going to stop talking about Palestine. Palestine comes first before anything because they're always been attacking the Middle East. And by the way, Gaza do got uh, $500 billion worth of oil. Uh, that they want to take over, they want to steal, they partner up in in Gaza, but which is the age group, not gonna let that happen. They really don't care. They just want to resist. I'm an age group supporter. I will always be, and uh, yeah, that's why I want to let let everyone know that Palestine is gonna be Palestine. It's gonna be free soon, inshallah. Yeah, thanks for sharing your point of view. I do want to say that, you know, I, everybody's important to their point of view. I would not say that I'm a quote unquote an H group supporter and anybody's entitled to be. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I would say is that I support the idea of an oppressed people having the right to resist in whatever form they decide. That's the group that's been elected duly in the territory going back to 2006. Uh, you know, just because you're somebody who understands the complexities of a conflict and you support one's right to resist, which I would if the tables were turned and the parties were switched, doesn't mean you support the tactics of the group, just to be clear. Okay, there's a big difference there. All right. Uh, just as I'm sure, you know, some people may support Israel, but they may not support the bombing campaigns in Gaza or whatever well, yeah. you may find objectionable. Well, let, me, okay? let, me, let me say something about the H group. H group was created in 1987 as yep. orphans. You know, I don't know if you know that, but uh, they were orphans, and they being they they didn't get forced to join it. They just they just do it just because they have no other thing. They lost their families, they lost everything, so they might as well just go ahead and join this group and defend their country, continue to defend it. And uh, you know, they were not elected. If you're saying what you mean by being elected, who were they elected by? Uh, well, no, they were elected by the population. There was an election in 2006. So 70% of the population approximately voted for the H group, 30% did not. And they became the duly democratically elected representatives of the Palestinians in Gaza. Now, the H group or Hamas is not solely a militant group. It has an arm, like any other political system, it has an arm that has military capability. And people always talk about the criticism of H group, that money is diverted from the people to the defensive efforts. That happens in every nation state, every group of people. If they have a desire to have those capabilities, they divert money. So that criticism is absurd because the United States diverts almost a trillion dollars a year that could really help the population to what? To militarism. And we call it defense, but it's anything but. So I've heard all these other criticisms. Yes, there are a lot, there's a lot of corruption where money has been diverted away from the people to the leaders in different places. That happens in every country, well, unfortunately. Yeah. So other thing about an age group, just because they were not signed by the legal ICJ, by the union, by da-da-da, to make it like an official military, because 
they know what they're up to. They know the age group do not want anything to do with the government power because the government power in this world, they're trying to take over. It goes deeper into religion too. They don't want to take, they don't want to agree to anything that is, oh, this man make this, this dude do this, all that stuff. Age group that just wants to do is, all they want to do is protect Palestine and make sure that Palestine is always going to be there and they're going to continue, you know, they're going to continue um, winning because they're winning right now, you know. But is the Israel Khara, they, they don't want to say, they don't want to say that uh, how many people they're losing and stuff, but they know that they, they're losing, you know, age group are winning. Even those people are getting unalive and stuff, but they're martyrs. As us Muslims, we believe those those people are martyrs. We're not like, we're sad. Yes, we believe it's sad and stuff. We need a ceasefire because ceasefires would mean a lot because like it would need, people would like, it would make people less angry and uh, they won't have to go through the PTSD, but they already are for years and years and years. But yeah, that's like, the age group are not, they're not terrorists. Yeah, I, I, do, I don't like the assessment of them as a terrorist group. I think that's, that's unfair. I, I do think that some of the tactics could be categorized as terroristic because I think when you directly target civilians, that, that is hard to categorize otherwise. As long as it's intentional, it's, it's, it I think goes to the same thing for the Israelis, though. It's, it, to the extent that they have targeted civilians either haphazardly, callously, or directly, it's, it's a war crime, just as it was for the age group to go after civilians. But the taking of hostages is not a war crime insofar as if you're trying to exchange them for those who you believe have been taken hostage, that's not out of bounds in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I got family members that are that are arrested for years and I got a best friend that he's doing 18 years for, I don't even know, like they, don't even, they can't even tell you, like they'll literally take you and they'd be like, yeah, I just felt like taking you. Like they, there's no court date, there's no lawyer. If you're trying to ask about this person, like, no, but with those people, when October 7 happens, which is, it is a new holiday for all all you guys, Arabs down here, please come to the October 7 party holiday. I'm hosting it in uh, inshallah and follow Steam when it's free. But, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, what I was going to say, those people that are, well, you, the let's, let's do, let me, if it's okay with you, I want to give a couple other folks a chance to get in, but thank you for sharing your point of view. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, can I finish real quick? Well, I, so we were supposed to be done a couple times ago, and then you keep jumping back in. So I'm just trying to give others a chance. But if you want to finish, I'll give you 30 seconds. Go ahead. Well, yeah, the, um, those people that are in hostages, they're not going to come home until we get our prisoners back. You know, I need Ahmed Yassin. We need all those people. Yahya Sanwar is going to be the next president for Palestine. And Netanyahu need to get out of all those people. They need to go back to where they come from back to Germany, back to the 22 countries that were denied from the European countries that got denied. They need to talk to them, figure things out, you know, because since they're they're helping, since those European countries are helping those Zios, why can't you guys take them in your country, you know? Go back over there. Uh, go back over there where you belong, you know, that's this is not okay. your country, honey. Thank you for sharing your point of view and thanks for being here tonight. Take care. This is like, this is like, Take care. Yeah, I, I can't. I got to give some other folks a chance, but thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't know necessarily how people would feel about that. If I was somebody from Israel and I heard people saying that my, my whole country had to go back to other places, it, that would be hard for me to hear. I understand that. From a pro-Palestinian viewpoint, I can understand that people think that those who emigrated to the territory and helped create the population that then led to the creation of the arbitrary boundaries, that also seems terribly unfair. So I don't know exactly how you adjudicate it at this point. We know that the H group in their 2017 charter said that they're going to be, they'd be willing as a practical step to accept a two-state solution based on the pre-1967 borders, which means all the settlements from the West Bank would have to go. And I don't think that's going to happen, although I think it should. That would be at least slightly fair. But I think in terms of the total right of return, in terms of the political diamonds, if, if the Americans are still backing the Israelis with m money and material and military and political, I just don't see a pathway right now. But it would be great. It would be fair if something were to change that returned people to their original homes and created something that would be somewhat similar to what things were in the 1920s or 30s as far as how people were oriented and shared the land. 
I think that'd be fair, but I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Okay, um, let me see if I can get somebody else up here. Um, I'm very reluctant to bring up somebody who's pro-Israeli because we just get the same old bullshit. So, um, Jello, if you write in the comments, uh, Jello program, pro program, if you write in the comments that you're not going to say personal shit, I'll happily bring you up. I want to talk about the conflict, but if, you know, I'm just going to drop you like a rock because it's just silly. Okay. I'm going to drop. Thank you so much for your work, your platform. Yeah. Happy. Thank you. Happy to do so. Thanks for being here. Okie doke. Uh, somebody, everybody says bring me up. So um, let me see. I have a guest request from, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll bring up Jello and we'll see where that takes us. We'll scope one at a time. How about that? A little more manageable. Hello. Hello. Um, so you claimed earlier that you could not confirm or deny the sexual abuse of the victims of October 7th. Is that correct? Uh, as far as the evidence that's been presented, I'll give you an example, and just, to, just so you know where it's coming from. It's not because I necessarily am trying to be inflammatory. Uh, the information that was presented to a wide variety of journalists, it was a select group by the IDF, which was the body cam footage from 10-7, as well as first responders. There was a journalist named Owen Jones, who I trust, who I've followed on YouTube for many years. He was one of the journalists that was allowed to 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 watch to be a part of the viewing. And so he he did an aftermath and like a like a recap after he saw it. He didn't get into too many details because he didn't want to be gory. But he did so a couple things that he found particularly hard to watch, which he described in relative detail. But he did say specifically, and this is his words, not mine, that during the presentation that there was no evidence provided either through testimony or through any kind of other evidence of anything like that having happened in what the IDF provided that group. So that was one piece of the puzzle. Now, I know there's been a UN report recently that made a claim that is, in, is, is sort of in substantiating what they believed yes, to be. The UN did in fact find evidence that women had been sexually abused. Not only that, but corpses had been abused. Yeah, now I heard, now I, I was listening to a live and I've not looked at the footnotes of this report. I read a summary of it. So yeah, to that extent, the report said that. Somebody else said, and I haven't confirmed this, that in the footnotes of the report, that it said specifically that the, the widespread acknowledgement of that happening is based on the testimony taken from Israelis, and it was not based on any sort of forensic or other specific evidence. So again, evidence for that, that it was not based on physical evidence. Well, what, I, what I'm sharing with you is what somebody said that I okay, heard. I'm, well, I, okay, that's I fine. I'm asking you personally what your opinion is, not what well, someone I, else I would have said. I, I don't have an opinion. That's the point I'm trying to make is, is that in my search for evidence, I've, I have been able to put together enough video, although I don't have the complete video that was provided well, what the journalists saw, but I've seen enough that I've been very clear in, sh in informing people who I can speak to that I've seen a plenty of times when the age group directly engaged civilians, which I condemn as a war crime and an atrocity and I wish it never happened. And, uh, you know, I've not seen all of it. And I think that there was a lot more of it than what I saw that the indication is, is that they unalived a lot of people, which is horrific. Uh, I've not been able to get the same level of information to corroborate the things, but I have also said I have no reason to deny them because I don't have any evidence to prove they didn't happen. But how do you discount the evidence that has proven that women were sexually abused? Not only that, there were women that were gutted while still pregnant. There are videos of women being sexually abused because Hamas put cameras just real quick, hold on a second. I, you probably, you may not know this about TikTok. I just want to, this is not about trying to keep you from sharing your point of view. Um, there's certain TikTok friendly language that if we don't use the live will come down. One of is the word S-E-X-U-L. Another one is H, we say H group, uh, S-A for assault, those kind of things. I know it seems juvenile, but that's just how the algorithm works. And if you keep saying those things over and over, the live will end. Sorry about that, I didn't. That's okay, I, I, I figured you didn't know. Um, yeah, so that's really all I wanted to know. I just was curious why women are believed in America when they are, when that happens to them. Sure. There are people everywhere with signs, with the Me Too movement saying, you know, believe all women, believe all women. Yet it's ironic that when it comes to Israelis and Jewish women, we need actual evidence. We need video evidence. Do you know how disgusting it is to ask 
people who have been who that have seen for evidence. I'm seeing in your comments. I'm getting asked evidence yeah. that babies were unalive. Yeah. Let's be fair to the guest. Let's be fair to the guest, everybody. I don't want to say things that are insensitive. I think you raise a fair point. You know, why is it that a certain standard is held to Israelis or Jewish people that's not present in other circumstances? That's a fair thing to bring up. The thing that I would share with you in that regard, and again, I, I, I'm just sharing with you. This is these are two things I'll share with you. One is my experience, having been an observer at a distance, just in general, of how information has flowed from the Israeli government and military to the public over a long period of time, and what Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson said. So Colonel Lawrence, I'll share that first. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, if you don't know who he was, he was the chief of staff to former Secretary of State Colin Powell during the Bush administration. So I did a video about this recently. I'm like, wow, look what this guy said. He said, let me be clear, the Israelis lie. You can never believe a single word that comes out of the mouth of an Israeli official. He said, they are liars. They are inveterate liars. They lie. Now, that's a pretty strong statement to make about a foreign government and from a public official. So I was surprised by that. My, my experience has been, and not because I want it to be, this is just what it has been, that in many cases, in fact, almost all cases, as Colonel Wilkerson said, there's been a lot of misinformation put out by the Israeli government, different spokespeople, as well as the IDF people. It's unfortunate, but they tend to use that as a part of their weaponization of, of conflict. They use language and distortion and omission and obfuscation as a tool to create a more pro-Israeli narrative. So when I try to balance the likelihood of things being substantiated or not substantiated, I have to somewhere put that in the back of my mind. Like, is there evidence presented and is there any involvement in any of the past methods of using information in such a way to maybe transmit information? And this is the other thing I wanted to share with you. Um, Frank Luntz, if you don't know if you know who Frank Luntz is, he's a linguistic specialist. He's worked with the Republican Party. He helps people craft marketable narratives that are more persuasive to people to believe something that's desired from the group that wants to utilize those narratives, those, those, those lang linguistic, you know, approaches. And he was approached by the Israeli government early in this conflict. And they asked him what sorts of things are most inflammatory to, to create public outrage. And what did they say? R-A-P-E, molestation of children, harm to children and pregnant women. And so what did Israel do? All of a sudden we hear all these stories about all these atrocities. Now I can't say they didn't happen, but you add all that stuff together and along with past indiscretions and the fact that I, I, my understanding is, is that the UN report is not based on video evidence and it's not based on forensic evidence, it's based on testimony, which may be true 100%. I have no reason to deny it because I don't know, but it's hard to corroborate with direct evidence. That's the only point. I think that's, and there may not have been videotape. There may be no video that exists to prove it. And then you have to ask yourself, well, how do you make that determination? I'm just not sure. No, there is video evidence of what happened on October 7th. No, I, um, I didn't say that. I said of, of the of the most egregious allegations. Oh. That's what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. But yes, there there is evidence for that. Is there, is, is there video evidence of those things? If somebody has it, I would not that I want to see it, but I would love to corroborate rather than having this question mark in You're my right. head. You're right. So I would love the same type of evidence that the Palestinians are being ethnic, ethnically cleansed and that we're just assaulting them and killing them just because they're Palestinian. That is the definition of the G word. And I find it ironic that people keep claiming that Israel is committing a G word to the Palestinians when that is, there's no evidence for that. Well, Where, if you look at the, if just, just to go back to, uh, you know, if you look at South Africa's uh, case, the, the effort that they brought to the International Court of Justice. Yes, so, again, Israel was I, I, well, what? in other words, let, let, let me share with you what's happened with that. So you, I'm sure you're oh, familiar I, I with the word. Happened. I don't need you to share with well, me what happened. You, but, you, you just, but you just said something that was not, was counterfactual. That's why I'm trying to share with you what I thought. But I'm not trying to mansplain oh. to you. Okay, let me ask you a question. That's probably a fair way to do it. Are you aware that the initial phase of the work done was not uh, either didn't convict or absolve? Are you aware of that? No, they absolved Israel. And they no, actually they agreed that we no, shouldn't have a... No. No they, didn't. no, no, they didn't. They, they have moved into a phase two where there is potentially sufficient evidence to lean towards the possibility of a finding of the commission of acts of, you know, against humanity and genocide. However, they have not been proven. They have not been proven. They have to go through a lengthy investigation to make sure that there was both intent and the ability to carry out said intent. And that's not conclusive. So they're doing that work as we speak. Okay. 
that's 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 where it is. You know, I, I don't know if they're going to be charged with those. If they're going to be convicted of those they things. They won't. And, it, it, and even if just let you know, and even if they were to be convicted of it or somehow concluded that the people were guilty of that, there's no enforcement mechanism. So it won't make a difference to the people if they are found guilty. So I'm not sure where it's going to go. I, I, I don't want to make a declaration because it's it's in progress. And I think to predict that is, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go. OK. OK. Thanks for sharing your point of view and for coming up. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, I and, and just to elaborate on that, I think that I heard a lot of people who on the pro-Israeli side say that because the, that the International Court of Justice didn't demand an immediate ceasefire, that that absolved Israel of any of the possibilities of their being, you know, convicted of this particular allegation. That's not true. What they said was is that there should be an immediate cessation. And of of civilians that they have to go out of their way to prove that they're they're not trying to harm civilians, which I don't think Israel's really done a good job of at all, if at all. And then secondly, they had to make sure that aid gets to the right people immediately. They haven't done that. So again, the, the people at the ICJ can scream from the top of the mountaintops, war crimes or whatever. Unfortunately, because of the way the courts are set up and the international institutions, there's no enforcement mechanism. It's laws are only as good as their enforceability. And therefore, it might make a political point and it might further degrade Israel's reputation if it does lead to a conviction. And I don't know. She said she's sure it won't. I'm not sure it will or it won't. I'm, I'm going to let the investigation go through its course. And I don't know what the exact standards are that they have to be held to. So I'm not really sure about that. Anyway, but I do know one thing. Um, if, if any of this if any of this response involves Jewish victims in terms of the numbers and the starvation and all the other things, we would have a much different uh, cry out an outcry, but because it's Palestinians, it's again, it's deemed to be, you know, what's just them. It's these terrorist people. So again, I don't think it should happen to any people, but we, we would be being told this is the second coming of the Holocaust. If this were happening to Jewish people, which I think would be not an unfair statement. And therefore, why shouldn't that same statement apply to Palestinians? Okay. Wow. We have a lot of people that want to come in. I got to figure out who I'm going to bring up here. Damn. Uh, we have Magic, Tisha, Be Blessed, Dr. Marley, Liana, Bald Eagle. M Mo is before some of these folks here. I am and Will Will. Damn, that's a lot of people. Okay, let's bring up Mo. And then we'll bring up a couple others. Hi. And, hi, Mo. Just let, the other, just let the other panelists Good fighting. go. Before Mo goes, just one sec, Mo. Uh, we're going to take turns. So Mo's going to go first, then we'll go down the line as people come up. If you have trouble connecting, uh, exit TikTok, try to come back. Remember when you come on the panel, very simple rules. Just wait your turn. Please don't interrupt. Please stay on mute. Um, no personal attacks of other guests, of the host. And please keep your comments friendly to the other people. We don't want to gang up on anybody, okay? That's fair. Okay, Mo, yeah, please go ahead if you're ready, please. Yes, please happy, good, blessed Friday to you. And uh, happy Easter holidays. You too. Okay. Yep. So I was just from uh, the other live uh, next door, which was uh, Eric Warsaw. I think DJ Mali down there is, was also from there. So okay. we love you still, Chip. We love you still. Okay. Oh, that's, that's uh, nice yeah. to say that. So no, don't worry about all the personal attacks uh, on you. That, that you just okay. ignore them. That's all the, the best you can okay. do. Anyway, yeah, it's all good now. So, okay. and what's better? What's better is uh, the UN, like you mentioned, the ICJ has firmly ordered Israel to unblock all aid going into entering uh, Rafa or Gaza Strip or Palestine. So that's a, a good move. Like I said uh, in my uh, comments to Eric Warsaw room earlier, so he agreed. And uh, the best news is Netanyahu, PMBB, the war criminal, is ready to directly negotiate with the Ash group. Hmm. So he is given into pressure. That's what you've been anxiously waiting for. Yeah. Yes, he's finally he succumbed to he's succumbed to the world global power so bb is gonna talk to the t group that he came as the war so that is a good sign uh hopefully it lead to a truce because he was uh, he already sent he already ordered a delegation from 
the Israeli War Cabinet or uh, MPs or whoever in, in his team to to go to to fly to Qatar and Egypt to discuss the, the way forward on hostage release, the release of hostages. So that's a, a good thing too. So now, what's your take on what is going to be the agenda on the table once the negotiation between uh, PMBB and the Edge Group? Let's hear from you. You have been analyzing for years on this uh, peace uh, treaty uh, since the, the the David Accord, uh, you know, Camp David Accord. So yeah. please elaborate now. So Based the question the is, are they demanding as a part of the talks that the hostages get released immediately? I'm not up to date on the latest uh, news flash. Uh, it's two separate things, I think. Uh, the hostage release is being uh, uh, proceeded with uh, a delegation from Israel, the war cabinet or uh, uh, the Knesset to go to, to fly to Qatar and Egypt to mm -hmm. negotiate on the hostage release. So that's one agenda uh, that's been uh, you know, uh, a team from Israel has been flown out to talk to both Egyptian and Qatar authorities. And yeah. the, the latest is news is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is ready to talk directly, negotiate, go into negotiation with the S group, who he had claimed to be a T group, but now he has to, this, to face face-to-face -face, uh, negotiating table with the T group who is the democratically elected H group. Yeah, my first reaction is, I, I, it seems strikes me as very surprising that he would agree to do any sort of negotiation directly with the H group. That seems less than plausible, although I have no reason to doubt what you're saying until I check it out. Um, I don't believe he has much of an interest in having a peaceful resolution because he's made it clear that under no circumstances can the H group be allowed to have a role in after the war effort. So I just don't see that, but maybe I'm just missing something. Maybe he's been pressured by somebody to do that. That's the only way I can see him doing that. And that would be, you know, we're going to cut off the aid. We're going to cut off your military supplies if you don't do X, Y, and Z. As far as the ICJ making a declaration of what's required, again, it's not enforceable. So they can sit on top of the uh, on the top of the court seat and bang the gavel and say, hey, you got to do this. But Israel's ignored everything so far. I don't see why they wouldn't just keep ignoring things. Unless, again, of course, the Americans are putting pressure with consequences, which would be a game changer for all of this. So uh, where did you hear this? Where did you find out the news about Netanyahu actually agreeing to sit down and negotiate with the age group? Mainstream media, BBC and uh, AP. Let me, let me go there and check it with you. So you're saying on the BBC, they said that, and did Netanyahu announce it or how was it announced? Uh, AP, the, the, the particular uh, latest development uh, with negotiation between Netanyahu and H group was reported by uh, Associated Press, AP. Okay, let me check it out. Uh, Chip, while you do that, can I just clarify, did Mo say that it's a good thing for aid to be blocked? Uh, no, I'm blocked. Uh, I'm blocked. Okay. All the, all the, I'm blocked. Thank you for clarifying. No, no, I just misheard. Never mind. So that's on the BBC news. Because the famine is getting worse. It's worsening, right? The famine in, in uh, Palestine. I mean, Rafa and Gaza Strip, even the West Bank. It's been made to be worse. I don't see any breaking news about the, about that issue right now. But maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. I, I've, I've checked on BBC. I've checked on Al Jazeera. I've checked on uh, the Jerusalem Post. I've checked on uh, Haaretz. I didn't see anything on all four of them. They would usually have something about this issue. So, again, I'm, I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying I, I can't find it to corroborate that. Well, Again, my, from the my, my, my spidey sense went, I, I just doesn't sound right. Somebody doesn't sound right about that. I mean, they have been saying that for a long time, uh, a negotiation, not directly through a mediator, through Egypt and, uh, and uh, uh, United States. But uh, I don't think it's going to get anywhere. Like they, it's, I, I think it's not, not the hostages. I think it's the 
equipment from the 82 unit, 8200 unit, and that's what they care about. They don't care about the hostages. They want the equipment back. They want to know what uh, kind of document has been leaked uh, because these documents are the whole plan. And if, if we all sit here think that he cares about the uh, the prisoners, he doesn't. He, he just, after the paperwork, that most of it right now is being, uh, uh, it's given to the Iranian. And that's why if you notice about two weeks ago, uh, <coughs> Iran has warned friendly countries about individuals that are working for the Israeli Mossad in their countries and some arrests were made. Um, I'm so, hoping I can go next um, because I, I felt that there was a lot of misinformation from the last guest. Sure, go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, the last guest came up here and I, I wish I had been allowed the same opportunity to, to be on the panel by myself the, the way she had, but uh, it when is you what say, it is. When anyway. you say the last guest, who are you referring to? Uh, the, oh, you mean the, the person lady. that said about the allegations of the S assaults? And Correct. Stuff? Yes, okay. amongst other things. Um, so with regards to when she was saying that uh, the same isn't applied uh, to the Palestinian side, that's flat out false. Um, in fact, the Palestinian side go above and beyond in outlining the crimes. Even uh, the, the, the Zionist colony itself goes above and beyond and shows and outlines uh, the crimes of its own ITF and the, the abuses that it has been guilty of. There was a, a report where over a thousand uh, cases of essay had been uh, reported and only 31 had even seen court time. So they have a history of not taking these things seriously. As for the Palestinian side, a 13-year-old boy was, was essayed um, the, I believe they're called the Defense of Children International Palestine, went and took that information to the Zionist colony. And instead of taking the, the evidence seriously, again, let me repeat, the evidence seriously, they called the uh, organization a T group, stole all of their computers and shut them down. So yes, she's right when she says the same mm. isn't applied. No, because on the, the Zionist side, they can command worldwide news. They can command, you know, news articles in places like uh, the Washington Post, the BBC, who are now currently distancing them, themselves from this mass grape allegations. They had somebody who called themselves a human rights expert front this campaign only to be found out that not only was she not a human rights expert, not only did she not have any first-hand, second-hand evidence at all. She only had third-hand testimonies for people who were not willing to come forward, has now been called out as a fraud. Yeah, I heard so, that. Um, we're in a situation where when they come up and expect us to be able to take this matter seriously, we are taking this matter seriously. It seems we're the only one taking this matter seriously. Pramila Patton went there and asked for, for evidence, and she didn't get any. All she had was circumstantial uh, evidence based on testimonies. I think that these people need to read the report that they keep talking about and actually out, uh, understand what is being said. That was based on Pamela Patton's own opinions on, and, and Pamela Patton herself has been called out of not being uh, consistent in, in how she kind of uh, deals with things. In fact, she was seen going on a tour of all over uh, the Zionist colony telling them that they were doing a good job. So we're now faced with a situation where uh, there is no evidence based on what the UN report uh, has asked. They keep telling us that they have evidence and yet nothing came forward in the ICJ case, nothing came forward in the UN, um, I don't even want to call it investigation, it was a preliminary report by Pramila Patton, not by really, in, in the way that it should have been hap uh, handled. And even in that UN report, they were asking for the experts to be allowed to get in. The experts have been asking to get in for over five months. They have been denied. In addition to that, their own police have said that over 60,000 hours of footage, they could not find anything. So please, what are we supposed to be dealing with here? If, if it's anybody who's not believing women, it is you guys. You had the daughter, the sister of Gal Abdush saying, why are you talking about my sister and saying that she was great when she wasn't? What are we supposed to be dealing with here? 
Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to point out is that usually the Israelis, when they're showing atrocities or they're angry about something, they include everything they can to try to outrage the international press. If there were any things they could have put into that 47-minute presentation that directly suggested that journalists could believe the allegations, they would have put it in there, in my opinion. So I think the fact that it wasn't in there is somewhat telling, although there, it may not have been easy to do that in the testimony, may have been... It, the way they did it was that was their dog and pony show to to prove the most egregious natures. What I think they did was, is they they showed the film to selected journalists. They agreed it was disturbing and sickening, and then they used that to extrapolate that everything happened. So they'd say like, "How can you say it didn't happen?" Journalists were disgusted by what they saw. Well, they could be disgusted by what they saw, like I was disgusted by what I saw. It was a snuff film. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. It was horrible what happened. I got to tell you, some of the videos I watched were horrific, but it didn't include the more egregious stuff. And it, no, not that I Chip, want to see it, but it's just this there's is the no, challenge. This is the, the challenge. challenge that we have. It's hard to believe somebody who says, trust me, when they have a pattern of not being trustworthy. No, again, this is the challenge that we have, right? We keep give, being given these very. Um, but like well positioned propaganda pieces in order for us to be the journalists who saw that 45 minute snuff film were told you cannot take a pen and paper when you view this you cannot ask questions you cannot discuss it with other people that are viewing this you are not allowed to request additional versions of that footage in order for you to be able to verify what you saw it was a very calculated psychological exercise to make sure that you shock and awe people into seeing horrific film and then you can win them over in other content. That is what Owen Jones said. He said that he wasn't allowed any opportunity to examine what he saw. What he did saw was intended to make sure that he was horrified. And of course, he left horrified. I want to also go back to what she was saying with regards to, um, with regards to the, uh, the, the, the babies. Their own report, their own list of people <laughs> being unalive could make sure that they don't confirm these 40 babies. So if your own report is saying that only two babies were unalive and none of them, none of them were unalive in the way that you said, one of them was unalive by a, a pew pew that uh, I think came through a door and the other one was unalive because the, the, the mother had to go through an emergency C-section. What are we supposed to go off? We have people here who are coming up on these panels and saying the most egregious things. And then it, when you challenge them and say to them, can we please go through what you're exactly you're saying? They start screaming and shouting and frotting, frotting at the mouth and expecting us to hold a, uh, an intelligent conversation with them. I also want to say one other thing as well. Um, I know that uh, there's been several discussions so far with regards to um, your position on these things. I think that where I have difficulty and why it's very uncomfortable for me to be on this panel, the only reason I came up is because there's 200 plus people here and I don't want 200 plus people to go away with misinformation. But it's uncomfortable for me to be up here. It's uncomfortable because I see a lot of inconsistencies in how you address what is happening. I find it very dangerous that you you kind of you have a platform like you have you're hinting at being pro-palestinian but when push comes to shove you say things that really are not in favor of the palestinian you're only looking at this from the point of view of your own interest from your own point of view to be pro palestinian real quick i'm trying to understand what you're saying are you saying that i'm not being objective enough or i'm not being fair or i'm wavering or what are you trying to say uh i'm saying that if you are unequivocally saying that you are for the full liberation of Palestinian people, that should not be, um, should be contingent on what it serves in your benefit. Right. Well, I, I don't think I've ever talked about quote unquote, it's serving me. Um, my, my, I don't get served either way, personally speaking at all. But, but what I care about most personally in terms of how I feel like emotionally as a human being is that I want to see Palestinians cared for and get in a sort, sort of an autonomous freedom situation because what they've had for forever has been the short end of a very bad stick. I don't know it ever if I talked about my involvement or my benefits from anything to do with the outcome, because th that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know if there well, is I can one. I can help you understand. Um, again, I am for the full unequivocal liber liberation of the Palestinian people. 
-huh. At no point am I expecting that to be contingent on how it serves me, what, uh, whether or not it aligns with my belief. What do you mean full, serving? I'm not, what are you talking about? Okay, full unequivocal liberation. And that means me making sure that I understand the Palestinian cause, I understand what liberation looks like to them, and I understand that if that challenges my position, that I am willing to hear it and have a discussion around it. Hold on a second. I, I think and I'm not trying to be mean spirit when I say this, okay. but I think you, I think you're way off base. First of all, first of all, I'm not. I'm not. A, I don't take sides per se. I don't say I'm a professed Palestinian advocate. I advocate for the position of the Palestinian struggle because I believe it's the right thing to do and they're the oppressed people. That's the first thing. Second of all, I have to be politically pragmatic when I look at any circumstance. This one's no different. Would I like to see the ultimate outcome be from the river to the sea, Palestine, the region is free and get rid of the Zionist element and have life be back what it was in the 20s and 30s? Absolutely. However, being that the United States currently supports the government of Israel, which I hate, the fact that they're funding the government, providing political and military support, which I hate, that political reality is such that it puts a huge obstacle to any <laughs> operation for that. Unfortunately, hey, Eagle, do me a favor. Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. So it's not about what I want or don't want. It's about the things that I take a look at and realize what is politically practical. I think even the H group, if you look at their document, they've acknowledged that, that they, they probably think that there's a very low probability that the full and total liberation of the territory is likely, or they would have said they maintain that as their goal. They have said they're willing to accept a two-state solution along the lines of the 67 board, pre-67 border. Sorry, who said that? The, the, the H group wrote that in their 26, 2017 revised charter. The point I bring that up is, I'm just trying to think of a way for there to be anything for the people of Palestine. And I'm not the one who makes the decision. I'm just, people ask me all the time, what do you think might work? But I acknowledge the limitations of every direction. So you have the settlements, which make it difficult from a territorial standpoint, because Israel has to remove 700,000 people. If they're going to do it, they probably won't do that. They probably wouldn't do it anyway. And then you have a single state solution. They would have to cede total control as a Jewish estimate state to a, a democracy, which they're not going to do that either. So where does that leave things? It leaves it at a stalemate. And unfortunately, the, the inertia is continually in the favor of Israel with the United States backing them. As we're seeing now, it's on steroids. It, none of that makes me in the slightest bit happy, but it's not about what I want or what I think. It's about me analyzing it for what it is. So I, if somebody wants to put me in the box and says, you have to aspire to this as a person, that's not me. I'm an that's analyst. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I'm, I'm not sure what you you're saying. Understand, I'm asking you to understand fully where the Palestinian position is. I and do. I don't I see that you're completely. doing that. I understand it. No, listen, again, I understand what the Israeli position is. I totally understand what the Palestinian aspiration is. Maybe I don't if I don't. But hold on, me. sorry. You said that you understand what the uh, Israeli position is, but you understand what the aspirations of the Palestinian. That, again, why are the Palestinians getting a lesser position? Why don't you understand? You're, 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 mis you're com totally misinterpreting this. And by the way, I really don't appreciate the angle you're taking. You're somehow saying that I'm looking at this from a selfish point of view. I'm just a guy looking at this from the outside in and sharing my best analysis. But let me be clear. When I say I see, I'm not giving any, any better or worse treatment to anybody. I'm saying that I understand the point of view as I understand what Israelis seem to want, which is their security. They want to be freedom from harm. And they seem to be other Zionists who have greater territorial desires with the settlers and the more hard right, right people. I think they're crazy. But that's what they seem to want. That's their position. But I the Palestinians that, want the what same. I, what I, let, let me fucking finish, for Christ's sakes, woman. God, you're such a, you're so pushy. Yeah. Just relax for a second. Be, be more polite. You're not being polite. Give me a chance to finish my conversation. You're I'm making allegations against me that, first of all, aren't true. But you're not giving me a chance to explain it to you. My understanding is what the Palestinians ultimately would like to have is freedom for the region from the river to the sea and for them to have the place back that they were t that was taken from them which i think is more than fair and should be the case but i don't believe it's going to be politically practical if it does happen i'd be singing from the rooftops because that's what i would like to see happen that would make me personally happy but i am also have to look at things from a realistic standpoint i don't favor one over the other as far as the israeli side at all that's that's absurd but if you think I'm misunderstanding the aspiration, please clue me in. If you think I'm wrong about what uh, I Yeah, no, I think you are misunderstanding it. I think, okay, when, what you is say, it? I think that when you say things like it's unrealistic, um, that is where I find it incredibly egregious because there is nothing unrealistic right. for, about Palestinians saying they want their full liberation. 
they want to be able to ha handle their own affairs. You're hearing Palestinian people saying that all I, they want I, is to I be just able said, to I just said that. I just, you're, you're, listen, no, I don't you know said, what it is. It's about. unrealistic. On. I, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You're not listening. You keep saying, okay, deep breath. Okay. Can I talk, please? Hold, hold on, hold on. Deep breath. Hold on. Give me some. I'm just going to take a breath here and, and try to phrase this in a way that's most appropriate. Okay. You keep repeating yourself. Just because myself as an analyst makes an assessment politically does not mean that I think it's not appropriate for people to want and have the outcome that they want. I'm not saying that I don't want it to happen. I think you're trying to say to me that I'm delegitimizing their desires because I'm making an, an opinion based assessment on where I think things might go or could go. I have to be politically realistic. I know the Ukrainians should get back all the territory that was taken from them by the Russians. I don't think that's going to happen. Their aspirations are legitimate. The political reality of that happening is very, very low, if not no probability. You're somehow saying that 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 kind of makes me it makes me partial to it not happening. That's not the case. So if you want to go with the narrative that it's going to happen, it can happen, it will happen. Go with that. If that's what you believe should happen and will. I hope it does. But I, I have a sense, based on the history and watching geopolitics for a long time, that it's probably going to be very difficult to find impossible for that to occur in the near term. Of course, there could be a war that could change it. The U.S. could have a change of government or change of policy that could happen, too. That might change it. But right now, based on all that inertia, I don't see it. And I wish it could. I feel horribly that the inertia is in the wrong direction, which is further marginalizing a people that's already been put under the barrel for way too long. But I don't know what else I can say. I think I completely understand what's going on. And uh, if you feel that's inappropriate for me to make that assessment, you can disagree. That's fair. But uh, I don't need it explained to me again. I get it. Okay. And uh, gosh, I don't know what this, I don't know what this is tonight about people who just want, want to cram their views down your throat. I'm not trying to cram mine down yours. Come on. Okay. Okay, uh, let me talk, please. <laughs> hold on a second. I think there might have been others ahead of you. Just a second, Leanna. Make sure. Um, Mo talked, and then I think it was, was I don't know who was next. I apologize. I, I, why don't you go ahead, because I can't remember the order. Yeah. Go ahead if you're ready, please. Uh, say, first, I want to say thank you so much for all your time you know, your energy for, you know, you know, you are talking on behalf of everybody that we are not the white people, you know, because I am Iranian who grew up oh. in Canada. Okay. As an Iranian, you know, they call Iranian terrorist. <laughs> I, we get used to it. You know, terrorist is just a word that they say, we don't believe it because we are really human. We need, you know, first, um, sorry for my language. And this is my first time I'm talking. Um, you know, first of all, uh, about the Iran, okay? Iran, they always call Iran is terrorist government. They have terrorists. Uh, about the Houthi, they are terrorists. You know, this is what's going on in the Middle East. We all have to be terrorists. We all have to be, you know what I mean? I mean, we have to protect ourselves. You know what I mean? If, if they want to attack us, you know, for example, I have two kids. Okay. I'm going outside. I heard in downtown Toronto, lots of garbage things happen. I put a knife in my backpack. Okay. If it's something happened for my kid to my kids, I'm going to use it. Otherwise I'm not crazy to use it. You know, they want to get the weapon from us and keep us in the Middle East in a worse situation that anytime they can, they can attack us and we don't have even a small knife. You know what I mean? We have to be powerful in the Middle East and they, we get used to it. Let them think we are terrorists, but we are doing it because we have to protect our kids. We have to protect our country. You know, as an Iranian, I am telling you, I grew up, you know, in Iran and in Canada after that. So I clearly, I can tell you that, uh, you know, when I was in a stroller, Every last Friday of the Ramadan, my grandma took me to the Intifada. I grow up every, I grow up the way every year, one day completely for Philistine, I went out and shout and cry and nobody, to, nobody listened to Iranian government, Iranian people or Palestinian people, nobody. Only Iran stand with Philistine, okay? And so, 
they said you are not gonna give up on Philistine. Okay, you have to go more sanction. They put us on more sanction. They destroy everything. You know, um, the, with the Israeli money, they corrupt all the government in Iran. You know, even they they as it you know they killed all our scientists, nuclear scientists. They kill all of them in front of our eyes in our street. You know, because they were afraid of Iranian scientists. They kill our people in our street. You know what I mean? The people came, they killed our scientists, nuclear scientists, or they should be killed, or they should have, they should get money and work for Israel. We get used to it. This is the politic that Israel is doing in Middle East. Always, this is not gonna be changed. And for, for them, this is for Iran. This, this, like this my thing. asshole. The well, like thing. my asshole. The second thing is about the rape. I want to talk about the Israeli Israeli ladies who claim they raped. You know, I well, think it's, Hamas. It's not, it's not. It's not. a claim. There's. There's. No. 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 It's there. a claim. It's there, a claim. No. There, so, there, there, it's, know, it's, it, there. There is no fucking claim. It's a, you, listen to me. They no, had fast. hostages. They had hostages for three months. They didn't even touch the hostages. How in one day, listen to me, how in one day will really combat war? They have to open the border in, they had nine hours from the Gaza, go to the, go to the, you know, the, what, what was that? Go to the um, uh, ceremony. I don't know what was that. Go to the, go to over there and get lots of hostages and bring them with no cars, by walk, by, you know, lots of difficulty. Uh, Israel knew they are attacking. Okay. Israel knew because the Egyptians told them, we told Israel last year, they knew Israel, they knew the Hamas gonna attack them. They didn't stop Hamas for the first things. You know, you think, you know, somebody get heart attacked in that festival. If they call the ambulance, if they call the, you know, they were, they were drunk, maybe they hit each other. If they call the police, nobody attend that in nine hours? No, it's wrong. So Mossad knew they are attacking. Mossad stop everything for nine hours. Okay, that is so stupid. They didn't do anything. Then they were watching. They were watching if they are killing, they are not doing anything. They saw they are just kidnapping. They are not killing. They are not raping. They just want to kidnapping because they want the Palestinian leader to come out of the prison. They just kidnapping. So after nine hours, Israel said, oh my God, there is no dead body here. So I start killing our own people. On the way, they were, they were made to go back to Gaza and hide. Okay, it's this nine hours is very tricky hours because Israel was watching. If they are killing, let them kill. If they are not, we go and kill our own people. Okay, to accusation because they just, want. I'm to, sorry, you, you, they Leanne, just to listen, there's, there's, hold on. There's a, there's a language thing we have to do on TikTok. You, the word K I double L, we're supposed to say unalive. If we say it enough times, they'll take the live down, just so you know. Uh, uh, let me finish. The main reason of the. Hold on, just want to make sure you understood what I said. Do you understand that we can't say the word K I double L? We have to say unalive. Just, just say yes or no. Liana, did you understand what I just shared? No? Okay. Uh, let's let the next person come up then. I wasn't trying to pause you, Liana. I was just trying to let you know about the TikTok-friendly language we have to follow where they, they'll take the live down sometimes. It's really silly. Okay, DJ Marley, I think, was next. Would you like to come in and say anything? Uh, yeah, thank you for letting me up again, uh, Chip. Um, sure. Everyone's doing well tonight. I just wanted to touch on um, about the essay. So there was a video um, that Israel posted on their Twitter yesterday, but yeah. they posted it once, then deleted it, posted it again, deleted it, and then posted it a third time. Each time they had revisions to the video and it was showing um, someone that they, they took 
um, that was part of the 10 seven and they forced him to confess. I'm not sure if you've seen that video. Um, it's on their Twitter and it's a man that's wearing a white shirt and pretty much they did torture to this man for him to force a confession out of him. And pretty much what he said is he was doing a lot of essay during um, 10 seven when they were dealing with the civilians. And what I want to know is I've seen a lot of footage. I've seen a lot. My family's from Palestine. I've heard like first uh, person encounters with the occupation. And so like what I want to understand is how there are people still to this day saying there is no evidence of ethnic cleansing where it's been heavily documented not only in the past six months 176 days but over the past 76 years um i just don't understand people's cognitive dissonance in terms of <laughs> in terms of this um there's been videos upon videos so much evidence that has been presented to the icj which is an international court so it's just it just boggles my mind how there are, there are still people to this day that that have this rhetoric and spew this misinformation, um, and unfortunately there are people in this live that may not know about the current situation in Palestine and they come to these lives to gain understanding, um, and I feel like it's important even when you guys cute when you guys hear any one of us speaking, including myself, go and do your due diligence to look up what people are talking about because anybody can say anything. Um, so just, just do your research. And uh, I wanted to say something else, but I lost my train of thought, but um, thank you for letting me up here. Sure, happy to. Uh, I think that Wally Will was next and then No Way. I think that's the order. How you doing, Skip? Uh, Chip, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I, um, <clears throat> I want to get to the meat and potatoes of this whole thing. I never hear Palestinians talk about the origination of the Jews in Israel. They are Khazars. They come from the border of Asia and present day Turkey. Nobody ever talks about that. I have done research and they are clearly converts who converted to Judaism in 800 AD and they have sold this bullshit dream to the world that they are the original Jews of that land. And like I said, they are converts. They come from the border of Asia and Turkey, the land of Khazar. And it, it's interesting that no one ever talks about this. I have testimony from an Ashkenazi Jew, an elderly gentleman, who clearly states that they were robbers, pirates, they did nothing but evil deeds in that region, and they were forced to convert, and they stole the identity of the original Israelites who were there. You know, no one ever talks about this, and I understand the fact that there are more urgent things that need to be discussed as far as you know what they're doing in palestine but the facts are they are who they are um and i can actually play that video of the gentleman who states these facts uh in addition to the fact that i've researched this um and i'd like for you to hear if it's possible uh, the testimony of this gentleman talking about it was a nation uh, uh, near Turkey. You're muted. 
Um, before you play that, I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. I just want to make sure that A, it's TikTok friendly language, and then B, uh, it doesn't make any broad, definitive conspiratorial claims because that can get the live taken down for disinformation. Just want to be clear about that. This gentleman is an, an elderly gentleman who is an Ashkenazi Jew, and he actually describes what I'm trying to tell you. And, and, and if you could hear it, please let me know if you can hear it. Absolutely, you do. That's what I believe. I think, I think the original the, 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 the Israelites were black or brown. You out of your spirit, man. <laughs> Look, the, 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 uh, the American Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, the white Jews, they are all co converts to Judaism, for they have no DNA with, from with the original from, from the Kalanis family, right? From the from the Khazarian nation, they were the Khazar the, the Khazarian the Khazar Khazar was a nation uh, uh, near Turkey, and uh, the, the the whole nation converted to Judaism in the eight uh, eight hundred uh, um, after Christ. In the year eight hundred, because they were, they were a nation of uh, thieves, and uh, there was a horrible. It was, a, a, I mean, they were they were standing there on the, on the trading ground between Asia and Europe, and they robbed everybody that came through through the country. They basically lived on looting and stealing, and they were horrible people. And and um, I don't remember who one of the. Uh, what, what, I don't want to let too much more of that go through because, again, it's I don't have any substantiation for the claims. Uh, you're more than welcome to, you know, send me information if you want to my email address. I'll listen to it or look at it. And if I can find evidence to back up claims like that, I'll certainly take it to the. But I don't want to play things like that that, again, I don't want to offend everybody. And I try to be fair. And that doesn't sound like something that has a place right here right now tonight. I'm not saying it isn't true. I'm just saying I, it's, I can't just play it out right and just... For the audience, I hope that's not upsetting you, Willie. Will, but I just I have to be fair to everybody. I mean, I'm not upset, but it it does say quite a bit about the situation there. And if you could at least hear the rest of it, I would appreciate that. Well, I put it this way: it made the, the one of the comments that were made, if, unless I misheard it wrong, is it it makes disparaging comments about a group of people with their relating to their behavior or something to that extent. Uh, you know, I just I can't substantiate that. And I, people will con confer that to be hate speech, and I don't want to spread hate speech because I don't have any way to determine it's accurate or not. So, uh, in fairness to that, I want to defer on the side of being a little more cautious. Like I said, if you want to send me something, my email address is chipbarnesonline at gmail. I'll certainly look at it, listen to it, whatever. Try to make my best judgment on where it fits in, and then you know try to work it in as best we can if we can. I hope that's, I'm trying to be fair, but I just can't, I can't just platform something without any sort of verification. You may believe it to be complete truth, and it may be, but I don't know what else to say about that right now. Uh, anyway, so I don't know if that person can still hear me or not, but Wally, yeah, just feel free to contact me. Uh, no, I've not been, no intimidation has come my way or anything like that, although there has been a very, what seems like an onslaught of very unhappy women who think that I'm not being fair to the Palestinians for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, uh, who happen to be from the UK, I gather, too, based on their accent. Somebody says I'm talking differently, maybe because it's just late at night and I'm just tired. But no, nothing's different. Uh, listen, <laughs> I'm going to go down swinging. So if somebody's going to come take me out, come take me out, man. Put me out of my misery, quite frankly. No, no problem there. Uh, nobody's doing that. Okay, I think the next person on here was L LM. I'm sorry, no way, then LM, then Goyate. I think that's the order. And I'm probably, hi, probably saying the names wrong. I apologize. Yeah, go ahead, please. Hello. Hi. I was watching you from the beginning when you just started. Uh -huh. And I feel like you were very enthusiastic about the Palestinian cause. You were talking a lot about how they are miserable and how this is not fair. But I feel like now, what, why I think a lot of people are commenting here, that you're starting to shift into being fair, thinking that you don't want to offend anybody. But uh, how, how about that they are offending anybody and everybody 
they are doing uh, miserable things to the Palestinians. And nobody is thinking that's unfair, but you're trying to be fair here in a way that it's absolutely offending us, the poor Palestinians. And this is how a lot of us feel now. Because I started following you a long time ago when you just started, you didn't even know about anything about TikTok. So and my, my suggestion is, is you know, in all due respect, um, I can understand one having that perception. I can't speak for whoever has perceptions. Here's my suggestion. Uh, just go back to today, for example. I did a live for seven and a half hours today. This one's pretty lengthy. They're all on YouTube. All my videos are logged on. Go watch any of my content. It will be irrefutably clear that I take the position of being 100% pro-Palestinian with one exception. I can't excuse certain things that I find objectionable, no matter who says them or who does them. It doesn't matter who does them. If they're things that I find completely out of control, I'm going to speak to them. I'm not going to do it because one side or the other might not like it. That's silliness. Now, what I will say is I try to be fair-minded to people and give them a chance to speak. I've been doing that forever. You can go listen to my lives, you'll find out. That may not be appealing to everybody. If it's not appealing to you, I respect that. There are plenty of other places that keep things very one-sided, never let anybody else talk. If they do bring them on, they give them a hard time. That's just not how I do it. So you'll see over time, and if you don't agree with my point of view, that's fine too. If you want to make allegations that I'm not, whatever you want to do, you do. But I'm kind of tired of dealing with it. So people should do their homework if you're not going to do the homework, but you want to make accusations, I'm going to do what I'm doing now, which is push back. So I'm tired of talking about it. I'm not going to defend myself anymore. My work is what it is. Take it for what it's worth. Okay, no way. I'm going to let you go. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired of hearing this tonight. And listen, if you have your beliefs, you know, take your beliefs. I mean, I think this is exactly what pro-Israelis want. They want to sow discord among people in the community and try to find ways to delegitimize people. No, I don't have Dapper as a moderator. No, I've never been involved with anything from Israel. No, I don't get paid by anybody. It's just people who know my work know my work. If you're somebody who doesn't, I suggest you do a little more digging and following. And if you still decide after you do that, that I'm not the person for you, then there are plenty of other people to follow. Okay, so there you go. And I don't know why it is that it's all women that are coming up and saying this stuff tonight, but maybe Zabida and some other folks got involved and whatever. I don't want to even make allegations, but it just seems a little silly. And, you know, it's a little time, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, Lose my cool, so to speak. You all know how I roll. Okay, I think it's Goyate and, or I him and then Gayal. Good afternoon, hey. good afternoon, Gary. Uh, it's good morning. Uh, we're here, it's UK. It's good morning. Uh, just tell you, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, let's talk about humanity. Uh, yeah, I'm Muslim. Uh, I'm original Arabic, but in that in that point, sometimes if you tell me you are supporting Palestine because you are Muslim, you are Arab. I tell them let let don't tell me I'm Muslim or Arabic. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm Muslim. I'm proud of myself. I'm Arabic. I'm proud of that. But now I'm support only the humanity. If you say, by example, what happened in, uh, in Ukraine, yeah, we against that, we don't need to say people, they are kicking out from their country, they are, uh, the kids uh, died, it what happened. Uh, I'm a mom, I'm a mom of three kids. If something happened to my kids, I will be, I will be crying forever. And if you saw those pictures every day, a mom died, uh, all family destroyed, you know, I have my, fr my friend, all her family gone, only from this big family, only still five person because they are living in UK. All the rest of the family, they are died. No one in alive. Um, we know we are a part of our religion, a Muslim. We need to believe all the relation, religion. We need to believe Joseph, we need to believe Christian, we need to believe all the book. If we not believe one of them, we are not the right Muslim. Uh, we believe we are Muslim. The Palestinian people, they believe Al-Aqsa for all the religion. It's for Muslim, for Christian, for Jewish. And is a big difference between Jewish and Zuzis. And we are respecting the Jewish. The Jewish is part of our religion. They are our, our uncles. We are, we are from Adam. We are a family. It's no different. We are connected each other. Muslim, Jewish, Christian. We are connecting together. It's no different between us. Only the different if someone not supporting us, 
and uh, we see 30 33,000 people killed in four months that is big thing we need to look after our humanity we are right human or no if we see what happened to those families and what happened to the kids they are dying they're not having food no one supporting them that mean we are no human that mean the animal better than us that why we need to support the humanity now we feel all the people that are the people not stupid anymore no stupid anymore we i'm coming to tell them i'm muslim and tell them you need to support uh, palestine no people now they are clever like you you said when you're 22 years old you, you don't know the the history but now you start to educate yourself we need to educate ourselves to know the truth we're not against anyone not against anyone if someone coming to your house and they want you need to understand the the what called the Iranian sister. She mean if someone come into my house and attack me and attack my kids, I need to protect myself. That is the right. Everyone, if someone come into your house and attack you and killed you and try to steal your house and try to steal your money, you need to protect yourself. That is the way. We are human as well. If we saw the kids died every day, where is our heart? Really, me, I'm in the UK, we have food, we have everything. In Ramadan, I stopped this year's cook because I can't put food and nice food in my table. And my kids eat nice food. My kids, they have in a house. My kids, they have everything. And those kids, they are not having even a, a bottle of water to drink. It's not easy to see that we need to feel our people. Uh, we need to feel pe the people pain. We have a pain. We need to to feel them. We don't need to keep into defense uh, Israel or defense anything. Or no, we need to see the humanity because as a God, we need to be at peace. We need to to be a peace people. We need to to respect each other. We don't need to do that. And thank you, sir. And sorry, I take a long time. And then I want to be a bit different. We respect all the people. We are human. I respect the Jewish and they respect Christian. We are a family. We are a family. We are from Adam. All of us, we, we are from Adam. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Um, there's let me think there's let me see who was next here was it uh i think it was uh goyal then then rollo and then i'll figure it out from there uh go ahead goy 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 sale goy sale sorry are you there is it goy sale goy sale goy sale i'm not sure what your name i can't hear your name that well yeah hello hi um yeah i was just i'm i'm, I'm I've been following you for a while. Um, I think it's kind of weird that those women are kind of going after you. And I've had the same kind of issues on this app for some reason. But uh, I'm, oh. I'm, I completely disagree with all Abrahamic religions. But I disagree more with uh, what Israel is doing. You know, uh, I just don't, I don't understand how people can not challenge their beliefs kind of Going going back to what that one gentleman said, I understand why you had to cut him off, but you know he did make some really good points, and uh, I like to look past. You know, people like to look at 1948. They like to go back, you know. But what happened in 8033? Right, like they killed a cattle. They killed the cow. You know, that's how this the whole religion started. Um, I'm not a believer in that. I think it's silly. Um, that's my opinion, I guess. I've been, you know, a staunch atheist for since I could, you know, since I ran away from Catholicism years ago, you know, um, and uh, I'm constantly getting bombarded by people because I am an atheist, you know, but I do support Palestine, you know, I, I support people that are oppressed, um, don't want to see anybody oppressed like that at all. Um, I grew up with Native Americans and, um, I've seen all kind of oppression right here in the States. Uh, and um, 
I, I see some lot of similarities on how the Palestinians are being treated. The difference between, I see the difference between Palestinians and Native Americans is the fact that the Israelis have guns pointed at them, you know, and the Native Americans don't right now. You know, uh, they still don't have water and all their amenities like they should, but um, yeah, it just, it's just baffles me that some people still hold on to beliefs that I think are holding is it's it's the to me it seems like the big uh, veto in all of this is through is because of God, you know because of the belief of God is the veto. Eventually, you know you don't, you know, and I'm I'm sorry if that offends people, but you know that's just how I see it from my point of view. That you know I see that people are you know the belief system is is part of the problem you know <laughs> unfortunately um but that's pretty much all i got i really appreciate your content um, i hope you keep rolling uh and i will talk to you some other time thank you very much for being here thanks for the nice words i appreciate that um see some comments rolling through just want to share that there were several people that said that they're atheist that, uh, but they're also someone who supports Israel. And I think a lot of people in Israeli society are more secular. They're not as religious. And some people criticize that. I, I don't understand enough to make a declaration about any of the religions. I'm just, I call myself confused, which is how I really feel. Okay, who's next here? We have, I think it was, I hate to do this. I get the order wrong. Is it Mo that's next? Or uh, let's just let Mo go next. Then we'll go to Palestine, create account, and then Roland. Somebody just looks that way. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, well, that's being honest. Uh, which Mo, brother? There's Mo, me and then there's other. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're, you, you Mo, Mo 700. Oh. Sorry. Well, for, uh, thank you so much for having this respectable, uh, you know, live that everybody's, you know, could put in their two cents and kind of like leave, not just fight with each other's words and just argue. Uh, first of all, like, you know, I just want to say, uh, you know, let, let's put, you know, the religious aspect of it aside, even the historical part of it aside, right? Because you're talking about 300,000, 4,000 years ago. And every, you know, what, what, what I what I see here most is people always bring up, you know, the October 7th. Uh, and th th that's a reaction in my in, in my belief in what I see as a human being, right? Not even Muslim or what, you know, put that aside. As a human being, every action, there's a reaction to it. You know, when you put people between walls and, you know, you, uh, for instance, they had, you know, in the 80s all the way up until early 2000s. And I think it's still happening, like the skin banks with the Palestinian, you know, uh, Palestinian uh, organs and whatnot being stolen, the oppression, the apartheid. All of this is happening over there. You know, uh, you have to look at all of that. And also the H group, like most of these, you know, uh, men, young men, they're orphans, you know, they grew up without a father figure, without anybody due to this, you know, to this power, which are called Israel, you know, like, what did you think the, the reaction would be, you know, and I'm, again, like, you know, you could always talk about how Israel allowed it to happen, how Israel pretty much unalived their own people, whatnot, we could look at all that, right, but you, you have to look at the root cause of what, what happened, why, why that happened, you know, and then you could work from there, if, if you only see October 7th, then you don't see the hundreds of thousands of people that's in Israeli prisons that have to go to military courts that the conviction rate is over like 99%. You could look at the, you know, the, uh, the apartheid where, you know, Palestinian Arabs can't go to certain streets and can't go to certain places where, you know, uh, the, the Jews could go everywhere. And what I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, like not Jews, but like, the, you know, like the Zionist regime and all that. So we have to look into all of that, you know, and what 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 crime did the children commit right, that, that's being unalived right now, the thousands of them, you know, what crime did the church or a mosque or a hospital commit, you know, we have to look into all of that to be able to find a, a, a middle ground to work from that, but you can't have a middle ground if you want to continue oppression and, and you know, and, and, and the G-side, you know, and if you want to get into, I could get into the political, political aspect of it, the religious aspect of it as well. But you know, out of respect for this live, I'm not going to get into that. No, thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. And by the way, like you know, people coming up and saying like negative things. I, I, I'm, I'm originally, my parents came from Yemen. Uh, you know, they tell, mm -hmm. oh, you know, nobody spoke with Yemen. You know, why are you over here? I'm like, it's not about whatever oppression that's happening and I know about it, I'm going to speak about it. You know, I'm going to tell my friends, I'm going to tell my family, but I'm going to tell everybody that I know about it. 
because I know what oppression is. I know what war does. I know what even civil war does, you know? And uh, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I appreciate that. There's someone in the comments. Uh, I've talked with him before, actually. His nickname on his screen is called Troll of Israel. And he's somebody who has a strong point of view. He favors Israel. Um, I think he said on the live day that I dropped him before. I don't know if I dropped you intentionally or whatever. Sometimes my mods will do that. But um, I usually try to continue a conversation as long as it stays respectful. So not worried about it. Now, as far as being afraid to come up and talk to you, that's not the case. It's just that on the Israeli lives that I've gone on, and maybe you said it'll just be the two of us, but for whatever reason, people just pile on. And again, I, I get it. People like to attack people they disagree with, and that's normal. It's just not how I like to do stuff. So if you're open to having a conversation, maybe we can have a third party moderator have both of us up on their live, somebody who's not necessarily taking a side or whatever. And that way nobody can like mute each other, me nor you. And we can have a conversation. The audience can just listen in. I'm fine with that. I'm even going to come up with you as long as it's not going to be a pile on session because I'm just kind of tired of that, thankfully. Okay, I think we have... Um... Chief, excuse me, Chief. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can bring me down, but uh, Frankie Brogan down there would like to go out. Frankie. Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. You can bring me down, but uh, Frankie Brogan, somewhere down along the line, would like to go out. Frankie Brogan? Yeah, he is in the list. I don't see him in the guest guest list. I only have one person, OG4359, in the guest list. Okay. Anyway, uh, just a parting shots for me. If you can uh, explain, uh, elaborate on your analysis on what uh, actually uh, the root cause for PMBB to, you know, to analyze all Palestinians to wipe off from the face of the planet Earth. Is it because of the Gaza Marine natural gas? Uh, trillion, trillion kilometers worth no, billions well, of dollars. No, I mean, let, me, uh, hold on, let me let me address that really quickly. So I don't. First of all, I want to disagree. I do not believe that the intent of the current Israeli Prime Minister is to what you said, quote unquote, wipe all Palestinians off the face of the earth. I, I don't believe that's his intention, and his actions don't indicate that. Now, I don't believe that he or others on his staff, militarily or otherwise, give two hoots who they are alive along the way, they, they act with what I like to refer to as callous indifference to the suffering and the lives of Palestinians. And people have criticized for this. They say, no, 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 they're trying to, they're not trying to, first of all, politically, they couldn't get away with it. They could never just start dropping massive amounts of like nuclear bombs on the territory. Can't do that because the political repercussions would be too harsh. They would never be allowed to get away with it. Now, what they have been able to get away with is a slow but steady and massive bombardment. That is, they've tried to use the cover of going after the H group and then use that to sort of wink, wink, nod, nod, unalive, you know, tens of thousands of civilians, which is disgusting and reprehensible and is a war crime in my opinion, and hopefully the ICJ will say as much. But they, I don't think that there's any evidence to suggest that they're, they're trying to force out I think they're trying to force out the people as best and quickly as they can out of Gaza. That's I think there's good evidence for that. They've actually encouraged Egypt to open their border. They want people to temporarily go out, which is their word, to avoid the potential harm from fighting. And then they, you know, what's going to happen next? Well, that question was asked to Jared Kushner. What's going to happen next? Well, they probably won't be let in, but it's probably for the best. Well, best for whom? For the beachfront you know, property developer like you? Yeah, okay, sure. So I don't think that's going to happen. As far as what's going to happen next, though, it's anybody's guess. It all depends on what Netanyahu does next in this next phase, if he continues. And it looks like he's Thank going. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you all so right. much. Thank you. Yeah, okay, if, your friend, if your friend or whoever wants to come up, Frankie, whoever, they, they have to hit the joint, they have to hit the request button. So I don't even know who they are, but if they hit the request button, I'll let them come up. Okay, let's see. I think it's Kaj, 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 Kajo Maka. I can't read the last of your name. And then Palestine, then create account. I'm the, oh, sorry, Roland, then create account. Oh, hello, Jeep. It's uh, Khadijo. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, yes. Um, uh, I've been, you know, following you since... Uh, since I've noticed you on TikTok, uh, I think you are a fair guy and um, and you speak the truth. And I don't know what happened. I just joined the live. Uh, I saw you earlier, you were on, but I just uh, came back and I saw you and I heard 
people saying that you are like one-sided but i don't i don't think that's the case uh i enjoy your life and your contact is really great and you just speak the truth no matter you know who doesn't like or not whether it's the israelis or the palestinians uh now um and uh, as far as the what's happening, uh, it's it's really sad uh, that in this day and age we have to witness this G side every day. There there are people that are being unalived uh, at least a hundred. I don't know. Like I just I lost count. Like every day. So imagine that happening for the next two years. Like how many people will be unalived? And that's really uh, you know that's that's just that's happening under our watch and this uh this would go down history at like the most uh darkest time of uh i don't know our like i don't know like yeah, this never happened i i it's just crazy to me what's happening and uh and i hope that solution comes these people are stopped especially these zionist entity that came to palestinian you know land and and instead of living with them peacefully they decided to you know um uh, try to like wipe them and i maybe not but try to like uh make it at a like a ethno whatever state and you know under a palestinian land so i i don't know how that was uh it's just the world is not it's not the world world is against it but the superpower the imperial the imperials uh of this world are like you know okay with it so and it's it's really frustrating and i'm angered by it and everywhere there's a protest and no one is uh, things are not happening fast enough and 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 i like your contact continue speaking the truth and that's it <laughs> okay thanks thanks for being here yeah I, and I you know i appreciate those words they're nice words what i try to do is give a fair and balanced take as best i can everyone's got a different way of looking at things and i always like to make the differentiation there's what happens and then there's people's interpretation of what happens and so i try to make mine i'm not saying that i'm right but I try to be fair. And like I said, the more, more you try to do stuff, no matter what you say, you're going to not make everybody happy. And that's just life. And that's okay. In fact, I welcome people who disagree. And I hope there'll be somebody who will because it's more fun that way. Okay. I think we have uh, Roland and then create account in Palestine. Roland, Roland Dharma, are you there? Yeah, I had to get to my mic. No worries. Cool. Um, <clears throat> What's on your mind? Yeah, uh, the uh, the uh, AI that that Israel is using, the IDF is using. Uh -huh. Had uh, have you given any thought about what could be driving this whole thing? <laughs> Well, what they're using, as far as I understand it, is a predictive targeting system based on artificial intelligence, which gives them likely locations of movement based on its algorithm. And so what they do is they say, hey, our system is pretty good at predicting where people might be based on prior movements and intel, and therefore it just directs targeting. And so it could be correct or it could be incorrect. And so they, they supposedly that's the basis upon which some of the targeting has been done. That's all I know about it. That's all you know. Have you read the article that was uh, in the plus nine two seven website? Have you heard about that? The assassination no, I've not, factory. I've not read the article. No. Uh, it's a fascinating read that uh, talks about it. Talks about their uh, the strategy, what's going on. They were supposedly. It, it looks legit to me. The they interviewed some kind of whistleblowers in the IDF who, who were just telling it straight. And it's, it's basically, um, it's, it's giving the IDF, it's, it's basically a demolition uh, campaign. They're not hitting, they're hitting structures that are, that are made to level out the 
country. You know what I'm saying? They're, mm -hmm. they're raising Gaza. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, counterinsurgency and going after Hamas. Uh, you, you're not going to find any argument from me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that in mind, I, I feel like they are not, they are using it to direct their, their whole war campaign, not just what they did in Gaza, but what, how they're interacting with the world and how they're interacting with say the ICJ and the UN, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I, I mean, we, we all can get on chat GPT and like, talk with it and it takes us into uh, you know realms of it, it challenges us right well I feel if they're using something like that or even more powerful then where is it leading them you know and mix in uh, the the uh, eschatological aspect of it and the uh, it feels like the fifth crusade, you know, it's all, there are a lot of things going on, the canal, the natural gas, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, smart city idea. Uh, there's so many things happening at once, you know, the heifer cow situation. And uh, I think we're at a real turning point. I it, couldn't it agree just, more. It just feels like uh, uh, what was happening in the, 60s you know, yeah there are a lot I'm, of people i'm a gen x person so it just we have looking the, um, back at history yeah, we, have, we have the the eclipse is supposed to be coming up and a lot of people oh, think i forgot that about that yeah as a part of that there may be an effort to like do a, a emp weapon or something like that they're going to wow. blame it on the fact that the eclipse caused some sort of problem but That's therefore crazy. we have a big power edge that would be calamitous for the western nations to have their grids go down obviously especially here in the U.S. because everything's just in time inventory. It's really problematic. The other thing is somebody in the chat said it feels like we're very close to world war. And I have to tell you, with the troop movements that I've heard about, the Russian representing of military hardware, et cetera, uh, I, don't, I don't doubt that that's a good possibility. There's some noise in the background from somebody. I'm not sure if that's you, Roland, but it sounds like I have a nail file or something going on. But if you look at the landscape right now and the instability and and – you know, again, I, I don't know who you want to blame it on, but there's a lot of things being repositioned in ways that make you really wonder, are we about to go to war? I think the Chinese and the against Taiwan is definitely in the mix. It's a scary time. I don't, this is the other thing. And I think the U.S. is way too cavalier in its foreign policy because all it takes is any of these nation states, Russia, China, North Korea, to be perceptively threatened existentially, and they're going to release their weapons. As would we if we were in the same circumstance as probably would Israel. And I don't think they quite understand that this is not like they can win. You, nobody wins in that situation. Everybody loses. Well, that's where it gets uh, biblical for some of them. I, I know that Bibi has used language that is straight out of uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. It's, uh, if you looked into that, uh, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls from 1947. No. Not familiar. No, I'm not yeah. sure what you mean. They were, they were ancient scriptures that were found in the desert in 1946 or 47, in the, somewhere in the desert. And they're like... He compared the Palestinians to Amalek. Which I'm sorry? Is, what, he compared to Palestinians to what they call like a biblical story. Yeah, he's, he's dog whistling, yeah. you know, so, scriptures. <laughs> yeah, so, so, Go ahead. Yeah. So basically what Amalek is, is a story where uh, those Israelis go into this town and they kill everybody. They were told to um, basically unalive everybody, including sheep and all their livestock, including babies and everything, with absolutely no mercy. That was quoted by Benjamin Netanyahu. And you can Google it. You can, uh, uh, Chip, you can Google it if you want to. I'm familiar. I'm very yeah. familiar. And this is why, <clears throat> this is why I believe that after uh, after he uh, he quoted uh, that quote from the what they call like the Talmud, uh, I believe that Israeli soldiers they became even worse and worse. And at that point, 
uh, those soldiers had absolutely no mercy on anybody. So they would just, just literally shoot anybody who walks around them with absolutely no mercy. And this is like what they did, you know, uh, when they unalived, uh, you know, hundreds of people who were just going after uh, an aid uh, truck, you know, uh, with absolutely no mercy. Uh, but that's that. That is really, really, really scary. That you have such a prime minister of such a powerful country that will just invoke a part of their, you know, their biblical belief that if anybody attacks you, just go, just basically unalive everybody in that town with absolutely no mercy. And obviously, it looks like they're doing exactly just that. Unfortunately, and this is why probably what seventy percent of Gaza has been completely leveled. And they're not stopping at Gaza, obviously, going inside the West Bank, terrorizing everybody in the West Bank. Uh, they've unalived, what, like almost 455 people since October 7th in the West Bank, and they've injured probably like thousands and in innocent people in the West Bank, you know. So they, they even have absolutely no mercy on Palestinians in the West Bank either. So this is really, this is really scary, uh, what we're talking about. And just to give you a brief before I got, before I got on your uh, live chip, I was on uh, live with a guy named Nick. I don't, you probably know who he is, right? He claims is he a pro, is he pro Israel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Nick. Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, be, I'm well too, well too aware. Yeah, he claims to be a nuclear physicist, whatever he is, you know. But anyway, here's the problem: is how disconnected from reality these guys are. Is we're discussing about you know like support, how much they're losing support, and they're denying that they're losing support. And there's a guy that was on there. His name is Hebrew the Hammer. I'm sure you probably know who he is, right? And this, you know, this guy is so dumb. Okay, that would just come out and says, "Well, no, we're not really losing support. We're just losing support among the younger generations, but the older generations they still support us." And you know, I asked him a question. Well. Can you tell me why that is? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, let me tell you why that is, okay? Because the older generation, that's the generation that's been brainwashed by the mainstream media over the last 30, 40, 50 years, okay? They're left pretty much brain dead, unable to use their critical thinking. The younger generation, these are the ones that actually do research. These are the ones that actually get online. They read, they get information, they know the, they know the truth. This is why you find most of the younger generation they don't talk about October 7th. These people start talking about 1948 from, from the beginning of the problem of the Palestinians, which is called the Nakba, which these guys, they're so far unattached to reality, they don't even realize that. And when you bring back 1948 with these guys, they just laugh. You know, they said, no, we didn't commit any atrocities in 1948. We didn't, we didn't uh, kick people out. People just left on their own because they were afraid of war. And they didn't come back. That's what they say. They, they, they actually say that with a straight face. They will say people actually were afraid of war and they just left on their own because they, they were afraid to be, be harmed. Well, duh, won't anybody want to leave? If there's a war, why would anybody want to stay? I mean, you know, if I have children, if there's, you know, if there's a war, do you think I'm just going to sit tight and not move? I mean, this is just, these guys are so... Uh, so far from reality, it's really, really, really scary. And then they're trying to tell me that the Israeli army is the most moral army in the world. And they use the tactic by saying, well, they dropped, got, you know, 30,000 or 40,000 uh, uh, missiles. And how many have been killed? 32. So that's like 0.7 uh, per, uh, 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 average 0.7 uh, person dead per bomb thrown at Gaza. It's like, I mean, what kind of math are you doing? What about, have you guys just not not seen all the destruction that was left behind? What about the starvation? Then they go back and say, well, no, no, there's no starvation. No, there's a lot of food going in there. But it's all lies. I mean, it just, it's just so pathetic. These guys are, are really so pathetic. It is, it's just scary, you know? And they just don't realize how bad, how in trouble Israel is even after this, this war ended. Israel is going to get so far isolated from the international community, they don't realize it. There are so many countries right now that have, don't want to have anything to do with Israel. They don't want to do any trade with Israel. They don't want to do any Israel. Even in the United States, just think about it this way, Chip, right? Now, you, you find vast majority of people, you know, between like the 20 to 40 years old, vast majority of them are actually supporters of, of the Palestinians. Now, these are the ones 
in the next 10 to 15 years, those are the ones that are going to be the Congress people, those are the ones that are going to be the senators in this country, and hopefully one of those people will be the president of the United States. Do you think those people are going to continue to support Israel, give them billions of dollars of our tax money, while 40 million Americans here in this country don't have even, don't even have health insurance? And you have thousands of people are sleeping on the street you know i mean with 14 i mean do you know how much you can do with 14 billion dollars okay you can eradicate all the homelessness in this country period end of story it will be done but no these politicians you know they'd rather they'd rather just give this money to the military industrial complex to continue with this genocide not only not only here in that not only in israel Let's talk about Ukraine. How much money have we sent to Ukraine? How many billions of dollars have we sent? I mean, at some point, we need to stand up in this country and say, you know what, enough is enough. You know, let's take care of people in the United States. United States first, American citizens first, okay? And then we'll worry about the rest of the world. I mean, why are we carrying uh, th this genocide in 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 Gaza. I mean, what benefit? I mean, I, for the life of me, I don't get wh how the United States is going to benefit out of this. I it just it just makes no sense to me at all. I am just absolutely baffled, and, and I'm really I mean I'm sleepless over it. You know, it's like something has got to get done. You know, and and the sad part is, I mean, you know, even our government, they 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 hear our voices, not just here on this live. Okay. There are millions of people have protested in this country here, you know, a stop the genocide, a stop the genocide. And it's falling on deaf ears until when, you know, I mean, I mean, do you see how frustrated I am? I mean, I'm not only American citizen, I'm a Palestinian too, you know, and, and as a Palestinian, you know, who's living a nice life in the United States to see your people are being massacred in such a vicious manner, okay? It is really, really, really sad, you know, and to know, and here's the worst of it all, okay, to know that your tax money that you work hard for, okay, is going to Israel. I mean, that just absolutely, absolutely frustrates me, okay, and not only frustrates me, I mean, it just makes me really, really angry, okay, and that's, I mean, that's about all I want to say, but thank you for letting me talk. I mean, just, just, just vent a little bit. I really appreciate it. And I really, really, really appreciate everything you're doing, Chip. Thank okay. you. I mean, you're an awesome man. And I just really hope you keep doing what you're doing. Oh, I will. Uh, there's nothing that's going to stop me short of, uh, well, someone stopping me physically. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Appreciate hey. that. No, people have been saying like, you know, don't worry. Listen, I'm not worried about a damn thing. I'm going to keep doing what I, what I know how to do and what I believe is right. And, if I figure out otherwise, I'll let people know. Okay, um, there was somebody who came in. Uh, what create account is next? And then I wanted to give a chance for. I'm just saying this is his name. It's Old Jewish Cowboy, I think. So first is create account, then Old Jewish Cowboy. Go ahead, create account, please. Hi, Shep. How are you doing? Um, okay. How about you? Good, uh, Shep. I've been uh, following you and uh, since the very beginning, since October. Maybe I did not participate with your lives, maybe once or two times. However, I noticed today and the previous or the one before uh, the last uh, life that being attacked personally, that you've been not being fair or moving to the other side. So I don't see that. And <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I know, really, I don't see that. But I think those are pushed guys to say what they said and keep you know attacking you to make you fed up and lose energy so please don't give this much attention and save your energy you do a great job you look now it's five hours five and almost five and a half hours and you need the energy really and you know it's like a drop in a stone if you uh, the, the drop of water in a, in a marble with time it makes a big hole so no, don't pay attention and try to, you know, cut short with those people to the maximum. So you save your energy and, you know, keep up the good work. Um, if you allow me, 
Maybe I'm not in total 100% agreement with you. Someone in the comments says, this is troll of Israel. I like his sense of humor. He says, five hours of misinformation. It's actually not five hours of misinformation. I did seven hours before earlier. So it's been 12 hours oh. of, quote, misinformation troll. You just caught the last five. Okay, please continue. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I find myself with almost total agreement with you, except in few things. One of it, if you allow me to say it, I'm a Palestinian, by the way. So when you say I'm happy or uh, I can't rephrase what you always say, you always repeat it in your uh, you know, lives that uh, the Jews finally found uh, a country where they can uh, live together in peace, blah, blah, blah. OK, I will not argue with you about this, but why it should be my country? They yeah, that's you the know, point. That's, well, just the point. The point yeah, I make this is, is I'm happy for there to be a Jewish homeland where Jews are safe from persecution and harm. And that they have an ethno state yes. that they feel good about. The point I always raise is, but at what cost? That's what I always say. Exactly. So when you say it, I am, I'm, well, I, I will not argue with you when you say it, but unfortunately, I feel it is incomplete. I know you have some restrictions, you have some maybe um, red lines because you live in the States. You, do you remember Fiona Ryan in, the, in England? Yes, very yeah. much so. Well, yeah, she's she's banned from TikTok and from social media, and I think she's in trial now. And uh, why? Because she gave her, you know, opinion, and it was a true opinion. So look where she is now. So I don't want what happened to her to happen to anybody that's saying the truth or trying to to stand in the right side of history. So I understand your, you know, maybe some, um, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but yeah. You're trying to keep up with to to stay within uh, boundaries, so you're not, no, not, uh, not be banned. Or... Let, let me finish. I mean, I appreciate you trying to say that. I don't think I'm going to get in trouble in America, but I really, my view is, and I sincerely mean this: any group that's persecuted, whether it was Arabs or Jews or Christian, whomever, if there's a place and a time for them to be free from persecution, I'm all for that for any group, and I want people to have safety, security, peace, the whole night. I want that for everybody. When I talk about the the historic history of this. I'm, I'm happy that people were able to get what they wanted. I mean, I'm glad when any group gets what they want. The question I always bring up is at whose expense and why should they have to pay that price for you to get what you want? And I think in Palestine, if you look at the arrangement of the population, especially going back to early 1900, but even with the immigration, it was still a vast majority Arab region, let's be fair. And about a third of the population at most got over 65% of the land. That doesn't seem fair under the best of circumstances. And uh, there were other agreements that were bantied about. You can argue who did or didn't accept that. I agree with that. But it's not that I'm dismissing what happened. I'm allowing it within a broader framework. And I don't think it's fair because a lot of people who are Jewish didn't choose for this to occur. They're just going with what is. And I, I understand that from their point of view. But I more, I more importantly understand the deep hurt that was caused by people being dispossessed of their land at no fault of their own. And that's why I err on the side of the Palestinian uh, side of the struggle. Well, I will. Uh, I think you know this. Uh, well, nothing. Uh, uh, I mean, during this uh, six months of uh, your uh, um, life and um, TikTok, I think nothing was uh, left. Yeah? Meaning, everything was talked about from different people. And what, what? Maybe I didn't know. I don't know if this was said in your uh, life or not. We, the Arabs and the Muslims, it's in our culture that we welcome visitors, especially in, in Palestine. What do I mean by that? Palestine is the pilgrims place or the holiest places for Christians, Jews and Muslims. So it is normal to welcome visitors to come to visit the holiest sites for them. But at that time, the, the Palestinians were very I mean, um, peaceful and, you know, basic, you know, people. So they did not know about what's been cooking out during that period for them so they were welcoming the jews and the christians and etc why because that's normal they will come to visit the holiest places for them as a pilgrims like what happened also in mecca and medina muslims every year go or during the year they go and visit these sites but once once they finish they go back to their you know original countries some stay or overstay or stay behind so what happened with the Palestinians that they were welcoming everybody because that's the culture and that's the religion. And unfortunately, they used us 
for this and stayed and then the real plan was disclosed and this is what we are facing now I'm talking about prior to 1948 so um, we should not be the victims or pay the price for the 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 uh, what they call the Holocaust that was done by the Germans in Germany in Europe not us yes there were Jews living among us the Palestinians and the Arabs once you say Arab Arab is the region the whole pe anybody speaks Arabic as his mother tongue language he's an Arab but it happened that you know Palestinians, Jordanians, Lebanese, Syrians, these are the different distinguished, you know, um, uh, regions. So, we should not be the, uh, the one who pay the price for the Holocaust done by the Germans in Germany and the entire European. So, this is what I want to say. And okay. keep up the good work. You are doing a great job. Thank and you. thank you for giving me the chance. Absolutely. And I just want to mention one more thing about the timing of that before we bring up the next guest, uh, old Jewish cowboy. That is, uh, the, the Balfour Declaration was, uh, was you know, brought up in 1917. And a lot of the uh, groundwork that went into the establishment of a Jewish homeland was worked on well before the 1940s. And so were the immigration targets that were happening as well, the population shift that took place. Uh, so even though what happened in the 30s and 40s were indicative of, you know, the worst nature of persecution for Jewish people, um, that state was planned for a long time before that. And so therefore, it wasn't just the historical injustice of that, that the people of Palestine are, quote, paying for. There were places like Uganda and Argentina that were initially considered as possibilities for a Jewish homeland. And eventually it was in terms of the, the planning was kind of solely down, no, it's narrowed it down to historic Palestine for a number of reasons. And, uh, you know, you can, if, if I was an, if I was a member of an Arab family living in territory where I was pushed away, I'd be pissed. And I think if you were somebody in that territory who were Jewish, and if the tables were turned and it was an Arab state that pushed your family off your land, you'd be pissed. So I think it's normal to be upset when you get dispossessed of where you've been living, regardless of how somebody else wants to formulate it or who arbitrarily gives it. I think that's a fair thing. That's why I, I sympathize with that. Anyway, so let's let old Jewish cowboy come up and share his views. How are you doing? Nice to have you. Hey, I haven't had a chance to t talk to you, Chip. Well, and nice, um, nice to have you here. Yeah. And you know, the last time was you were trying to get on a Jewish content creators and they found out that you were pro pally <laughs> they dropped you quick and <laughs> it was the funniest thing <laughs> it's happened more than i can count on t 10 fingers and 10 toes that's for sure yeah and then after you they did you they did me but anyway uh, <laughs> it was kind of cute uh of course with me um i had uh, some medical issues a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. i thought i wasn't going to make it and i did a certain i did a uh, video and um uh, saying that I wasn't sure I was I had sepsis and it was anyway long story yeah. short I wasn't sure I was going to make it so so they already gave me a funeral uh <laughs> they put, put me on uh one of my one of my followers told me about it it was really nice I guess uh <laughs> all except the actual reason for it yeah yeah so they're like so 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 many of them are, are surprised I'm still alive so anyway um even though I did a video a couple of days later saying I made it, you know, but anyway, it didn't matter because, you know, the Israelis jump at anything and they don't really finish anything. They just see something and go. Um, what I talk about mostly on my lives is about money and the fact of how much we give them. And the fact that last year their GDP was like $550 billion, which works out to about uh, $55,000 for every man, woman, and child in, in, in Israel. Okay, and their GDP per average. They were the fourth fastest growing, fourth fastest growing country in the world, economically. Um, and, and so my thing is, is why are we giving them money? I mean, they got startup nation, they've got all this stuff. Why are we even giving them money? They're a rich country. And they're the only ones that are rich that we actually give foreign aid to. I mean, if you look at all the the 62 billion that we gave out last year in foreign aid, you will find that they're the only country that was rich. We didn't give anything to France. We didn't give anything to Spain. 
we they have the same GDP, average GDP as um, as Israel. Um, we didn't give anything to them. Uh, we didn't give anything to Japan. Uh, you know, we don't do that. And the thing is, is why why then are we giving this money? And now we've given them 158 billion since 1970 or since since 48 which that's not indexed for inflation. That's just, if you index it for inflation, it's over 300 billion, which is more than any other country we've ever given to, okay? And my thing is, is again, um, I went there to live, I made Aliyah in uh, 93. And when I went there, even at that time, I didn't think we should be giving uh, uh, Israelis money because they were using it for stupid shit. I mean, they were using it for, if you wanted a down payment for a house, they could give you an interest-free loan for 50 grand. Okay? Now, yeah. that, okay, 15% of their population doesn't work, and they're just being paid to go to um, uh, the yeshivas and pray. All right? Um, last year, they did their new budget for, which, for the government, which was going to be 100 and... Uh, it was 125, and they raised it to 138 billion. Wow. And the 138, you know what that 13? Actually, it was 123, and they moved it to 138 billion. And the 15 billion that they used didn't go for better schools, better hospitals, but no, it went for the settlements, and it went to up the subsidies for the people who spend 24/7 praying. Now that 15 billion that they increased. Now they had a new budget just recently because uh, this last week because of the war, but they basically gave 15 billion, and then they came to us and they're asking us for 15 billion. I mean, it's like we are paying for the settlements. We are literally paying for the settlements. We are literally paying for people 15 percent of their their population to do nothing more than pray for them. I mean, this is crazy stuff. And even the Israelis are looking at this and going, gee, this is not, I mean, we can't, it's unsustainable. Because they're, the Haradim, which are the religious, they're growing faster than, you know, they have a higher birth rate than the secular. So it's, it's, it's a path that cannot, it's not sustainable. And they yeah. know this. And then they do really stupid stuff with the money, like I said, their army sucks. And I'll give you a perfect example, and this is one that touches me personally. I have a step-grandchild who just joined the IDF in August, okay? Mm -hmm. My stepdaughter, her, her kid, just joined the IDF in August. Went into Gaza about a month ago. Now they want to make him a commander. Now, this guy is ultra-Orthodox. He's part of the Shahs, all right? Which is a party in the in the in the Knesset. It's run by Arya Derry, one of the most corrupt people you ever run across. But anyway, that's a whole new story. But anyway, they want to make this kid a commander, and the reason they want to do it is because the Haradim don't want to join the military. Not only do they want to get subsidies, but they don't want to join the military. They're trying to pass a law, and the seculars are really pissed off about this, where the Haradim don't have to join the military; they can get exemption. So they want to make my 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 step grandson a commander to push how easy it is for the Haradim to join. They want to use him as an example. How old is he? Nineteen. <gasps> Can you believe that shit? What's a 19. commander? What's a commander like? In commander in... would be like um, a first sergeant. How is that, Chip? Well, the, then the a first sergeant in the would U.S. military, e is, the, just to let you know, a first sergeant in the military would probably have between 14 and 16 years of experience. Well, in exactly. Israel, it's one or two. Exactly. Wow. That's crazy foundation. stuff, isn't it? And then they don't understand. That's why they shoot at anything that moves, whether it's uh, uh, hostages or whether it's their own people. They have a 30% friendly fire thing going where you got a 30% chance you're going to get off by your by your own people i mean and and we're giving them money so they can continue to do this this is dangerous leadership they're crazy people 
I mean, you see, if you look and you see the, the, the people who they, they, if you look in Haaretz or you look in Jerusalem Post of the soldiers that are dying, okay, you will notice majors who are 23 years old, majors, colonels who are 27. Wow. This is crazy stuff because, and by the way, you're seeing a lot of them were in our military, the grunts usually take the brunt of it. I mean, if you take a look at Afghanistan or Iraq or whatever, you don't see too many colonels. You don't see too many majors, okay? You see some captains, that's true, and so, uh, definitely second lieutenants and, and lieutenants. But you don't, and it's crazy. So when you have, a, you have this country that we're giving all this money to that doesn't know how to use it, it's, it's, you know, we might as well burn it. That's why they call them the diaper forces. I hadn't heard that, but yeah. honestly, doesn't surprise Sorry. me. I, I know. Jimmy no, it doesn't that, surprise you know, me because, like I said, I spent a month on an IDF base, a support base, okay, where they were uh, maintaining the Makaba, the Israeli tanks. Yeah. And I can tell you, after talking to the soldiers, they are. <laughs> I mean, hey, what? Chip, I understand you were in the military. Is that correct? I was. I was yeah. too. Oh, you were too? Okay. You know how the first thing they do, whether you're an airman, marine, sailor, whatever, okay? The first thing they do, they take you to basic, whether it's Lackland or Paris or whatever, okay? And they go ahead and they break you down and they rebuild you. That's what they do. How long, Psychologically, how long that's is what their, they do. How long is their training? That's the fun part. Their training is long, but they go home on weekends. What? <laughs> they, they, they don't, they don't break them down psychologically. My step grandson said he loved basic training. How about you, Chip? Did you love basic? Well, let's do this. I know we were kind of drifting into a weird sort of direction. I'll give a quick synopsis, and then uh, we'll cover some other things. Um, I did not love training. Uh, it was a necessity. Uh, I was an armor officer, meaning tanks. And so that serves at Fort Knox, Kentucky, where all the gold is supposed to be. And it's four and a half months. And, you know, we had to learn everything and anything there was to do with the tank. And as an officer, because you're leading other troops, you have to know everything from top to bottom. So most troops have specialties. But as an officer, you had to know what everybody's job was. So we had to learn how to fire a tank, how to run a tank, how to communicate, how to fix the track, how to do the repairs you know, how to deal with combat maneuvers. It was a lot. And then we went to things called gunnery, which is where you fire the tanks, you move, you, you know, all the things you see on the commercials. And then we had to do field months. training. And we did field training and gunnery 270 days out of the year or nine out of 12 months. So it was a lot, but I'm glad we did it because when we finally went to war, we were well-trained as a unit. We knew exactly what to do. There was no question. Everybody was competent. Right. So in that regard, the U.S. Army did a good job, but it wasn't pleasant, I wouldn't say. Same. <laughs> yeah, that's not the word I would use. I would say interesting. It was an experience, but it's probably not one that I would choose to do again because going to war is not the thing you want to be doing if you can avoid it. Trust me. I do have to say this, guy. I appreciate everybody being here. I am absolutely worn out. I've been on lives today for almost 13 hours, so I, I have to... But the good news is in about, well, about 10 hours, I'll be back on again, a little less actually. So uh, not much rest, but it'll be enough to get me back on. I'm, I'm gonna be live tomorrow from 12 p.m. Eastern until about 4 p.m. So if you're a guest, you wanted to come in and you didn't get it in, please come back, I'll happily bring you up. And if you're somebody in the comments I didn't see and you had a good question, I apologize. I try to be, you know, considerate and answer everybody's questions. If you're somebody in the, in the comments trolling me, you know, I, I'd throw a finger at you, but which one should I put up? This one? I don't know, maybe a different one. But no, you're welcome to come back too. It's all good. And uh, for those of you who are wondering if I'm sort of losing steam because of all tonight's sort of back and forth, absolutely not. Don't worry a bit. There's nothing, nothing short of death that's going to stop me from advocating for this issue because it's that important. So that's where I am. I want to say thanks for being here. This is being recorded, by the way. So if you missed some or you want to come check it out, I'm actually downloading today's episode and we're putting that up right now. This one will start downloading when we stop. Check out my YouTube and Rumble. There's a link in my bio that says Linktree Chip Barnes. That's how you get to my YouTube and Rumble. So I'm beat. I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for being here, everybody. I appreciate you. Can I say one last sentence, please, before you go? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just hope that these superpowers, Russia, because everybody's just spending trillions of dollars on destruction of the planet. I just hope they find it in their heart one time 
to like work together and pretty much make humanity like one and end all of this injustice, you know, throughout the world. And thank you so much. Yeah, I would love that too. In fact, one of the biggest things that I care about more than anything, including this issue, is the fact that we, you know, we're messing up the place. So uh, that's the one thing I think we got to figure out as a group is because if we mess the place up, it doesn't matter what else we do, whether it's nuclear war or just destroying the ecology from you know, industrialization. So we talk about that a lot too. We'll talk about it some tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for being here.